Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. M I C K E Y M O U S E Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse. There's far too much noise inside this house. 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 Hi everyone, it's Jack from <laughs> Call the Holly Wrestling Podcast. Oh man, I've been trying to think of a Hall of Fame off camera, and these two have just been going, Oh my see, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mousey, Housey Mouse. And I can't what concentrate. You, well, I'm sorry, Jack. If you, will, if you will do your homework, I, didn't know you know, I know, I know, I understand. I do. It's my fault, really, but this is the, this is at least the first circle of my personal hell, and we're getting, we're only going deeper. <laughs> How are you staying, Paul? I'm, I'm my reap, pal. Welcome I'm to doing an impression of myself, scrubby, like. girthy, colaholic podcast. Yes. It's me, Matthew. Sometimes and with recently he's Jack been getting a, a bit Hello, more... and I'm Tom from the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Is that because he's from south of like Sheffield? Hello, yeah. I'm Tom. Hey, if he's going to stereotype me, I'll stereotype Mate, him. I welcome it. I'm going to buy an house and <laughs> play gonna, Sonic the Hedgehog. Are you going to. No, why have you made him a cockney? It's Sonic the Hedgehog. It's easier to do. It's more like Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes. I love Knuckles. It's the Colaholic <laughs> Wrestling Podcast. You're listening to Jack, Hello. Tom, and Mafu. Hello. It's been chaotic. My word. Happy no. birthday to Ross. He is off celebrating. He yeah. is. Fair he says he'd rather do anything else than be here. Yeah, who seen. can blame Why? <laughs> um, Ross would have joined in. E, so, uh, God, there's a lot. <laughs> just in life. There's just a lot. <laughs> Jack's tapping out already. It's a new world record. Yeah. Yes, you're right. It has been a lot. It's been a lovely week. And then it's been a weird week, then it's been a sad week, and it's been a happy week again. It's yes. been a week of mm. contrast. Mm. Let's contrastingly go to the news. Let's get some of the sad news out of the way. Uh, sad passing of Adrian Street. Mm. Happened this week, British wrestling icon Adrian Street. As many people pointed out, uh, Welsh wrestling icon yes. Adrian Street. Mm. Maybe the most famous and greatest and toughest wrestler to come out of Wales. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, yeah, his family... Confirm this with Jesus. You're right, Jack. Yeah, so <laughs> just wow, that was loud. No. Um, passed away at 82 years old, which again, mm. not trying to be sarcastic, that's very good innings for a wrestler, yeah, especially nowadays. So, um, and a pioneer, an absolute pioneer, in absolute wrestling. pioneer. Adrian Street made a decision not to follow his father down the mines in the 40s in Wales and decided to take up professional wrestling. Uh, later adapted the exotic Adrian Street gimmick, which he portrayed as a, a glam rock character who teased, who's a bit who you know. Uh, after receiving booze from the audience, he began to add to the gimmick, adopting glitter and putting his bleached hair into mini pigtails. A couple of signature moves also saw Street kiss his opponents and put makeup on them. Uh, and apparently when he was doing his tour of America, they were asked, what, what's your theme song going to be? He says, whatever's top of the pops. <laughs> and yeah, because he was hard as balls, like all the famous wrestlers were that would appear on World of Sport, et cetera, et cetera, and managed to travel to America dressed like that and influencing many. Mm. If you like gold dust, mm. then uh, yeah, make sure you thank Adrian Street mm. for basically talking most of it. Um, but yeah, he would say stuff like he beat the hell out of someone while looking like that and just look at the crowd and tell the TV audience, imagine what I'd do to you. Imagine <laughs> what Ooh. I would do to you. It people. was a song, wasn't it? Adrian Street and the Pile Drivers. They released it oh, as a I song. Oh, I didn't realize that. Was it imagine a song? what I, I could do that. to you. It's on, the, it's on YouTube, you can watch it. It's I'm great. pretty sure he was uh, awakening for many people back in the day. But <laughs> most people are, he was, most yeah. people are saying, God, I, because it's amazing, one of the best images to come out of wrestling, oh, yeah. not just British or Welsh, just wrestling in general, is him down to pits yeah. with his family and his father in full gear. Mm. And they did this story about it where he said that. He didn't do that just to like, oh, look at me, I'm wacky. He did this to go, tell you. <laughs> yeah. Tell every single one he is. Because his dad wasn't massively uh, supportive of the wrestling thing. Right. It sounds like Billy Elliot. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's, it's kind of a Billy Elliot style story. Get down pit. Don't go dancing. Um, and uh, so it, that picture was, and it's weird because like the, the juxtaposition is the expressions on people's faces. Like that's the amusement it. from the, from the, from his dad and the miners who were there. And then just like this a face of like ultimate accomplishment. Mm. As as Asian Street like while we're talking fluffs about his feathers, Joel, his it, could you get that photo up? I don't think it's well, we can show this. If you, I think if you if you Google Adrian Street, it's going to yeah, be one of the, the first, first thing that things up, yeah. that comes up. It's a well, it's fantastic one of them. Fantastic photo. I was going to say one of the things that comes up is one of the most famous photos to come out of. Uh, oh no! Well, I was getting that fixed on. Yeah, uh, yeah. The other thing. So it's there you go. yeah, it's you the go. top right. That's the go, one. Obviously, it's so famous. I had to tell Joel whose job it is to do wrestling. Uh, but there it is. Oh. Yes, um, th- there he is. That's him on the right. <laughs> uh, and there's yeah, oh. there's his father and other people down to pit and him going yeah. Amazing. Said he couldn't do it. Now look at this. Absolutely incredible. So picture. most people obviously sharing the thoughts and the 
WWE putting a tribute graphic for him. Yes. Um, and people going, wow, Agent Street, and people finding out more about him. Including the fact that he beat the hell out of Jimmy Savile one time. So, <laughs> so God no. bless. Great oh, story. No. Oh, no. I wondered if you were going to include that there or not. Just very fleetingly. Why I? Uh, weird connection to Oppenheimer, the big film that's out at the minute in the world of wrestling. I know, everything's going to be related to wrestling somehow, right? Which me and Sam are hopefully going to watch tomorrow, or today by the time this comes out. Uh, do you remember, during the lockdown era, I, don't know, I, don't I really, really wanted to do it as well, yeah. Go on, what? You went, do you remember? And you paused, and we both thought, the 21st no, 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 no. Good, that's not a thing that only old people do now, then. Yeah. Even the young ones like Jack still do it. I'm Get so it. young. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a spirit. Uh, they had, uh, during the dirt sheet, they had when Mrs. Fume with Drew, which I vaguely remember. Um, they had uh, Drew McIntyre come out. <gasps> I know what this is. Yeah. Mm. yeah, he's only in the bloody film. So the man who played fake Drew McIntyre when he was being featured, you know when a wrestler would bring mm. out a humiliating version of their opponent? Yes. Maybe they're a bit out of shape. He was he was fake Drew McIntyre, and he's the, like, he's Oppenheimer's like Bessie, Bessie May, isn't he? Have you, se have you seen it, mm. Matthew? Uh, no, not yet. But so there's this first the movie since... on the train who always feeds him. Oh. Remember to eat. That's him, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's, that's ah. fake Drew McIntyre. Yeah. It's his first movie since... Really? Appearing. Uh, really, he was he was screen. he was a real highlight of Oppenheimer. There's like a million massive wow. Hollywood stars in it, and yeah, he's one of the standouts. I'd say he's class. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's in the credits as Drew's mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, J. Robert Oppenheimer's mate. No, but his real name. Fake Drew McIntyre. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, his real name. Oppenheimer's is fake mate, Drew played by Drew's mate. Drew's mate. <laughs> Drew's mate. <laughs> yes, yes. N.W.O. Drew. N.W.O. Drew. <laughs> anyway, uh, W.O. announces uh, latest international event. Uh, the company announced that they will be doing the Superstar Spectacle in September, uh, September 8th in, uh, oh, let me butcher this, uh, Hyderabad, India. Oh, I, right, okay. Hyderabad, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Uh, Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics, who I think is one of the few people who can go, if he said it, it is oh, actually mate, true. He makes things so much more easy to understand. Yeah. I love Brandon Thurston of, uh, of WrestleNomics. Like, who said that? <laughs> yeah. Brandon Thurston, all right, yeah, <laughs> got us there. So uh, Brandon says the venue holds between 4,000 and 5,000 fans. Playing it safe there by the scheme of things. Remember when they tried doing it and they were supposed to be doing a tour with uh, Jinder Mahal after mm. consolidating it into one existing loan? Well, it's um, it's Rinka King territory, isn't it? You know, they're all impact fans over there. That's it. It'd yeah. be great if they go, where's Jarrett? Where's yeah, Steiner? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where's who else was it? Luke Gallows, pretending he could drive a bike. All the rest. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, good for them. I said they've been kicking ass with their overseas events. Oh, yeah. They realize, yeah, and, and they've always known it because you you look back to like the 90s and stuff and they had these big European tours that would always mm -hmm. draw well. So even when domestic business oh, is down. The Bret Hart tours where every country, oh, Hart, yeah. I've read his autobiography last year. Yes. It, I was in Germany and they broke down the barricade and showered me with affection. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had, then I had, uh, then I had made love with a hundred different oh, women. Oh God, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And then my wife. Left me the bitch. How dare she? <laughs> Why? Why, would she do <laughs> Why would she do that? I said to the seventh woman I slept with that night. <laughs> uh, the That's elite a character. Oh, good old Brett. <laughs> Laugh a minute, Brett. They call him. Never knew his face. Uh, the elite re-signed with AEW. Uh, this is not very shocking, to be honest with you. I didn't see them going elsewhere. As it would have been really funny if just one of them left. It was just like Nick Jackson. <laughs> just one of the books. Right. Uh oh. Well, hmm. Yeah, uh, obviously, these little stories get leaked and teased and like hummed and ha, and they never seem to go anywhere than where the rest of wants them. It's like a snooker player going, aye, right, back pocket. <laughs> Randy Orton, sweetie, he might be going, hey, oh, no, he's staying right there, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing I mentioned to you that Meltzer had been saying that they were considering WWE and we were all very skeptical that that's actually true. Well, there was never, but, there would I never mean, have been a window big enough for them to even contemplate negotiating. Right, we, we even mentioned, it was mentioned on the news the other day, wasn't yeah. it? Their contract situation is tightly wound. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So it's never going to happen. But obviously they would have, um, and, and when those things, those conversations came up, it's not necessarily means that they would have gone back and forth with WWE, but they would have maybe spoke with each other and gone, do we all go as a union yeah, yeah. to WWE yeah. at the end of our deal? Yeah. Or do we leave Nick Jackson here? Yes. <laughs> like Shane Douglas in, in 2000. <laughs> yeah. and, um, we'll be right back, yeah. Shane. Shane, we're all just going to go and get a drink uh, from the vending machine. Uh, we'll be right back. Oh, I'll just put Monday Night Raw on. No, you uh, did it without me. And I think um, as well, Mm -hmm. I mean, they'd have surely gotten 
some sort of raise from Tony you'd expect to stay around and stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Even if um, you like where you work, if, that, yeah. if that's going on, you're going to go, hey, <laughs> sweeten the deal. And then also, I mean, yeah, so he gave he gave Sam Punk like a whole show, so he's got to give them a, a raise of some sort. I'm sorry, that was a barb. I shouldn't have. It was a good one. Well, I think I, Sam, I think Sam Punk's in charge of Collision. <laughs> like, he, he markets it on his own Instagram like it's his show. Mm. And then I've just, I just think he's the booker of Collision, basically. But anyway, do you think this as well? Yeah, I thought that was, yeah, it's by design to be like that. Oh, so I was get weirded out. I was like, "Whoa, what are FTR doing here? This is a not FTR, you oh. idiot." Um, MGF and Cole. Mm, yeah. I've buggered my point. I'm gonna move on. So oh. you're saying them turning up was a shocker because it's like, "On your hey, die, hey, your wait your what are they called dynamite? What are they called bangers? Your bangers, yeah. your bangers, yeah. <laughs> not colliders." <laughs> Your oh, sticks. I, I'm such a collider now, by the way, mm. guys. Uh, I, I want a shirt that, that I'm a collider guy, yeah. a collision guy. I'm a collider it, it, it's guy. It's a shame it's colliding with SummerSlam this Saturday. I know. See, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a SummerSlammer, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> Smojo absent from Twisted Metal commercial during WWE Raw. Uh, this makes sense. Because, well, why would he be? Delightful pettiness. Big fan. Yeah. It's on <laughs> Peacock. Is he a, is he a main car- major character in it? He well? plays the body of Sweet Tooth. The Sweet clown. Tooth is the clown yeah. who has a mask permanently on. So the voice is Will Arnett. The the real villain of Twisted Metal is Dangerous Driving. <laughs> Please carry on. That was good, that. I said it in the office the other day and I've recycled it now. <laughs> <laughs> if you're killing Tom with it, then uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I like yeah. it. But he just tweeted, "Go, well, y- y'all know." Oh, <laughs> did he? But I mean, what are they supposed to go? It's on the Dewey's Peacock yeah. with AEW megastar Samoa Joe. Yeah. I thought that the is the Cody documentary only on Peacock, not on the WWE Network? Because I was looking for it and I couldn't find it the other I day. I haven't even looked for it. Oh, everyone's talking about it. I just haven't seen it. I was talking about that bit where he goes, "I can't say why I left AEW." I saw uh, somebody. Oh, someone put that on uh, Twitter, so I didn't need to see it. He said it wasn't for money, and it wasn't because of other talent. It was, it was because a of personal a personal reason. Issue. Yeah, yeah. No, mate. And I said to Coney Tan, let's <laughs> call him. I am leaving. Mm. <laughs> he knows what he's doing, that man. Cody knew what that would do. It's the bit as well because he prefaces it by going, mm. "If there's anything I don't want edited out, it's this bit." I'm like, "What a he is the mm. greatest show." Man. Thank you. That's the reason why we're all watching this documentary. I know, I know. But he knows, yes. he knows, he knows. Cody's got this weird talent of whenever he's doing a promo or an interview or something, he makes it feel like this is something you're privy to that you're not really meant to hear. He's very like, disarming in that way. He's great. He's he knows what he's doing. Yeah, well, we're saying all this, it's like, oh, Cody, I can't believe he didn't say it. If he came in the room right now, we just, we just all just fall over. Oh, he's amazing. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> he is my favorite wrestler. One of. Yeah, we're going to say. Well, no, he's really good. Oh, okay. He is really good. Uh, the Iron Claw, said to be released for the Christmas period. Uh, just as a warning to people who may listen to this podcast, who may go, wow, Zach, Zach Efron, MGF, and a bunch of other sexy lads. Uh, <laughs> this is what? not going to be Zach Efron, yeah. MJF, a bunch of other sexy lads. Sexy guys. <laughs> it is not going to be a happy go lucky film. No. It is not going to no. be a good film. Like, is it, sorry, it might be a good film. It's going to be depressing as balls. Oh, Merry Imagine Christmas. Portrayed as like the Von Erics aren't your usual family. Sorry, Adam Sandler as Kevin Von Erich. Adam Sandler as Kerry Von Erich. Adam Sandler as Mike Von Erich. Adam Sandler as Fritz von Eric. Really? We, have to, <laughs> oh. we have to book the sickest wrestling show to get all the babes there. Oh. I love babes. <laughs> Vince Vaughn is Bruiser Brody. Empire yeah. called it a film that's on. Vince Vaughn is Bruiser Brody. Because he's, uh, well, he's tall. Uh, is that I'm trying to think of people in like, happy comedies. Vince Vaughn rampaging his way through a crowd, swinging dodgeballs at people. Oh, da- Dana, oh, Dana Carvey. Is the dog oh my that God. presumably dies Danny like the rest DeVito of the family. As George the Animal Steel. I don't know. <laughs> I love the idea. Charlie from Always Sunny as the drugs. <laughs> I love the idea of Danny from Always Sunny as George Steele having a chat with um, <laughs> with Vince Ford as Bruiser Brody. Oh, yeah, look, yeah. Bruiser <laughs> guy, in the trailer, Bruiser going, Hush, hush, is that all you say? Mm-hmm. Hus, boom, <laughs> good, bye, strange. <laughs> Coming soon. Oh, it's That's the be... funny bit in the trailer. The record scratch, and everyone goes, Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Hello it's... there. What's the you song? said something other than Hus. What's the song playing in the background? It's probably like, Oh, no, I can't say that. Never mind. It's a, it'd be Mr. Blue was, Sky was, by ELO. I was going to, not because everyone's dead, that sounds bad now, because I was going to say Spirits in the Sky because it's the classic like rom com yeah. trailer yeah. song, but yeah. it, it sounded like I was being nasty. No, no, we'll leave that, leave that to us. 
Okay. You're the, you're the good one here. I see. Yeah. Right. Let's crack on. <laughs> yes. Let's drive like the van, Eric. Uh, oh my God. And we'll say this in. When's that out? Sorry, what was the news? I just completely. Christmas. It's like it's coming out. It's got release date. Christmas time. It's just let people it's know. Just, it's the, oh, the family's all together. So Let's watch the Von Eric from story. What I, from what I understand, and I don't know this for certain, but despite like he's obviously in incredible shape for like every role he takes, like Efron, but he's going to have to have because apparently he's quite a diminutive. Blue and the Von Erichs. Nothing wrong like, with it. No, no, but the Von Erichs, but the wrestlers in the 80s were all giant men. Don't make everyone else shorter. Like Gandalf. <laughs> yeah, there's two Lord of the Rings style. <laughs> like Gandalf. Is that thing with that Vin Diesel and The Rock who refused to be in that one scene together? So, like, well, Vin's the Rock changing would have form. Made Vin Diesel, like, <laughs> like a tiny man. I always thought that was a joke or an no, S post. And I saw it for real, like, the thing that they do, and you're like, what the hell happened there? I don't think I ever realized how big The Rock was until he started hanging around with, like, normal sized people. Mm. Because in wrestling, you'd think the rock's fairly tall, yeah. but you see him next to like Kevin Hart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> Jack Black. Famously tall. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we'll say this the same way that The Re did it. Almost like the same way that um, Woody from Toy Story announced at the other toys that Andy's birthday's been moved to today. Uh, oh, um, <laughs> search warrant executed against Vincent Mann. So that was the news. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> search warrant. Woo! Get yes. it moving, buddy. Get if those you don't army, have one, get one. Get those army soldiers up there. Yeah. Move, move, yeah. move, move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's what a, it's just, it's what just a o- film. It's just OVW. Uh-huh. Just binoculars looking there. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Yeah. Potato Head. Mrs. Potato Head. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, just emerged that, you know. Um, I mean, who hasn't had this happen to them? The... Uh, no. Federal, huh? federal law enforcement agents that. execute <laughs> a search <laughs> warrant and ex- served the federal grand jury subpoena to Mr. McMahon. Triple H sits in the chair in Titan Towers and goes, I'm Vinny. Howdy, howdy, howdy. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. With his on a, as a hat. <laughs> Is Nick Khan Buzz Lightyear? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's the new He's player. buzzing yeah. now. <laughs> he's buzzing now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> seems to be no sign of intelligent life anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just NXT. <laughs> <sighs> well, on that bombshell... He's had, he's, had, he's had major spinal surgery as well. Oh, yes, there was that as well. Funny how that happens at the <laughs> oh, same time Matthew. whenever the government gets involved. Uh, you, you, oh. you can't... I don't know whether you can plan spinal surgery of that nature, like, in I advance. I like, think so, but here we are. <laughs> like, oh... <laughs> hang on. Oh, the police are outside. Yeah, no, like no, beep, no. Beep, beep, like, Hello, F- can I have some spinal surgery, yeah, please? Said, Hello, like, FBI, open up. Oh, my back! You know the bit, oh. you know the bit in the office where... David Brent tries to convince his team that he faked a heart condition <laughs> yeah, so that yeah. their team didn't get downsized. Like, so he's saying you faked your own heart rate, <laughs> yeah. your blood pressure. Yeah. He's like, damn. Uh, no, no, uh, don't <laughs> no, I don't think Vince planned what. Well, we don't know. We don't know. We do know. How did. Brandon. <laughs> WrestleNomics told me, yeah, Vince faked it. There you go. No, <laughs> so they come for me. That didn't happen. Brandon didn't say God, that. God, Brandon. Brandon's a very trusted newsman. Not anymore. Yeah, no, he didn't say that. <laughs> like, thanks to Cultaholic's prestigious <laughs> news segment. <laughs> oh, I don't know why he told me a fib like that. Oh, wait, wait. He just said, lol, don't actually say that. Oh, sorry, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> well, good job I read that second bit. What kind of world do you live in? This <laughs> Brandon's... This became a real conversation. That's why I power walk Brandon? everywhere because I always suspect someone's behind me. <laughs> That was the news. I still not thought of the Hall of Fame. Don't say that while we're recording. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Konnichiwa. He's gone. We'll have the thrilling conclusion next week. Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. <sighs> Time for the Hall of Fame. And kind of sending on it from last week, uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Impossible. Mm. 18%. <laughs> yeah, and he didn't blame me for this. <laughs> he went, well, you just didn't explain it properly. I was like, all right then, fair enough. I mean, if you just, if you're one of the many, many people who just go to the Patreon and place the votes and don't listen to the podcast... Because who, who else has spent nine hours? Um, hmm. Yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Impossible, 18. If only you called it Hero Turtle. Mm. <laughs> yes. 20%. Eddie the dog from Frasier. Bollocks. Wow. And But the, hang on, I've been telling people, oh, I've been watching Frasier. No one said, oh, yes, I know that TV show. Everyone's Everyone gone. knows it. Everyone eh? knows, oh, oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, the guy with it. Yeah, okay. But no one actually that I talked to was like actually seen it. I've so. not seen it. Fair enough. Dog's cute, though. 
And going to cinema on your own, 62%. Wow. Bloody hell. Well done, I Ross. don't feel alone. <laughs> Ross winning from beyond the grave. <laughs> 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 well, well done, Tom. You're the stand-in for this week. So, what have you got for us this time? Uh, it's it's a bittersweet one. This one. Oh, um, I was going to nominate this wee lad anyway. Um, uh, a, be- a wonderful little cat by the name of Tater Tot. Uh, I believe Joel has a picture of Tater Tot. Oh. Uh, this has done that. This this guy has done the rounds in pretty much every cat Facebook group I'm in, and I'm in a few. Are you really? Yeah, I've become a weird cat dad since I got Pablo. What, what's the name of one of them? Um, uh, her funny cat memes, lol. I think one of them's called. Oh, okay, fair enough then. I don't know what uh, I expected. I don't know what you expected it to be called. Like, like Schrodinger's cat memes? I don't know. Uh, Half of them are just image won't load. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's, oh. Well done. I'd like to nominate Jack's joke just there. It's your Hall of Fame nomination. I know I should have. Yeah. You can still do it. No. So, uh, Tater Top popped up everywhere. Uh, a little a little lad who had a rough start in life and was taken in by a wonderful adoption family. Had to have surgery on his front legs and his back legs. And the picture that really captured the imagination is the one that you're seeing there. There's two pictures that you're seeing there. And on the left-hand side, you've got a very angry-looking, frazzled-looking Tater Tot with essentially bionic arms. Uh, it's been, there's been artists' drawings of this cat uh, for for weeks and weeks and weeks now, tiny little thing, adorable little thing. Wanted to give awesome. a nod to Tater Tot in the news, and, and again, it's bittersweet because uh, I found out this. It was revealed this morning, and it's not to sway the vote. But <laughs> Tater Tot has left us. Yeah. Tater Tot has crossed the rainbow bridge. Yeah, and was not lived lived for a good time, not a long time. Yes, and you will have no doubt, even if you're not in a million Facebook groups like I am for cats. That picture, that iconic picture of the really angry looking bedheaded kitten mm. with what looked like robotic arms should have no doubt crossed your timeline at some point while scrolling. So if you didn't know who that was, that's Tater Tot. Adorable little thing. No longer with us. Mm. Get Tater Tot in the Hall of Fame. Tater Tot's a good, it's a good pick. I so. love the Cult Light Wrestling podcast. I love the, the banter between the lads, the wrestling discussion. Uh, the dead cat. I know. It's... <laughs> That's just I what know. people want when they're getting in the mood. We know people like to get a bit frisky during these things because, again, the 12 hours long. But then, yeah, so a dead cat. I mean, tater tot. Tater tot. A we're dead not, we're, tater tot. Yeah, you, we're not putting a dead cat in the Hall no. of Fame because that's. Damn right, we're not. You haven't seen my Hall of Fame. It's page. unhygienic. <laughs> 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 But we're putting we're putting the, the beautiful memory of a little cat that shouldn't have gone and lasted the, as long as, as they did, but was surrounded by love, became an internet sensation, mm. a star that burned bright, and then crossed the Rainbow Bridge. Some Fair love enough. to Tater Tot today. Good Much job. love to Tater Tot. Much love to Tater Tot. It was my pick for the Hall of Fame. And if it doesn't go in, then you're a monster. Yeah, it's a good pick. It's a clever pick. <laughs> Yes. No, I'm kidding. Look, is, uh, hey, look if, 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 it doesn't, if this doesn't win, at least you've learned about Tater Tot. It's a clever. And, he's, and that's he's the, on the win. Camp Don't we train. feel great? Yeah. Well, that's the win. Matthew. How dare you put in cute animals to the Hall of Fame? What's wrong with despite, you? Despite, <laughs> yeah. Tom's, despite Tom's very good pick, you seemed confident still. You were like, you don't know what my pick is yet. What's your pick? You already know it. I don't know it. So on Twitter wait, yesterday. I? Oh, no, 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 no. A certain... Screw Tater Tots. This is great. Don, it was sexier than the, the cast list for the Von Erich film, wasn't it? Mustafa Ali versus our very own Jack Please the Job. Oh, wow. More like Jack the Champ. Uh, I have sent you, I think, the wrong one. If you have to scroll up to get the, start the story, that's how this works. Call the Holly Wrestling, the new story that uh, obviously everyone was talking about was Mustafa Ali, this is the quote, thinks that WWE IC title match was the right time for Gunther to lose. We'll have to blur the swear word. Mustafa Ali... Oh, yeah, sorry, I didn't see that. It says, quote, you guys really falling, was it failing? No, falling for pooey clickbait headlines, eh? He's Canadian. Jack the Champ replying with, you did say it, though. <laughs> Love the irony of people jumping on us saying people never read the full article, having not read the full article to see that the headline was actually accurate. With the quote where he says it. I'm very dis- uh, sorry, disappointed in the result, losing to Gunther. Obviously, I thought if there ever was a time to defeat Gunther, it would have been there. So that's End what he quote. said. Mustafa replies, so going shot for shot now. This is a bit mm. where it's a bit where Mustafa kicks out and looks at the crowd. The crowd like, come on, Mustafa, you can do it. He only looks big. Jack, 
Do you think the headline captured what I was saying or was one line taken from the interview and then left open to interpretation? You know, many people don't read full articles. You know the response it could elicit. That's all I'm saying. And Jack cuts off the heat. I think Mustafa went the top um, rope and then Jack just pushed the rope so he fell on his balls. Pushed the referee into just the rope. Yeah, yeah. And then me, you've made me the heel in the match as well. <laughs> I'm the one who's cut off the, the shine. Uh, Tommaso Jacker says, I fully appreciate the clickbait headlines must be frustrating, but in this instance, I can't see a big difference okay, between your right. quote and the message conveyed by the headline. At the same time, I get that our perspectives are going to massively differ on this, to which Mustafa Ali um, trips over his own feet and says, no, different perspectives no, it is then, cheers. I'm just... I'm, and I'm then the, Jack and says, you know what... After Jack just pins him clean as a whistle, no. send the ring, Jack goes, give it up, people. Holds his hand stop, up. Stop. And Jack says, fair enough, man. Cheers to you, too. That's nice. Well, wasn't that lovely? So I think you handled it beautifully. Because Jack I won. I genuinely love Mustafa. Like, I think he's a brilliant wrestler. Like, he's amazing. We should preface that by saying that we do love Mustafa. Oh, my God. He's he is so, incredible. He is so good and so underutilized or whatever you want to say. And I'm just glad that at the minute in NXT, he's having the chance to have these great matches with the likes of Wesley and Tyler Bate and stuff. Yeah. But he deserves hasn't, to be... Hasn't won any of them but he, that, but he, he? Well, he deserves to be way higher on the card than he is. But I just... And I, and I get that what he's saying there is, like, I guess the... the what do you think? Like, the, the headline, he might think, makes it look like he's trying to bury guns. Or saying, like, well, I should have ended there. But he's picked an odd article to complain about that when it literally is, you know... It is what he said. And it's interesting well, because I, a few people did message and say, like, read the article. He praises Gunter. And I said, well, at no point in the title does it say he doesn't. Like, no, it's I just understand. Like, I think everyone's like, just interpreting it as, as like... The reason that I said the perspective bit is because if I'd said that and then the headline had gone, Jack thinks he should have beat Gunter, then I would have gone, well, what I was trying to say was underdog stories are great. It would have been great if we'd done this underdog story. But... Then you, I think, I guess you've got to word your, what you say a bit differently then if you want. But I just feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I just feel so. Yeah. Oh bless! See, I love Jack because he is one of those lads. If you give him a compliment, he's just like, yeah, but I suck. Oh shit! Sure. Like, uh, Gen- see, see, no. see. Genuinely, I am. Jack, you're defending yourself very well there. Uh, I, I am glad well, as it, an employee it? that that you stepped up and said something. Well, I was gonna say, I, 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 our, our website team like work really hard to not be that kind of site that wrestlers of kind of. Rightly criticised for right. saying... And like, wrestlers and fans yeah, do 100%. see all the news oh, stories as this one... I'm not saying on, uh, that Mr. Ali should block. have a spreadsheet like these ones are okay, these ones are inaccurate. Blah, blah, we, like. we as fans tend to, I think, or some of us do, uh, I yeah. guess. But like wrestling fan, wrestlers, wrestlers... He's probably just got do. more The amount of wrestlers that I've quoted is like ringside news. Like, oh, that didn't happen. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Duh, where have you been? But, but they just see like that at the same level as us. Of course, they've so. got more important stuff going on. Yeah. So I'm glad, not not to say, ha ha, screw you, Ali. I'm glad that you went... No, 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 we're not doing clickbait. You said this. This is our Yeah, like, it was an odd, this, it was you know, an odd like, example to And pick, you didn't yeah. do it. And, and Ali just said, all right, fair enough then. Yeah. Which I think is his best best way of saying, all right, well, Yeah, because I was fully expecting to just get instantly blocked. I don't, so That's what I mean. Like, at least for, Ali was yeah, good yeah, enough to go, all right, yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, if the headline so. had been, Ali says he's better than Gunter. Well, right, right, right. There are, there are yeah, ways yeah, of yeah. twisting that. Right, 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 course, we're yeah. up, then we'd be absolutely banged mm-hmm. to rights because yeah, that's not the story at all. No. On that occasion, at the very least, on that occasion, yes. that's you know what was uh, written was you know. the quote. And I have to say, this is one of the reasons why I call it such a lovely professional place to work and I will clean ever bit the head because I would have been so tempted. <laughs> Ali admits fault no, in Jack no, no. scandal. <clears throat> no, that's not going to be going out. On the, <laughs> if that goes out, I'm going to be fuming. <laughs> um... Right, and you put it in the Hall of Fame, yeah? Yeah, uh, uh, oh, we'll have to, because again, we have to assume some people, like I said, they saw that and went, what the bloody hell's that? I'm not doing that Frank Zappa album, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, impossible. <laughs> I am going to do the thing as Jack the Jobber, full name, beating Mustafa Ali at Twitter. Oh, okay. Or Twitter X, I'm just going to call it Twitter. Now, I think you might not win that, because people might assume that that's my Hall of Fame pick, and they've got, he's put himself in the bloody Hall of Fame. That's, ah, oh, damn it, yeah, yeah. Mm. That's like a poker match. It's just a game, it? yeah. It's just yeah, yeah. It really is a poker game. But yeah, yeah, well, it's high stakes indeed. Bloody hell. What have you got to beat yourself, Jack? Um, Don't beat yourself. I'm, I'm, You're putting yes. Mustafa Ali to be diplomatic. No, I'm putting the the tantalising prospect of Grado versus Jeff Jarrett yeah. at Wembley. Because it's not been confirmed or anything like that. that has been confirmed. But we sent the lovely Tom and the lovely Dan down to London. That's Dan. <laughs> the right. puppet. Yeah, he's not here, really. Um, 
And they had afternoon tea. Well, Tom had afternoon tea with Jarrett and Dan filmed them having afternoon tea. Can I give some... Um, I want to give some props to Dan Heppel. Oh, he, Dan's brilliant. Dan was a wonderful London travel buddy. Oh, we had a lovely oh. day with Dan. He is a grafter. Yes, he is. And, and you know, he, he works really hard to make sure that everything is done right. And, and I can do what I do with comfort and focus on that, knowing full well that that end of things oh. is a hundred percent taken care of. And I can't tell you how much better that makes me at my job yeah. knowing that Dan is so good at his job. For those who went to Cultaholic Live, if Dan hadn't been there, we met, that you wouldn't may have, have never happened <laughs> because of the text of Dan was like on it. Like he really, really was. Um, and and I have no doubt that he was well when I asked him how it was, but he's so self-effacing though, because I went, How was London, Dan? And he didn't go I was mit. Well, that would be a weird answer anyway. But, but he went, yeah, it was great. We went to Gordon Ramsay Burger. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, excellent. Well, I'll say <laughs> he was good. Mint. How was Gordon Ramsay Burger? That was really nice. Mm. Yeah, it was lovely. It was is just... this a Gordon Ramsay restaurant? Or yeah. Just like it was, so it was literally just, as we came out of Live Nation, there was a place there. Went, oh, it was the lamb there. sauce? Oh. Where's uh, the if... lamb sauce? <laughs> 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 if there was, we didn't have it. <laughs> well, will... Gordon's going to be feeling with that. I will. I, I don't mean to hijack your Hall of no, Fame, no, thing, all... but I'll give a tiny bit of perspective from us when we were there on the Go Monday. We got to Live Nation a bit early. So then we so we had this idea to give afternoon tea to Jeff Jarrett. And then you're just because of you, you told me this, what, what is afternoon tea? What's like on Well, the, it's like, it's it's on, it's in cakes and sandwiches. Yeah, but like any specific cakes or sandwiches? like uh, Whatever they had at Tesco <laughs> at the time. Uh, oh, okay. On a nice little tray, like a, like a, a set, a multi-level tray. And then it's a pot of tea. Okay, a pot And it was lovely. So, yeah. so literally I got it's to- It's very Enid Blyton. It is. <laughs> it sounds it like. Yeah. At one point, I asked Jeff Jarrett a question. I said, "You answer that question, and I'll be mother." Like I never thought in my life <laughs> I'd get to do that, and I did. And He's from Tennessee, you'd be like, "What?" <laughs> On two occasions, he went, "You're great. This is great." So he loved it. He loved Jeff's, it. Jeff Jarrett yeah. is unbelievable. He absolutely loved it. But we got there, so I had to nip out and get the stuff for the afternoon tea from the shop around the mm. corner. And uh, I come back in. And of all the people that could have been waiting to greet me on reception as they were coming in, I wouldn't have given... I, I This would have been near the bottom of the list because I just come through reception and I just hear... It was done. Tom, it's yourself! I was like, it's Grado! Like, hello, mate! Gave Grado a big... I was like, so what are you doing? He's like, oh, me and Jeff are going to go do this thing at TalkSport after you. I was like, oh, get in. We, so he came and sat with me and Dan for a bit and we were chatting on for ages. And then... Um, Dan and Grado in the same room is too much chaos in one. That's too I much had to, carnage. I had no idea who Oh, oh no! Jonas no. just said. I bet he no, does. No, no, no! It's because we bet he does now. Yeah, he will now. He does yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. How but, did he not but know? You, but what was funny is I had to really pay attention. I had to oh, really pay attention because anyway. Grado, even admittedly himself, was <laughs> very Scottish that day. Like he was very <laughs> Glaswegian, very Scottish that day. And Dan is is very very Geordie. So I had to really listen as they were chatting to each other because it was, was over exaggerating his Scottishness because he'd seen the afternoon tea and he was like, "No, I'm not having that. <laughs> I'm going to be even more Scottish." Oh, is so, that why Grado? Attack Jarrett because there wasn't any shortbread. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, but but oh. I know it's like as soon as like as soon as like, it's we, cream then jam. We got into <laughs> the, we got into the room where Jeff was, and uh, and we were making I was making small talk with Jeff as Dan was setting up, and I was like, uh, hey, lovely to see Grado, and he was like, if you say so. Oh, like, not a fan. He said, "What a worker!" I know. I love I love this I business. He was so <laughs> so good. <laughs> And then, and then, literally twenty minutes after the interview, and they left to do talk sport, he was smashing a guitar of great nose. Yes, head. I'm just. Saying, and you had foreshadowed. You knew. Foreshadowed. I, it was lovely with me, is what I'll say. And you'll see the interview <laughs> on the YouTube channel very soon. Wow, it, it was a lovely time. You're on it? both sides of the feud. You're in the middle. Wow. You're Swiss. You're like Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, this so isn't about Tom. <laughs> 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 Bam! He's not a factor. <laughs> Uh, That's a joke. Jeff, would never, did, Jeff uh, would never feud with Austin. Isn't about afternoon tea. <laughs> did, uh, 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 did, did Jeff at any point go, That's right, Tom, it's J A. Ha, double F E. Ha, e. I started. Duh, uh, afternoon tea. No. He didn't, sadly. I got that bit out of the way first. Ah. I, just, I just went, Afternoon tea with J E double F, J A double I. Mm. Ah. So I, I clipped him to it at the, at the beginning. Good we luck. had a nice chat about all sorts of things. You'll see it on the channel very, very soon. I'm so excited for it. He to go was, up. you know, it's it's a cliche. He was great. He, yeah. everything, he was great. Everything I've, seen, oh, sorry. everything I've seen from the snippets of it and stuff, and, and even a video Tom showed me on his phone, which was like a shout out to your brother as well. well. Oh, yeah, yeah, is yeah. Is incredible. Um, because he's just a he's just a good sport. He just seems to yeah. he's fully and from the look of his Twitter that day, we were like one of a lot of yeah, press yeah. stuff, and he seemed up for all of it. Like he was just we were the most interesting. So we oh, afternoon yeah. tea. 
But what a what a what a guy, man! Mm. What a, I, I love the resurgence of goodwill for Jeff Jarrett. In Absolutely, the, yeah. it's such a feel good story. Uh, when we were at the WrestleMania con, he insisted on taking a photo of the Cultaholic crew and Brian Zane. I think somebody I else. I don't as remember well. this. Were we not there? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> WrestleMania con, the one in Manchester. Yeah, yeah. What was happening? There's a photo of me, Pachiti, I think Luke Owen, and then Brian Zane, and then there's Jarrett posing. And Jarrett's just jumping in one like a jump scare. <laughs> And it was, yeah, because right. Jarrett wanted us to do it. What a guy. Anyway. Right. So anyway, so, so... Your pick, then. Oh, God. So, so, I, I so, that, so that, that, that talk sport segment that he went off to do when he said, oh, if you say it's great to see Grado here, ended with Jeff Jarrett smashing a guitar over Grado while the other two hosts didn't... It doesn't matter. Bad form on Hawksby. Yeah, Jason's man. Bad. They just go like, oh, oh, no. Oh. No, no, they were laughing. Well, don't laugh. He's the bad guy. Off. You should be like, whoa, can we get some security? They, they don't respect this industry. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> So then um, Jared smashed the guitar over Grado's head and it has led to speculation, which is probably true, that it's going to be a match at All In. And I, the, the idea of that match happening and a stadium of like 80,000 people or whatever people, like, and Grado's entrance and just, I can't... What tops that? Like, yeah, there'll be like better matches on the car, but what can no. top that? Yeah. And it's just, it needs to happen. And if the... Oh, I can't even speak. I can't speak. I can't speak. I can't speak. Um, so I'm doing the tantalizing prospect of... No, the exhilarating prospect of Grado versus Jeff Jarrett. Tony's been, all in. Tony's been putting his hand in his pocket for a lot of theme tunes lately. There's, if he doesn't buy Madonna <sighs> like a prayer. Get her there. She, li she lives in England, doesn't she? Yeah, she could do it. Oh, she could do it live. No, nah, they're only a small-time promotion. So, <laughs> so you've got you to get them all riled up. They don't do it. Can, so. can she still sing? Could she ever sing? Was Madonna ever really about the singing? Or was she more about the, the whole thing? She can sing. Yeah, yeah she yeah. can sing, she but can. you are right. She obviously... She was more about the performance. performance. We could go on a long tear people, about Madonna. People but... often compare Lady Gaga to Madonna. She's the modern day Madonna. But Lady Gaga is way more of like a vocalist than Madonna, I think. Again, we could spend okay, a good right. hour <laughs> talking about this and <clears throat> people like, oh, great, F fantastic. From the dead cat <laughs> to Taylor Jack, Jack being twice the size he is... In real life, on Twitter, um, rightfully defending Cultaholic and yeah. winning Yay. beautifully. It's like if, <laughs> I the, feel, it's I like feel if like, the Spartans won. Uh, I feel like Tyrion Lannister when he defended King's Landing. Oh, there we go. Perfect analogy. <laughs> there are brave men behind that door. Let's go kill <laughs> them. <laughs> we, we few, we lucky few, he said. <laughs> Poor Mustafa Ali killed him. And your, oh, was it the exhilarating idea or prospect of Jeff Jarrett versus Grado? Mm. Mm. Fantastic. That sounds like a Hall of Fame segment to me. Please go to patreon.com forward slash call the holic and place your votes. This is this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. Ha! Ha! ha. This week in wrestling. Smackdown, the glorious rebirth of Karrion Cross. <laughs> yeah, he's back, baby. It's like he never left. It right? is yeah, like he, he never left. Yeah. <clears throat> Jey Uso opens the show, but is immediately interrupted by Roman Reigns. Paul Heyman and Solo Sokoa. Jay and Roman blame each other for the bloodline breaking apart, and Roman asks Jay why he thinks he can beat him at SummerSlam. Jay points out, because I've already pinned you once, and walks off. Yes. Lovely bit here. Mm. He's not getting drawn into the mind games of Roman Reigns. Yeah. Exactly what was happening. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. You think you're good? You think you're this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, yes, I do. Bye. Jay mm -hmm. seems taller. Mm. This week, yeah, and, and, I, and I don't know whether Walking that's tall. yeah, I don't know whether that's by like design, but there certainly seems to be a, an extra a height to him now. He's mm. riding solo, not with solo. Oh, no, oh. Riding oh. solo. Oh. Yeah. Right. and uh, I like that. Jay got as far as hey, it's me before Roman came. Out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he says, "Why do they like you? Because of me. You're the main event. Because of me." Then Roman reminds him that uh, heavy is the head that wears the crown. Then Biscuit said that. Yeah, uh, and Jay's like, "Yeah, I know. I beat you once. Bye." Very nice. Uh, backstage, Jay bumps into Grayson Waller, offers him a spot on the Grayson Waller effect after he loses at SummerSlam. Jay slaps him. Later, like, Adam Pearce like informs Moore Jay. And CM Punk. You're, you're a poser. poser. Bye. Later, Adam <laughs> and Pearce then informs Grayson went. <laughs> yeah, and then did nothing about it. <laughs> uh, Jay, that Grayson, uh, where we at? Want, uh, Grayson wants a match with him tonight, which Jay accepts. Oh, yeah, Grayson went and complained about Adam Pearce. Yeah. <clears throat> Santos Escobar faces Rey Mysterio to determine the number one contender for the United States title. Unfortunately, Rey is hurt during the match, so Escobar wins by referee stoppage. Austin Theory is watching on from a box in the crowd. Uh, 
He's by himself, so Cole says he's there with all his friends. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the board is in the back. Uh, before we get to your thoughts there, so it was interesting. It was not quite clear. We had multiple conflicting reports. Yeah, I've got no idea what happened. What was happening? Well. PW Torch says, Rey Mysterio suffered a suspected concussion at ringside after Santa Escobar died before the second commercial match. Uh, PWT, PW, that's so hard to say, Pro Wrestling Torch has learned. The medic tended to Rey during the commercial break, and then the match was called off when Rey was showing signs of concussion. So, and they, the, I think, reason there is it's there's some skepticism over it is it wasn't treated like any other legit injury during a match. Yeah, cameras stayed <clears> on Ray when they <throat> came back from break, multiple replays of what might have caused it. We don't think it was that. And then, even to the point of following Jess, the ref, to Mike Rome to make the announcement. So, it was all very much played mm. as oh, this was part of the thing. Um, if if it was a if it was a uh, if it was a work, it's a really rubbish end to a tournament, <laughs> um, yeah. mm. and, and as which, which which clearly makes me think it's not. And they've just sort of tried to make the best of a rough situation. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what's gone on here, but it it seems like whether or not whatever happened, it seems like they've reached their intended destination mm. anyway. Which it seems like it was always going to be Escobar, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was weird to me because he Ray did two nutty dives to the outside, but the second one he did, he landed on nothing. And it's so weird because Ray used to be doing that for years now, but it happened and commentators didn't even pop for the move. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, Ray did that thing where he slides out the ring and lands on nothing. And well, I, on the news video, I, <laughs> which made Tom laugh a lot, <clears throat> I was trying to recap quickly what had happened and I went, and then, and I sounded so patronized. I went, then Ray did his little wee. Like his little surfboard. He did his little splash. But it yeah. sounds like I'm talking about like a little boy. Like he did, he did his little splash, did he? His very athletically Aww. impressive, dangerous yeah. maneuver <laughs> is what I meant Great to say. Great all, all time. <coughs> That's what I said. I literally <laughs> went like, he's the best. And yeah. 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 Uh, backstage, Chelsea, she, sorry, Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green. And Sonia Deville. Brag about becoming tag team champions and mock Bianca Belair for not having a belt anymore. <laughs> Bianca wants to face them in a handicap match, but Charlotte Flair arrives and offers to be her tag partner. And Bianca's like, do you have to be? <laughs> that lovable Oof. baby face, Charlotte Flair. Stop sticking your oar into everything, mm. Charlotte Flair. Uh, What's that sound? It's my shoes. Oh, oh sorry. I oh, thought it was a I cable. Just lugs. Ah. My lugs. Yeah. Have you got that thing where you're it, you're itchy inside your shoe? Yeah, mm. but I think I have dealt with the itch. <sighs> I think we're okay. Good. <laughs> I'm happy. Thanks. I hate when you're itchy inside your shoe. Oh, don't we all so, hate that? So angry. This is like a really bad segue into an advert. So angry. I went, company not I went to Yorkshire for some reason. Oh, inside it, your shoe. Itchy inside your shoe. Inside then try your itch shoe. away. Mm. Aye. Kate Rowe could a heel promo on the crowd. Saying, ha ha, bet all your shoes are itchy as well, you <laughs> get. <laughs> but I uh, ended by L.A. Knight. Who yeah. Com- I was wondering to see if someone was going to do it. Who compares top dollar to Uncle <laughs> Phil? <laughs> uh, Sean Day, the it's Adonis. It's so unfair because you can't not laugh at that. And poor top dollar. He's lost, he's poor he's top lost dollar. so much I mean, timber. Uncle- oh, he is poor if he's only got $3. I mean, to be fair, Uncle mm. Phil's a legendary $3. and awesome character in television. Mm. Love Uncle Unlike Phil. Unlike top dollar. No. <laughs> Top dollar. He's lost a good bit of tip. Oh, he has, to be fair. He's done great. He's looking great. He looks fantastic. But facially, I can see what LA Knight was getting at. You leave Top Dollar alone. He is a lovely man. Why are we saying good things about Top Dollar? Why not? Why can't we? Like, he gets a lot of flack. That's all. like Top Dollar. Crap. When Michael Cole's... Are we not allowed to call <laughs> crap wrestlers Mike... crap now? Yeah, of course Cole's... we are. When, when they're crap. Being... Oh, yeah, Moose Farley's watching Cole's this. Cole's Sorry, they're all mean good. To you. What? When Michael Cole's being mean to you, you need someone to fight your corner. And I want to fight Top Dollar's corner. No, we are... Michael Cole's fighting you, and Michael Cole's right. Oh. We are bottom dollars. No, we're bottom feeders. You bet on us. If we were a tag team called the bottom dollars, you can bet on us. Bet on us. Bet your bottom dollar. And if it's the Friday and the pay-per-views the next day, bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow the sun will come out. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What a crap gimmick. I love it. It is rubbish. Fighting out of Annie the musical. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Fighting out of (laughs) NYC. What a musical, though. Uh, oh. Ashante the Adonis takes on Knight in a singles match. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't win. Oh, no, he didn't win. He didn't. But it was interesting to see an Ashante the Adonis singles match, mm. I guess. Very yeah. rare. Yeah. Lo- I mean, he lo- yes, he lost. But does this say more about the fact that they can only... They have an LA Knight, right? Who do we have LA Knight beat to keep a bit of momentum? Ashante the... You, like, he's, he's gone. He's fallen from facing, like, top-level like guys. Now he's down fighting tag team guys. And I'm like, what's going on? 
Why why aren't they getting behind him? Because he's got nothing currently. Everyone else has got their programs booked. Well, he's keeping them bubbling under. He's, he's slow cooking he's like a, good brisket. He's got a match that we'll discuss very soon that's popped up on the SummerSlam card, that's yes. snapped into the SummerSlam they're card. They're trying to hide. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Bobby Lashley tells the Street Profits that he likes them, but they should dress more like stars. He presents them with a rack of suits, and they seem happy about it. Hmm. You leave my babyface boys alone, Bob. Hurt Business 2.0. <sighs> but Bob has a baby face. He does have a baby face. Literally the face of a baby. <laughs> but I do, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried. About what? The he- I don't want the heel Street Profits. They're so lovable. Mm, you're gonna have so the, No, you're going to have the thing where they come out in the suits... At the request of Bobby Lashley, and then they rip the suits off. And yeah. Make them out. yeah. But they can't because Bobby Lashley bought them such high quality suits that they can't. <laughs> they rip won't them. rip. And they're like, you guys all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's got an itch. It was a match. Was it? It was Moxley versus Desperado from earlier in the month. You know, they had this like death match in Curricon oh, yeah. Hall. And they had a tag match as well with Junkasai and Homicide. Junkasai right? making his New Japan debut. I've never God. seen a Curricon Hall crowd so visibly raucous when he came out. They're like, yeah, it's Junk. Yeah. I didn't realize the Japanese fans. Love Junkasai to yeah. like more than I've seen anyone. Anyway, um, Moxley and Desperado. At one point, Moxley smashes the guitar over Desperado and then I think tries to break the rest of it and it just won't and it just it gets annoyed. Oh, maybe this is a different match. There was a guitar thing at some point in some match. <laughs> what oh, was you're thinking of Jeff Jarrett versus Grado. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. These are getting too mixed up. Yes. Sorry. Despite not coexisting well, the Flair Bel Air connection, that's good, that beats mm. Sonia Deville and Chelsea Green in a non title match. <laughs> Chelsea Green. It, it just happened, wasn't it? It's, well, Charlotte tagged uh, in to get the fall. Oh, that's right. Boom. That's what happened. She took control that's of the right. situation. Uh, and then they made, and there, because she's a plucky underdog baby face. That's right. Yes. And then, there, was there a backstage bit after that? Like someone's watching on? In the locker Bailey, room. Yeah, Bailey's mm. in there. Bailey laughs at Charlotte and Bel Air's argument, calling it embarrassing. Eo Sky immediately arrives and starts arguing with Bailey <laughs> about leaving without her last week. Bailey finds a threatening note from Shotzi in her bag, not dissimilar to the Riddle Cruise from Batman Forever. Before I like Asuka, how you switched to your notes for the Batman reference. Before Asuka <laughs> arrives, Switch. so subtle, isn't it? Hmm. <laughs> Asuka arrives and warns Eo not to try cashing at SummerSlam. Eo doesn't seem put off, even though Asuka is kind of dressed like Tommy Lee Jones, who was also in Batman Forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bailey, Bailey was the highlight of this segment for me, even though she was arguably like the side of it. Like she was not, the, she's not the central part of the story. She's the mushy piece. Her and shot exactly. Her and Shotzi are like the side bit, but then Eo and Asuka is the thing that we're all actually. But then Bailey, as they're leaving, goes to Asuka like, ooh, and Asuka goes, huh, and Bailey goes, oh, <laughs> like she's genuinely scared. Bailey might be the the best heel around today. Mm. She's doing a lot of work considering she's uh, injured right now. She's still, mm. she's doing the Britt Baker thing where she's still a key part of telly she, despite she being... pulling people backstage allegedly. No, Matthew! No! Don't tell us about this week. No, she's, no, as in she's a crucial part of the product despite not being able to have in-ring matches currently. Just saying, Brandon... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Sorry, somebody else said that. That happened. Brendan Thondon. Yeah, oh, there you go. Damn it. His name's so similar. Oh, yeah. It's actually actually bollocks. I apologize. <laughs> LA Knight wants Adam Pierce to put him in the Slim Jim Battle Royal. Yay! No, it's, yeah. Uh-huh. Seamus yeah. arrives and mocks Knight. Saying you can't win a battle royal. You'll royal never win the slam jam, but oh, it's not even. That's not even. His accent <laughs> no, well. not I went like I went to like a pirate or something there. Arr, Arr. Arr. I be <laughs> Irish. <laughs> Pierce puts them both in the battle You'll royal. You'll never win the battle royal of the seven seas. And also also books a singles match with t- and wants to start to talk like a pirate then instinctively between them for next week's SmackDown. My dad's nice. one of those people who doesn't really like his birthday. Like, he doesn't like attempt like a lot of like you know he's like ugh. My brother was born on my dad's 30th. He loved that because all the attention is on my brother and stuff. But also, my dad can avoid attention on his birthday because his birthday is National Talk Like a Pirate Day. Uh. <laughs> and if that falls on a Friday this year, you'll know this podcast going to... No. Five hours of just... Arr! I'd love that. I, I would I'd for unironically first, get into that. For the news, I would. And then I think by the middle of this week in rest and I'd be ready to just leave. I'd go in and out and be like... You can tell the bits were on board. So carrying, arr, he would be carrying. <laughs> I wouldn't be bored for carrying crosses, but he's back. More like carrying the treasure. <laughs> <laughs> carrying, yeah, you're right. That carrying, would not be carrying, boring carrying, or annoying carrying, at all. Carrying the treasure. Arr. It's that classic pirate trope, the bit where they carry the treasure back. <laughs> yeah, you don't see many pirates. Like, well, we actually found it. Nothing bad happened. <laughs> 
Well, <laughs> what do we do next, Captain? I don't know. Oh, I'm going to put mine into a. It's never oh, happened before. Put mine into an icer. I now want to see like Arr. an excruciating Arr. long cut of a pirate film where all the logistics are invo- yeah. included in the. Yeah, yeah, Arr. yeah. This would be hard work then. Oh, no. We need, we need a night shift. <laughs> <laughs> what about this dirt? We can't just leave it laying around. Oh, just put the dirt back in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's Seamus. We don't want to ruin the environment. That's the Seamus voice. Right? Anyway, he beats Carl Anderson in a short <laughs> match. So this is Karrion Cross, not, mm. you know, Jean-Pierre Lafitte. He battered him. Uh, and puts him in the cross jacket until the rest of the OC make the save. Yes. Oh, and here be Luke Gallows. He have two peg legs. <laughs> oh. Take you know, a, sure you, it worked like you one. You go to the gallows. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. It was there. Yeah, so um, <laughs> it was it was the back of the net. Back yeah. of the net. my goal. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. I mean, he's on? got a win. He's no, he's got a win. Mm. This was my biggest takeaway from this SmackDown. Are we leading to Cross and AJ? Yeah, I think they'll have another match. Seems that way, doesn't it? Yeah. Which I assume AJ will win. Fall and or pray. Or maybe maybe Cross will win because AJ's already beaten him. Yeah. Hmm. What do you do with Carry and Cross? All jokes aside, I know it's good that he's back, I and he picked up a, de- a definitive win. I don't know. Do you go like full spooky gimmick, or do you go more less of that? Because it wasn't the card, the tarot stuff wasn't catching on. No, it wasn't. No, uh, it should switch. You should keep on going different ball games every week. <laughs> <laughs> you, may have, you may have won this, the battle. Fall and pray. Let's see how you do well with Operation. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Carrion Cross is a pirate. There, that's, that's our okay. suggestion. Pirate Carrion Cross. Book it, Triple H. Pestilence you just can't ignore. <laughs> with Roman watching on. Bla- t- replace Scarlet with Blackbeard the pirate. But wears the same clothes. <laughs> Blackbeard's not a real man. Well, okay. no, he was. No, he was. Of course, he was a real man. Sorry, yeah, he was. He I was. be real. He was a real man's man. Source, <laughs> WrestleNomics. He was. He was real. Blackbeard was Arm. real. Brandon, yes, yes, Brandon yes, yes, said he was real. He was. He was. He had a name. Was it Teach? Someone Teach? Edward Teach. I want to say. You he can't. Edward Blackbeard. That. Anyway, God, he was a real man. Black and beard. Yes, that's right. <laughs> what should we call our son? Ah, oh, Blackbeard. Moon, called Moon, <laughs> He'll grow uh, annoyed. Uh, uh, Moon Unit Beard, I believe he was. <laughs> Moon <laughs> Unit Beard. No, don't be silly. He was Dweezil Beard. Uh, <laughs> With Roman watching on, Jay Uso beats Grace Samoa in the main event. Solo and Roman attack Jay after the match, but Jay hits Reigns with a spear. Mm. But then they beat him up. Then they beat him up. The numbers game is too much in the end, and Jay gets beaten down to end the show. But hey, the fact that he did it. Jay does spear a nice got a, spear. He does, and it got a huge reaction from the crowd mm. when he did it as well. Yes. Yeah. Looking good for the SummerSlam match. Yeah. I mean, I. I of all, uh, maybe, I know, to be fair, we never really thought Sammy was going to win, did we? But we thought Drew was going to win back then, remember? Uh, <laughs> we thought Cody was going to win. Mm. Jay is lying more on the Sammy side of things for me, where it would be a really good story if he won, but I think the, the, they're going in a different direction. With I agree. It. So I would wonder how they're going to do this one, because I think, was it you who suggested? We talked about My suggestion. Was it you who suggested Solo. Solo might annoy Roman by getting involved? I said that. Yeah. I thought Tom said that. I thought I said. Did we both say it the Maybe same. No, said I said. I definitely said it last week. <laughs> oh no. Nice. Um, I said I want to start. I said I want to start a video series where I it's you've been framed with wrestlers, so we capture all the times where they fall over. I said that in like. <laughs> <laughs> I said that in like 2008, <laughs> and, and then someone came along. And someone came. I had a little sleep when I woke up. Someone came along. Were you going to have you like, in this one? Were you going to have it like full of like video game music? And yeah, because like, yeah, I love old video games. And old film Do you, Tom? You had it so well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed I've watched the most recent one and the Taz segment was so good people that's really catching on people are bringing signs of like people that cartoon love, Taz people love Taz I love Taz Taz Taz's reaction to me is going to be interesting at A-Dub well don't approach it <laughs> I'll have to will you he's the human suplex machine yeah I know I'd be quite worried if a man suplexes you in the middle of the street, that's probably assault. I thought you were going to say that's good luck. Like if you get pooed oh. on by a pigeon, if you, if you get suplexed by Taz, yeah, you'll have yeah. a good yeah, day. Yeah. <laughs> Every time you get suplexed by, by, by Taz, an angel yeah. gets his wings. <laughs> if you change them together, if he's belly to belly in you down the street. Yeah, yeah. That's really great. I'll see you in the pub later. <laughs> yeah. Hey, bro, where's your seats? I'm in uh, row G5. Yeah. yeah. G5. <laughs> Maybe no, never mind. You were gonna. I, I was gonna make a joke, and, I, and then I stopped myself because I was worried you were gonna make it smutty, right? I'll be honest. That doesn't sound. I said like maybe me. he'll send hook after you, and I thought you would then go like, "Bloody wish you would." <laughs> Why would I say that? That's a disgusting thing. Because hook's an 
incredibly handsome man. Oh, is he? Yeah, I never know. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, who knows? Well, is, maybe, is that... well, maybe you'll beef with him like all the incredibly handsome wrestlers on Twitter then. Eh? <laughs> I choose the ones I hate most because they're handsome. <laughs> they're that girl on the playground that goes and kicks her lad in the shins and runs off. Like, that? Years later, oh, she fancied us. Oh, I like, hey. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. AW Collision. I'm seeing double. Four Rickies. Hey. <laughs> and that was a fly reference for Joel because Fry's his favorite future. I'm a character as we learned last week. Didn't it's we? It's a Fry reference. Fry. That's nice. It's a Simpsons joke. It's not though. Fry. It's a Simpsons joke. I thought Fry went I'm seeing. Oh, is it no, a Simpsons one? It's a Simpsons one. Who said it? Homer? No, it's the, the mobster guy, but I can't remember the name of him. Oh, I thought it was a feature. Oh, never oh mind. it's the mobster wow. yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's one of the guys who works for Fat Tony. So who, someone behind the camera said Fry was their favorite. Oh. These are two different shows. Well, that wasn't a Fry. But that wasn't a Fry reference. Sorry, right. Damn it. I really thought that was Fry. I like Jack going, yeah, but. I'm seen. Do you like Fry? And it wasn't Fry. No, Fry. I won't have fries with that. Oh, oh, good save. Let's move on. Andrade wins the ladder match to get his mask back, pushing Julia Hart off a ladder into Buddy Matthews, sending him through a table Crunch. in the corner. Crash, bang, wallop. What a ladder match. <laughs> um, yes, I was watching this going, look, singles ladder matches could be made to order nowadays because there's only so much you can do. Uh, so nice spots, but it is just a match at this point for me. That sunset flip was insane, though. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, Andrade would, uh, won and got like two seconds to bask in his victory. Before <laughs> before we go to Miro backstage, he was instantly attacked. And Jesus, how about some decaf for the AEW crew? Yes, oh. it was Aaron Solo. But it, I, I, had the, I thought, you know I what? I won't, even bother, <laughs> I won't even bother writing the name down because I know Jack will do his job. But it was lightning fast. Yeah. Um, I felt boring because of this match. I felt like an old man because I was like, I think I would have enjoyed this without the weapons. Just a singles yeah. match between these two lads would have been amazing. Maybe they'll... That's exactly what yeah. I thought, old man to old man. Yeah. But I guess it's probably built into Andrade versus Malachi, and that'll be a great match. Yeah. But I think at this point, it's safe to say we've seen a million ladder matches at this point. Yeah. And yeah, this was this was good and everything did the right, but it's like, yep, mm. yep, that comes the thing. Yeah. What do you think, Tom? I, th I enjoyed it, but mm. I'm very much in the mindset of you guys that I don't think it needed to be yeah. a lot of match. Mm. Yeah. And fair play to Julia, though, for that bump, which is quite scary at the end. And fair play to Buddy for catching her. Yes. Oh, yeah. It was a nice. I'm worried well. it sounded like I said a swear word when I said for catching her. Well oh, done. Did it not? Nah. It'd be all right. Okay. Yeah, it yeah. sounds like the bread. We've fine. had it. It's right. The guy in you, Judas, listening. If firing. you're ever watching the podcast and you notice a little cut in between two. Don't the chances are one of us may have said something that sounded like a swear word by accident. Mm. The worst one was when I said Hunter Hurst Helmsley, but it oh, sounded I like I said one. the C word, Hurst Helmsley. <laughs> I laughed hard at that. I think I got left in. <laughs> yes, it did. Hunter Hurst Helmsley. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. God, maybe jump then, you little get. It's been a little get. Minoru Suzuki is revealed as a surprise opponent mm. for Darby Allen. Uh, Darby wins, but Christian and Luchasaurus appear in the Tron afterwards to deny him a TNT title shot. Mm. Christian says he'll send Darby back to Hot Topic, and boy, the crowd liked that line. I know. So it's not even, Christian doesn't even get usually like great material, but he delivers it so well. People are like, oh, that's great, that. Right, because it's not that inventive, yeah. the joke. Ah, Hot Topic. You look like an emo. That's what ah. you said. <laughs> but it, well, yeah, so it's Christian. Yeah, yeah. So good. Uh, however, Mizuru Suki did his little music thing, his entrance as they called him, and Darby <laughs> interrupted the theme. Thing. He interrupted the theme. Yeah. Kaze Nina Ray. He's the worst Darby. I like can't believe he did that. JR nearly talked over it and Excalibur speared it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, nice Have match, you? a nice surprise, because I'm like, oh, he's, he's here, is he? Yeah. I had no idea he even I wonder why he was there. there. Maybe he was visiting the dojo in LA. He's good old mate CM Punk from back in the today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Smojo beats Gravity. Now, Gravity had appeared the previous week on Dynamite, because he's like a Ring of Honor little un up and comer. A little up and comer? Yes, Ooh, certainly like is. Like Ray Mysterio with his little, little splash. Uh, when he was wrestling Pac, because, you know, hey, Pac versus Gravity, uh, crowd were like, ah, we get this, we get jokes. Here, Samoa Joe was so ungodly over that Gravity did his slow-mo moon stuff, but the crowd was like, we don't care about you at all. <laughs> and he... He got booed because they love Joe so much. Joe mocked Gravity in his slow-mo stuff and crowd loved it. Because yeah. that was it, because Gravity came off the top and Joe did that, I'm just going to walk away. Yeah. But then and then started doing the... <laughs> I thought it was very funny. It was like when Austin stunned Jeff then did the Fargo strut afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Austin's 
Fargo strut. Is the most heavy-footed father. <laughs> He's not got like the little wiggle to it. He just kind of clomps along, which is very Austin. Yes. Mm. Sam Punk arrives for an interview, interview with Tony Schiavone. He mentions Ricky Starks cheating to beat him twice before revealing the contents of his bag, the AEW title he never lost. He proclaims himself the real champ and sprays an X on the center plate of the belt. Over E for elite. Well, well, you had to go through the yeah. As you say, like over the A, it's but, just in the side. but I mean, it is true. <laughs> they, they've not appeared on Collision yet. But yeah, I think that even if it wasn't intentional, when he realised what he was doing, he was probably like, "Yeah, I'll have that. that's good." I don't know. Yeah, because he's a little dick. <laughs> 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 and he's over, this little dick is interrupted by a bigger dick, Ricky Starks, who thinks that he deserves to hold the belt. Hey, wait, and he interrupts him and then goes, actually, can I make my full entrance, uh, please? <laughs> he goes, oh, you're one of the highlights of the night, this. <laughs> he goes, wait, 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 I want my music to play. Leaves, comes back out, and Nigel goes, oh my God, it's Ricky Starks. <laughs> <laughs> He wants a rematch, but Punk will only agree if they have a special guest referee to stop Starks cheating again. Starks agrees. The match is set for next week, and the referee is revealed to be Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Oh, oh, I'm Kay. seeing double for Ricky. That, that's good for that little joke. Um, <laughs> as Philip J. Fry didn't say. Yeah, that's right. As Fry from The Simpsons famously said. Uh. Uh, point, <laughs> punk, even Punk pointing out that we still don't know what he's doing at Wembley with 80K fans. Uh, it's a good point. We still don't know. No. Uh, Crowd well received Punk this time round. Uh, as soon as he got that belt and point out he never lost the title and sprayed the X over it, there were boos. Like, oh, we're like, and you're just trying to move on. Now you go back to this and being a bitch. Um, <laughs> no, no. Ricky points out that he's mint. Punk is salty as hell, that Ricky cheated, and that the refs didn't spot the cheating. And Ricky's like, so what? I could have had Stevie Wonder refing, and I'd still beat you. <laughs> <laughs> so Punk wants a special guest ref, and R Ricky says, yeah, okay, you ain't got any mates here, so go at your pass and go get Dave Prezak or Julio De Niro or someone from Connecticut. Crowd really like that. <laughs> and yeah, who are you going to bring out? Both of FTR? That best of Bret Hart VHS tape you watch every night, you know? And it's Ricky Steamboat because of that one match they had in Ring of Honor like decades ago. Yeah, they is, um, hate CM Punk in cafe. Yeah. Hmm. Probably not. And people are quick to point out, weird how NJF was on this show and seemed perfectly okay with CM Punk saying that he was the rightful champ. That was a weird, yeah, the fact that yeah. MJF was on the same night and they just don't address it. So it's, we had obviously the Codyverse back when Cody was a thing. Mm. Now there's like multiple... Oh, if only there was a word for multiple universes. <laughs> I know, they're uh, still figuring that one out. And it was popular in current day, like, pop culture to point that out. But it's like, it's like there's several different universes going on. The, the thing is, I feel like with, and, and, and there's pros and cons to both. Like, with WWE, a lot of the stories are very straightforward, sometimes too straightforward, where, like, very sort of narrow yeah. path, this is what we're doing. If you missed last week or the week before, this is what's happened. I feel like you've got to really pay attention to AEW. AEW, there's a lot. It yeah. punishes yeah. you for, like, missing I think a show. I don't know what many people say about, like, like, you can watch any episode of Raw or SmackDown, even, by God, NXT, if you're that way inclined, and you will be kept up to speed. They'll recap, they'll show the video packages and stuff, and you can skip that if you're obviously up to yeah. date. But it, it's you can jump on at any time. AEW's like, what do you mean you didn't watch Ring of Honor 30 years ago? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I get having, and I love having little nods to other stuff that rewards you as a fan. Yeah. I think that's great. But when it's a, 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 when it's a the weighted focus. down majority of yeah. your show, that's when it's an issue. When you have to get it to follow the overall thing. Because yeah. there's, I mean, there's one bit which we'll talk about in a bit, which is a throwback to something from the past. And it was magnificently oh. done by AEW. Uh, I got yeah, magnificently yeah. done. Okay. My favorite wrestling moment of the week outside of meeting Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> and, uh, and and so they do when they sometimes when it's done like that, it's done fine. But when it's like layers upon layers of the champs here, but I'm a champ. Remember, mm. I didn't lose that guy. This guy's the ref. I faced him in Ring of Honor. All oh, yeah. especially ago. awkward with this one because it's like you better remember it because we are not legally allowed to say it. Yeah. I'll point out why this is happening which again I still can't figure out how they managed to get around that like, no you could just, yeah. just just carried on as if nothing happened I mean it, it, I'm old fashioned yeah. maybe yeah. it is going to eventually lead to MJF versus Punk it should it has to it has to mm -hmm. yeah but yeah. 
It'd be funny, MGF's a baby pig. No, I'm all right, punk. You can say that. <laughs> like, lovely. He's a, well, he's a new man. That's MG, now. Yeah, MGF yeah. tries to. No, I'm all right with punk doing that. Yeah, he's learned how to be vulnerable. Mm. It's easy to get booed. The hard thing is being vulnerable. Mm. See, and, and, but also, this is a failing in the backstage journalism of RJ City and Renee Paquette. Oh, because no. I would. Having <laughs> the other seen source that of our info. They've not asked any of the right questions. Having yeah. seen that by punk, I'd have been going, right, it? can we reach out to CM Punk? And just, so, can we reach out to MJF yeah, and just yeah. get his thoughts on it? That's what a journalist. List does. Yeah, not. Right. Ooh, can I interview Colt Cabana? And <laughs> you see yeah. Colt Cabana's reaction to uh, at the start. RJ said he's doing his whole like intro spiel, where he's like, "So, Colt Cabana, here you are on Between Two Ferns or whatever he called. What does RJ say he call his one? Hey, 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 hey w. you. Or yeah, and Colt Cabana just goes, "Wait, can I not do this?" Like, I, I, he's like instantly got regret. He's like, "I don't want to be here. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to do this." And that was a really good start. <laughs> I'm learning about. I'm starting to get RJ City. I think. His he's very hit and miss on that show because it he's all it, he's all RJ. I'm trying to use my words very he carefully. Is. I'm very sorry. That's why I'm stuck and stuttering. Yeah, it's all him. If he's got a willing dance partner, he's fine. Right. Yeah. But if not, it's like you know, mm. blunt teeth. I can relate to that. He's a lot, yeah. <laughs> and I can relate to that. <laughs> oh come on! I can relate. To yeah, that. but I think you're a lot more of a willing dance partner than perhaps aren't. Anyway. <laughs> The Guns and Juice Robinson beat the team of Darius Martin, Axel Andretti, and El Geo del Vikingo. Can we take a moment to appreciate the Guns and Juice's entrance? I thought you were going to say the effing table which keeps on moving. No, no, not that. No, the Guns and Juice's entrance. Yeah, the but no, no, the, 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 the road back. The road the, back, yes. Rotating with the, with, the, with the spit and the guns, but then Juice Robinson looking like, like a wild villain from a <laughs> cowboy movie. Yes. Yeah. Just like m laughing maniacally at the camera as it spins around. Oh, mm. it's so the, good! The, and that beautiful theme they've got going as well. Oh my the, god, god, I the, love it. The glow up of Bullet Club Gold has been a thing to behold. They are they are now the cool boys. It's they certainly beautiful. are. And uh, they had a cardboard Jay White. Obviously, you can get that from the EW merch <laughs> store, I'm sure. Um, and they were able to win, and the match was fine. It's like they don't need the real Jay White. Mm. <laughs> you can't say that in a month where... I can. Uh, just after he's had those brilliant tag matches against FTR, and you're still going, ooh, Jay White. That was 95% Juice Robinson. No, it was not. They both came he in about the, the, the bit of pulp. Time. Didn't they? Oh, they, come on. They kind of came, Juice Robinson and Jay White, roughly the same time. Was it exactly yeah, the same that they came I in? Juice might have... Uh no, Jay White, made a bit, Jay White made an appearance in the backstage segment. He like, did. It's oh, Jay White! And then yeah. that was it. And everyone went, ooh, ooh, all right. But yeah. I think everyone kind of thought that Jay would be the leader and Juice would be like the the, the co... Uh, the, 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 the side, the yeah, the side yeah. guy. I think I think Juice might eclipse Jay White, you know. I'm, I'm saying it. I think Juice is going to eclipse I Jay White. I think Jay White's running a marathon, not a sprint. That's a good shout. Oh, that's good for wrestling. <laughs> 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 Fresh off her defeat to Rio at North Thunderstruck. Yeah. Uh, Go on, Rio. Mercedes Martinez beats Kira Organ via submission. Mm. She keeps the hold locked on, so Chris Statlander runs out to make the save, but Mercedes gets the TPS title belt and lays her out with him. She says she's coming for the gold before finally being chased away by Willow Nightingale. Mm. Good to see Mercedes Martinez have something uh, to be involved because she's a really good wrestler. Mm -hmm. I have no further comment. I mean, I, I just think it's good. <laughs> Win the TBS title. Bring it back to Newcastle. Oh. Face Rio again. Yeah. Face the Red Rose oh. among the Thorns again. Go on. Absolutely. The Red Rose among the Thorns. The Red oh my God, Rose she's from among the Thorns. She's from Lancashire. She's the Red Rose. Yeah. Rio. Oh. That's why it's her announcement. Now we need someone from Yorkshire and they can have the War That's of the Roses. Oh my God. Yeah. Natalie Sykes is from Yorkshire. She's on the roster. There you go. War of the Roses. Bye. Done. Book of Bowers. I think, I think Natalie Sykes. I don't know where Natalie Sykes is from. She's Northern. She's from Leeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that counts. Bye. Joel, you're so, from Yorkshire. You know. Uh, you know about all that. <laughs> you'll know. You know. You know her. Well, you know the... You hate bloody language, I don't you? God. Oh, Joel, God. just pretend you know her. I don't call on MGF have their big target shot against FTR. MGF saves Cole from the shot machine, but gets rolled up and loses. Ah. FTR leave while Cole lands... Sorry, hands a distraught MGF the AW title. And he turns his back and realizes that MGF is about to betray him, but had his hands out. However, MGF throws the belt aside and they hug it out. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. Where is this going? <laughs> What's happening? Can they coexist? <laughs> yes. Yes. I was yes, going to say, yeah, Lucha Blog said, no, can they coexist? This is, yeah. This has got me on the edge of my seat because one of them is going to be mean to the other one. And they've built such a beautiful thing. It's like the list of Jericho type emotions I'm getting right now. The list of KO. The, why is my name on this? That thing. 
I wouldn't say edge of the seat. I think we're edging at the end of our seat here because <laughs> it's like it just it, God, it feels like any moment. And I and I, I think there is such a pivotal point. <laughs> there is such a <laughs> there is such a pivotal point that I feel like it could either be spectacular or devastatingly missed. It's good. Oh, they are such at such a pivotal point. They are. They are. And it, and it's and it's okay, and now that you like you know you're pulling the trigger, but you gotta now now you gotta know exactly who's gone and when. Well, we still and you get one chance to get it right. I think we all still disagree over who's pulling whose strings here, in the thing, and it's swinging. But every week, it's I'm like second guessing myself. Yeah, I thought it was just gonna be this really obvious. Okay, MGF's gonna do again. The thing I went to is Ric Flair. Halloween Havoc 95. Come on, Sting. You mm. and me team up. Come on, buddy. Radio gets these two lads or whatever. And Sting falling for it like a dumb dumb. Matthew loves stupid Sting. <laughs> stupid Sting. Stupid Sting. He's so dumb. Because uh, <laughs> it was such an amazing turn. Because like, oh, here it comes. And he's just, you know, we all knew it was coming, but it was so great nonetheless because all the people involved in it. However, this time they go, no, we, we might genuinely be turning MGF face here. Uh, and he is getting great that nice reaction. So I'm like, oh, okay. Oh. So I think it's hard to predict now, but I am enjoying the hell out of it. At this yeah. stage. So I think they looked, I don't know, maybe they looked at the re went, hmm, they're doing a really long storyline involved with personalities and people and friendships and stuff that people can relate to. There's nothing about contracts, <laughs> acquisitions, <laughs> which no one cares about apart from, you know, people like TK. So now it's like, okay, I'm not really, I'm not focused on guessing the result. I'm just, I want to enjoy their chemistry together because man have they been killing it with the crowd reactions they really have uh, wow they, the MGF is properly faced now yeah if Cole is the one who turns on him he'll be a heel then everyone will be annoyed at him for doing that surely yeah because MGF for some reason everyone now is but then I think whoever I think this is why it's such a pivotal point <laughs> whoever turns on whoever the crowd are going to be annoyed with yeah. them yeah Maybe it is MJF. Because people love, people really enjoy MJF. People really enjoy Adam Cole. So whichever way it goes, the crowd are going to be annoyed. Hit heel Adam Cole can only Twitch Cole. play really bad games. <laughs> Cole is the best in the world at a certain thing, right? And he did it with MJF this week, and he's done it with Gargano before. When they're plugging, have you seen the video game Fight Forever? Yeah. When MJF's like, "Hi, I love video games." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny. And Cole's like, yeah, they're all awesome consoles, man. What are you talking about? Have you seen the one where him and Gargano are doing like the, they're plugging the, I think the War Games playset. Yes, that's it. And he's yes. like, he's like, and who's in the War Games playset? Well, someone who's been in every single War Games match in NXT. And Gargano goes, that's right, Keith Lee. And then Cole's like, <laughs> and he does the best like sad, angry thing. He's so good at it. And mm. I, I'm, and yeah, I don't know where this is going, but I am really enjoying it. Mm. I'm worried. It's got me worried. I'm mm. worried. Plus it's, plus, it's so nice and gay. Two, <laughs> la two lads who hate each other, they're rivals, and then it's like, oh, oh okay. really, you know what, yeah. actually? It's like, oh, this mm. is going so well, is when MJF's going, I blew it, I blew it, and Cole's like, we blew it. I thought, this is yeah. absolutely genius. Like, just yeah, also, <laughs> the build-up to this was fantastic <laughs> as well, because FGR came out every week and did their really serious, nowhere proper wrestling promo. <laughs> yeah. They were close line, and on collision, crowds have been like, yeah, we like the FGR, but... And even, yeah, on Dynamite as well, going, yeah. ah, <laughs> double close line. Yeah, we're going to kick out with that. <laughs> like, doing a really good job of selling, like, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. We're, 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 we're FDR. Yeah. And he wouldn't lose to these two. And they did the very nice, um, was it tombstone counter into another counter, in the counter, super kick where he's got there, bounce off the ropes into the tombstone, shades of Batista Undertaker uh, for a two count. <laughs> yeah. Not very exciting stuff there. The finish was good. Yeah, because it obviously made, played into the story. Because so. he saved him from the shadow machine, yeah. countered it, went for the heat seeker, the power, yeah, mm -hmm. power driver thing, and then um, got rolled up. Yep. And it was almost like a shock that that rolled up. It felt like it was just going to be another kick out, but yep. he got him. Yeah. Which I think that's definitely the FTI influence. How about we have a roll-up that Howard. just comes out of nowhere and it's like, oh, Dax yeah, Howard, that's it. Dax Harwood, like Jey Uso, now has a claim to the... He's pinned the champion clean. Dax Harwood should be the AEW. He should get a title shot. Lineal champion. I agree. He is the lineal champion. Like, our culty. Like Alexander Usyk. Alexander Usyk? I don't know. The boxing man. Yes. I had to think then, Alexander. Who, yeah. The boxing Isn't he guy. the lineal heavyweight champion at the minute? Or is it still Fury? No, it's, it's Fury, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. It's been a while since I've checked in, to be honest with you. <laughs> anyway. Sorry. It's one of, the, one of those lads. <clears throat> yeah. NXT. Great American Bash. Oh, yes. You bugger. Andre Chase is a coward. Oh, <laughs> who that? oh mate. Oh, uh, uh, Pre-show, Nathan Fraser 
Dragon Lee, Valentina Forez, uh, and Ulisa Leon, sorry, beat the metaphor in an eight person tag match. They actually say like Feroise or something, because I think she's, I don't know. Mm. I, I pronounce it wrong as well. Um, yeah, it was a pre show match. I thought the heels would win because the faces had stood tall, but the faces just beat them again. But Norm Dar's still very smug on weekly TV, <laughs> and yeah. rightly so. Got his cup. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Joe Coffey tries to interfere to help Gallus retain the titles, but Tony mm. D hits him with a crowbar. He and Stax win to become yeah. <laughs> he and Stax win to become the new NXT tag team champions. Bada bing, bada boom. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, mm. Shut up, you. Um, the Dons come out and they have rats in their Titantron video. That sends a mixed signal to me. I don't know about you. <laughs> That's anonymous or someone else. No. Uh, no. Gallus seem to get more pop for their spots, like Wolfie's moonsault, than the Dons did for anything. But the fake, the fake crowd machine liked them. Uh, positive. The titles are off Gallus, finally. Oh. But just, but like you said there, just when they were starting to get rolling, actually. The crowd were like, ooh, they do do nice moves. They are a good tactic. And here comes, you know, the Dons with um, Snapmare. Here comes two characters who've been put together, yeah. Yes, yeah. who were supposed to cheer because they're not, they right. were not, uh, <laughs> they didn't do it bad. Why are we cheering? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Thank you, yeah. But we're being positive. The titles are off Gallus, so that means well, someone else can do something else with them. Hello, Barry. Hello, Barry. I don't know if... I what? don't know. Wolfgang watches news videos, but... Oh, he might watch the long form. Barry. Like Barry? What do you know? What? Who calls him Barry? I do. Him. Hello, Barry. You do, do you? I do, oh, do, do, do I? Oh, you do? Oh, don't they do? I think... Just afternoon tea, Barry. Yeah, I, think what, I think what Gallus needs is... Hello, Molly. Hello, a, Barry. I think Gallus needs a West Midlands manager. To help them, yeah. All right, Barry. Geezer mm. Cool-like. That's what they're missing now. Geezer <laughs> Cool-like. In front of her family, Roxanne Perez beat Blair Davenport in their Weapons Wild match. Weapons Wild? It's yes, just... that's what it was called. Weapons it is Wild. wild. The NXT have used that term previous, usually on the wheel, when they do spin the wheel. And that's that. right. Because yeah. I think NXT are still, they've still got remnants of like cowboy themes sometimes, don't they? Like Stand and Deliver. Well, that's a high women thing, but Stand and Deliver, mm. Weapons Wild. We're all cowboys. Okay. <laughs> NXT, we're all cowboys. <laughs> talk, NXT, talk oh, like a pirate it's day. It's literally because it's Shawn Michaels, isn't it? He's Texan. Yeah. Damn it. No That's mercy why. Yeah. for you non-cowboys, mm. as it's called. That's right. Yeah. NXT presents no. HBK is still hot, all right? Gal, my <laughs> saloon, you bastards. Uh. Can we carry on? Anyway. <laughs> pause you bastards. <laughs> pause this match. Blair came through the crowd. And mouthed off at uh, the family. Thought that was nice. Mm. It's the proper, like, oh, you're a bad person. Roxanne used a cowbell, and Vic yelled, Dusty would be proud. Booker T. Oh, what? Using your family to get is a pop? Booker yes, you would actually like that. Is Booker on your list of positives here? Uh, oh, let's man. have a look. It's been a while since I did this. <laughs> Her family hasn't been pushed enough that the crowd actually care enough, so instead the crowd explodes when a table shows up. True, yeah. And looks huge next to Roxanne. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh... It reminded oh, me of no, so the liked... um, which which was it which was a little Britain where they did the Dennis Waterman sketches. Oh, they'd hand him like a like a toothbrush and he'd be like, and yeah, it'd be massive yeah, when it yeah, comes. Yeah, yeah. Here's your table rocking. Oh, thank you very much. Mm. I like the definitive finish of the splash through the table, then the pop rocks onto chairs. Solid hardcore match, getting a revenge. Yes, if there's one thing, oh, it doesn't matter. Just I meant I referenced this match on the pitches video literally this week. Um, Blair Davenport had a really good. Weapons wild match in WCPW once against Tegan Knox yeah. or Nixon Newell for the inaugural WCPW Women's World. With the red Champions. chairs. Yeah, she kicked her head through the chair, and it was a yeah. great. It was a really good spot. Um, so, if when this match was announced, I was like, Blair Danforth's gonna be good in this match, mm. and she was. She shouted yeah. at the family. She, the one negative was she did miss a move. She put rocks dangling on the rope, and then she came off the top. To, uh, she missed her because rocks is so small. Small target, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like actually, you know what? Fair enough. Mm. Uh, Burn the ships. What? That's that's Baron. He's all about burning the ships. Come on. What the hell does that? It's his new theme tune. Burn, burn the ships. Arr. Quick, the navy be after so us. Burn not, the ships. I'm not certain what it means, but <laughs> it sounds like we're two thirds of the way into a film with many twists and turns. Burn yeah. the ships. Why? Because they're burn chasing the ships. Um, so Corbin's been burning his old 
relics of his old like Chips. gimmicks. And yeah. Stuff. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But now he has now he has just a slightly different look. It's not like a radical new look. It's like yeah. he met himself on NXT, Tom. Yes. And this the new version of himself was slightly taller. <laughs> not quite sure what's happening with that. But it's just yeah, spinal him. issues before. That have now but been it's still, uh, yeah, it's it's me. But I, it's like, do you ever go to the shops to buy some new clothes and you're just buying stuff that's vaguely like the stuff you've already got? Yes. Yeah. Black t shirts usually. Yeah. yeah. But this yeah. one's got long sleeves as opposed to short sleeves. Ooh. It's a completely different mm. look. So Burn yeah. the ships. This is this is I obviously don't know what it means. this is obviously what people were talking about here I might because see lyrics to his song if it's got any more. Please do because there was nothing else to talk about in this match. Oh, Gable's got a sick double leg, brother. Baron Corbin <laughs> debuts his new music video against Gable Stevenson, who the crowd do not enjoy. They fight on the outside and both get counted out, but keep brawling. Officials run to break it up. The crowd were not into Gable. They were, they at were all. into Baron Corbin. They were Robin. into Baron Corbin, the new hated heel who has just got his repush started with this new look. <laughs> oh, can, can, I, can I have I a guess? It, can I have a guess what before you say it? Yes, can I have a guess? I might be on. way off the off the mark. Burn the ships meaning, say for example, Baron Corbin is on land and he sees new people coming in. So by burn the ships, you're stopping the new people from taking to the land. So you're keeping the new blood. Off the ice. I think you're close. It's it's like a there's no going back now. Oh, we're Vikings. Burning we're, your own we're, ship. We're Vikings. We've landed on new land. Burn oh, the ships. Oh, this it is a Viking right. thing. Yeah. That's right. So there hmm. we go. Nice. I like it. Yeah, the encourage him. like, yeah, I'm not saying you have to succeed, but we're burning our ships. Why not so, give that yeah. to the actual three Vikings on the main roster? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good, good point, actually. Yeah. They've already burned their ship. Yeah, uh, yeah well, burning bridges. That's where the phrase this ship has burned is coming from. Of course it is. This ship has burned. Yeah, yeah you know. The ship sails. The ship is... I'm just, yeah, who says ship the ship has burned? Is that an expression? Baron Corbin says it all the time. Yeah, Baron, <laughs> apart from Baron Corbin. Isn't that, isn't that Florence and the Machine song? Possibly. Yeah, it sounds like a sort yeah. of imagery, doesn't it? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so burning the bridges, Gable Stevenson. Florence and the um, I've no idea. Uh, sure, she's good. Yeah, so the crowd she are chanting. I know. I'm trying to talk about the wrestling. The crowd are chanting. <laughs> no, for you don't get this. Go and loud the Gable. The crowd. M O Z K E Y M O U S E. I hate you both. <laughs> the crowd's audio gets lowered when the Baron Corbin chants kick in. Oh. Booker T goes, wait, let's listen to the crowd not realizing the chant for Baron <laughs> Corbin. And Vic has to be like, well, they can do what they like. It's the Great American Bash, mm. as if it's like the crazy part of the year or Bizarre something. Bizarre world. Yeah. Great American it's Bash. It's Bizarre world, the same building we're always in. <laughs> yeah. Gable gets a German on the oh, floor. Oh, no, this was somewhere. Oh, this was somewhere, actually. Yeah, they were out Where of town, were they? Were they? Oh, you Texas. can tell. Ah, uh, uh, Bizarro yeah. World, famously. Sean's yeah. back on. Gable yeah. gets a German suplex on the floor, and Vic says Gable and Angle are the only gold medalists in WWE, cruelly forgetting the Iron Sheik. How dare you? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yes. Vic Hart responds with, you're not Angle, Chance. Mm -hmm. And then more Baron Corbin comments, booze, followed by BS. And then they do a thing where he kind of puts him through that one bit that always gets slammed on the yeah. outside. Uh, and then they boo him some more after that. And then they quickly play his music. I don't think it could have gone worse for Gable Stevenson. Mm. No, like, this makes me realize that maybe we need to remember that there are more plants in the performance center than because the difference in crowd reaction when they go somewhere else is. I used to joke yeah. about it, but now it's people like, no, no, no. I was half joking, but half like, yeah. Because sometimes they've had, they've had cracking events on NXT mm. this year. So they've gone places that they haven't been before. And the match has gone, oh, okay. I don't know who the hell these people are, but yeah, I'll cheer for the this. The was up for it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, hey, maybe they just read the same stuff we've read about Gable. I don't know. Maybe. Or maybe it's the, as well, on top of that, maybe it's the clear, like, they are forcing him. They want us to like him too much. It's the Roman mm. Reigns thing. Or maybe they love Baron Corbin. All fans of Sturry. Burn the ships. <laughs> Zutalor. Backstage, Liar Valkyria is looking Lyra? forward. I thought well, I got that that time. Liar, Lyra. Lyra, Lyra, Crocodile. Liar. Valkyria. Lyra and the Machine is looking forward <laughs> to a match next week against JC Jane, but is also keeping eye on the women's title match tonight. Mm. JC ambushes Lyra and they brawl. Seems to happen every time anyone's backstage nowadays from wrestling. Yeah, officials like wish to Miro break it up. Aaron Solo situation. Right. Which presumably means that Corbin and Gable are now free to start fighting again. <laughs> oh, they yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. They work in overtime, those security teams. They came back out and crowd like, no, no, yeah. go back out. <laughs> Thanks to interference from Rhea Ripley, Dominic Mysterio beats Wesley and Mustafa Ali to retain the North American Championship. Ooh. I thought this was very well put together. Very enjoyable three that works mm. to Dom's strengths, which is being Dom, I put here. Um, the other two can do their lovely stuff. Yes. Look fantastic. Feud with Jack on Twitter. And then <sighs> Dom can weird. just be a dick. 
You could come in and be like, look, suplex. And the girl like, boo, yeah. we hate you. It was good. Oh, it was lovely. Dom's NXT run, according to Shawn Michaels um, from the media call before this, is a way of him sort of finessing some of the stuff that he does because he debuted on the main roster and never really had that chance to, you know, get out there and try stuff. You know, the mm. Raw and SmackDown are so are so closely timed and produced that you don't really have time to be a bit fluid and be yeah. a bit loose and fast. So this NXT run, it has a purpose for Dom. Giving him a belt means he has a reason, storyline-wise, to be there every week. And it gives him time to find his voice and sort of, mm. sort of find a new uh, sound. That, that's nice after having one of the biggest matches, WrestleMania, and being one of the hardest <laughs> the company is actually learning how to wrestle. Yeah, it's about time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would also suggest, and while I don't think Shawn Michaels is lying, that probably is a reason, I think there's also another reason, which is we can also get Rhea Ripley on NXT and pop a huge rating. Thumbnails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there we go. Um, they have been obviously putting a lot of uh, main roster dudes on the roster. On the NXT roster, yes. said that very well, didn't Ray's they? Turning just up. to get the NXT ratings up, yeah. just just because they have no interest in currently beating the AW Dynamite. That's, that's just purely <laughs> speculation. Um, backstage, Trick Willie is confident that Kamala Hayes will beat Ilya Dragunov in the main event. Yes. Well, I'm glad yeah. we typed that out and said that. Uh, <laughs> in the women's title match, Tiffany Stratton catches Tia Hale in a Boston Crab, oh. then switches to a single crab, crab bloody hell, Matthew, a single leg crab like Daddy Lance Storm. Yes. That's I don't know why I've done that. That's what it says here. I love a single leg crab. I do like one. I, I also like one. <laughs> That's enough for Andre Chase, who throws in the towel like, well, not like in Rocky Four, I guess. Um, yeah, this was heartbreaking. I is, in my mind, is there a crash zoom when he tries to throw in the towel in Rocky Four? And then it, no, maybe. A what zoom? Wait, like a crash, like a bang, like zooms in on Rocky when he's about to throw in yeah, the towel. Yeah, he's thinking about it. Yeah. But, but he got told no. And said, don't throw in the towels. That's the moral dilemma. Says, Maybe my friend hmm. said not to do this, but he is about to die. All he needed to do was just look at Drago and think, no, this this is bad. It's going bad. I think that maybe Andre has saved Tia Hill, therefore, from death. If you well, follow that's the Rocky Four. Again, that's the thing they always say. If you ask the boss, no, no, I'm all right. I'm all right. Like, no, no, that's why you got these people there to look out for you. Mm. Do you know what Wilder, when he lost the second fight to Fury, maybe? Mm. I think he got rid of like his team because he was like, they threw in the towel. It was like, you were getting... Uh, yeah, I, that's, that's, the, that's the example. Why? If you ask a boxer, yeah. no, 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 I'm doing fine. The fighter fine, I'm never fine. wants to give up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was getting mm. killed. Yeah, I think it was the second, sorry, of, sorry, the second of their trilogy. I think maybe the one where Tyson Fury was clearly. I think the, the most decisive win was the second one. Yeah, so, yeah. The, the third one, one where, obviously won it then, but like the second was, one, it was. Wasn't just, the third one the one that was like, if it was a film, they're like they've gone too over the top. It's too dramatic. There's two back and forth. This yeah. one. Yeah. In fact, in fairness, though, it shouldn't have been a trilogy because Fury won the first one. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Was it a draw? Yeah, 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 what a right. horse poo. Uh, anyway, sorry, I'm getting off. <laughs> Just saying. Lovely, lovely crowd reaction here uh, because crowd are all into the, the storyline, which is rather similar to the one they have on Raw. Just saying, just saying. Until Chase threw in the towel. No one was buying the single crab as this killer move because it was a submission match. So it came out of nowhere. Uh, delightful Hudson was furious. Yeah. Now, but I'm shocked. I typed shocked twice to show how shocked I was. Are you actually shocked? I was shocked. I thought Hudson I went, was going to Wait, do wait. This. I thought the life was the guy turning. Yeah. Andre. This is like this is like bloodline stuff. What's going to happen next? Next time I'm raiding him, I'm just going to hurl abuse at him. Who do you raid? Andre Chase. Do you? Yeah. And he goes, hello. <laughs> and people are like, dude, so much being a guy. He goes, I know who he is. I'm playing a game right now. <laughs> <laughs> what is he playing? sweet and innocent. Uh, WWE games. Oh, right. Okay, fair uh, enough. Yeah. I think, I don't think Does he play as himself? No, he's as the um oh god, it's been a while since I played the season mode. Oh right, right, yeah. right, right. I enjoyed Tiffany Stratton's Barbie Dreamhouse entrance. Yes. Yes. That was a nice Very touch. timely. And also record breaking match. Go on. Youngest WWE title match on pay per view in history. What have you had their name? If you had their oh. ages together? Yeah, because wow. Tiffany's twenty four and T Hale's nineteen. Bloody hell. So youngest title match in WWE history on pay per view. Or, or on, on, yeah, special. I was gonna say, didn't might be, might be period. What's his name That's from mad. the Spirit Squad? Didn't he? We have that single. Kenny. Run. Yeah, was it Kenny when he was this yeah. whole thing? Which was challenging Ric Flair. Ric Flair was at like I've I've held more title belts than you've had women. <laughs> I thought you were saying that you've been alive for years. Number of. Which yeah, could remember Ric Flair if you were a four-year-old? <laughs> Unfortunately, Ric Flair bumps up the average age in that match, so that one doesn't count. Uh, yeah. Slightly oh, bumps yeah, what up the average. It, yeah. Ric Flair in youngest yeah, title on, match dude. of all time. Flair, Sorry about <laughs> you, basic man. Imagine if, if Ric Flair versus Kenny from the Spirit Squad. Average age of 87. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Kenny. That's why they got released. They released him. It's like, why are you releasing me? Ooh, bit old. A bit old. Come under our average age. Like, 
Yeah, shocking. But I'm. Um, it's a bit of uh, NXT I like watching. It's this little storyline. So mm. again, just like MGF Cole, I'm like, oh, good. All right, watch NXT, see what happens. Mm-hmm. Backstage, Rhea and Dom confront Dragon Lee, calling a rip off Rey Mysterio. No, they don't. Rhea goes, look, it's Rey Mysterio Jr. Junior. Junior. Yes. And Lee says he'd be proud to be like Rey, but Dom says his dad's a loser. <laughs> yeah, get him. In the main event, Carmelo is beats Ilya Dragunov to retain the NXT Championship. Whoa. These right. boys know how to wrestle. Outstanding. Man. I think Dragunov is on an insane run of form because he had that excellent match against, I think it was Braun a few weeks ago. Yep. And it was like maybe Braun Breaker's best match. Mm. And then he's just carrying on. He's, he can just have good matches with anyone, Dragunov. Not that Braun Breaker's not, Braun Breaker's like really good now. Yep. But when you put Dragunov against someone like Hayes, it's just mm. magic will occur. Magic. Magic. The hand gestures and everything. Magic. I said, crowd run to Mello, but not in a mega way to begin with. Then Ilya started wailing on Hayes when he started, uh, converted a back elbow into a German. And then Ilya started beating the hell out of Ilya. And then Mello countered a van Terminator <laughs> into a backcracker. And uh, oh the crowd were like, oh, okay. And Ilya did this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wish it had been the other way around because yeah. I wanted to make a Hayes travel joke. Yeah. Like oh, went along that's <laughs> right there. Ilya. Mm. And then, like, oh, here comes Bella on top to get that. And then he got to give him a Frankensteiner. And oh. Ilya just spiked him with that power bomb. Like, nah, yeah. get out of here. Uh, lovely. Top rope superplex is counted. And it was super cutter. That was sweet. Until eventually, uh, Dragonov Star takes up Williams by mistake. And that's enough for Hayes to hit the nothing but net to retain 24 minutes. Yes. Yeah, this wow. picked up considerably. Incredible. And now Ilya's done it a few times. His like, like prone opponent leaping forearm yep. thing is now over. It's a move that people really want to avoid, which is cool. Mm. They're like, oh no, I can't get hit with that. It's great. Yeah, still madly uh, surprised that Ilya lost, but hey ho. Ooh, no, because he's going up. He's going up, isn't he? He's going up. He's going up. He is. He wants the world to know. That's why he did an interview with Tom in that. That's right. it. <laughs> but then, but then, surely I, I have heard since that there's plans to keep him there. Really. Yes. Oh, He's staying in there. <laughs> he wants the world to know. He won't go. Well, of course. He got, got a re- got a, I'm going back to my roots. And he comes back and says, <laughs> Monday Night Raw. Giving women pay per view matches is so 2019. <laughs> ah, yes. Yeah, we'll get through that. Get all them off the card. Mm-hmm. Make room for this bloody Slim Jim. Come on. Up the men. Uh, Up the slim jim. Up the men. It's about time we had men's pay per view matches. Do you know what? Where's my all men's pay per view? (laughs) (laughs) Up the men. Up the men. Logan Paul is a man. (laughs) Opens the show for all men and cuts a promo on a man, Ricochet. Good. Who comes down to the man's ring. No, he involves a woman in this, but carry on. (laughs) Nah, but she's outside the ring. (laughs) Logan admits that he and Ricochet think the same men thoughts because they both love to create viral moments in the ring. Mm. He offers him a fist bump, which Ricochet accepts. A bro fist. Bro. (laughs) Why did he? A bro fist, I'll have you know. Ricochet goes to leave, but Logan points out that if he beats him at the Summer Man, It'll be Ricochet's <laughs> fiance. At the summer, man. That's what it says here. In the Sorry, notes. I didn't mean to say this. I mean, I think I'm going to say it. you did say beats him at SummerSlam. No, oh, I know it was a joke. You funny. <laughs> no, it sounded like I believed you that I'd written the SummerSlam. I know SummerSlam. you did. I'm like, I was look at the to... notes. That's not what it says. I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was about to apologize for a time oh, that didn't man. exist. Wow. It'll be Ricochet's fiance announcing him as the winner of the man match. Ricochet attacks and they brawl, but Logan Count is a springboard with a big right hand. He stands mantle. Hey, that'll be your girl dog announcing me as the a winner. A girl dog? That's a bitch. No, no, no. no. <laughs> that'll be, I was doing the slim, that's my girl dog, the Dr. Dre and Eminem. Oh. Oh, God sent me to the world. No. Um, yeah. That explains a lot about you because you always talk like you've got a guilty conscience. Ah, uh, what a tune. Um, I'm trying to think of another, it would, uh, without me. So, um, quick, say Sonic. No. Oh, go on. Um, so I reckon. Prick. Carry on. Am so, I a prick or a fanny, man? This is. You can be whatever you want, pal. <laughs> What's happened there? Um, so I reckon. That, um, so I reckon that this has made me less certain of who's going to win. Because at first I was like, Logan Paul is winning this match. Yeah. But now it's kind of set up for like Samantha to like hit him with the mic or something into Ooh. a roll up isn't it I thought that that would be horrible for Ricochet come out here and be like you say you do this you've taken the cheap way out for every victory well <laughs> at SummerSlam my lass is going to deck you and I'm going to get the <laughs> roll up that'd be horrible for him but again I hate Logan Paul as a person and as a concept uh, the concept being I'm old and I don't play Fortnite and also don't like getting scammed uh, mm. but he overshadows Ricochet in every segment they're in 
it has, it has to be said. It's blessed Ricochet, good at the flips and the viral moments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but yeah, Logan Paul on the bike so I- with his little kids ready to eat him. <laughs> like the scarabs in the mummy. Is Logan Paul's fans are like the happy tree friends. Do you remember them? Scurry around eating people, eating each other. Oh, I know them well because it used to be with YouTube, they'd send you to copyright school if you got a um you violated their terms yeah. of service. So you had to do a video, a really condescending what? video. Oh yeah, you never do this. No. Uh, a really condescending video about like Happy Tree Friends explain the ideas of video ownership no. and copyright. It's like stuff like some of these statements are true. Tick them. It's like, I'm allowed to use this video even if I don't ask someone. Yes. It's, no, it is not true. It's like a moose of half a, half a head. And is it right in saying that if you're disputing a copyright, if you watch it, therefore they take that as, oh, you accept that you've broken copyright rules. Oh, wow. Yeah. You weren't allowed to get your videos and you, you, you channel back up if oh you didn't God. do it. Yeah. And it was the Happy Tree Friends. And I'm like, <laughs> this is what they're most known for, I guess, for people. I the mean, happy people like me friend, who used to see them the all the time. The Happy Tree Friends sold out to the man. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but, they didn't sell out, they bought in. Mm. But it's been a while since I've had that happen because uh, I'm on good terms with AEW. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see after all in, like, when they've kicked me head in and Taz oh, has thrown God. me out the window. But, um, yeah, so you'd see the Happy Tree Friends, like, <laughs> you broke copyright, love. You broke copyright. <laughs> like, oh, here we go. Happy Tree Friend moment. Um, Sorry, that went off a tangent if, then. If I hang out with you in London, am I going to meet all the wrestlers and Taz and that? It'd be so great if they're like, so who's this? And I'll be like, oh. <laughs> oh it's me. And I'm there like, what do I do? What's going to get him in? <laughs> oh, it's, it's my bit on the side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also going to have like... Because they'll have to Ak- let me in. I'm also going to have Jack Atkins and Luke and Pierce with oh, us. There's no team of us. These are all my bits on the side. Right, can, I <laughs> in, can I bring a friend? <laughs> <laughs> Just all go in a big trench coat. It'd be yeah. <laughs> we'll be Jay Adelman. He's the Australian wrestler, James Adelman. Jay Adelman. <laughs> oh, such a good game. Mm, was. But yeah. Uh, yeah, Logan Paul, you suck, but you are good at the wrestling. Um, lots of people are getting used to the idea <laughs> of how to separate to the... adult, the, uh, adult, after party, please. <laughs> Uh, I was going to do a thing about Lizzo there. I'm going to separate that from the <gasps> artist there, but it's like, whatever, let's move on. Oh Everyone's terrible. Backstage, Gunther, who is not terrible, isn't happy with Imperium, but said Ludwig Kaiser can redeem himself by taking care of Matt Riddle tonight. The match is next, and Kaiser wins clean. I know. Oh, all right. I couldn't believe it. It was so funny because I was writing down, oh, man, the crowd don't care about Riddle. It's supposed to be this baby face, but the crowd only cares about him if he's like, hey, Randy, weed. Oh, he's got annoying Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn backstage. Here he was, came out, no pop, apart from my like, oh, it's Riddle. But then he started doing cool moves. What did he do? He did a loving move. Oh, first of all, he's seen a punch Kaiser for real. <laughs> so okay. guys had to be like, oh, oh, oh. Um, Then they got to start popping for Riddle's big moves, the moonsault, etc. But then Kaiser wouldn't clean. I'm like, yeah. oh. Clean at oh. first, because I, I, I read a recap before I watched this of the match, and it was like, the, the recap said, Gunter directs traffic, and then Kaiser wins. And I was like, by directed traffic, I was expecting... <laughs> bus, bus, pin him, yeah. pin him. <laughs> by, like the... by directing traffic, I was like expecting him to like distract the ref or something. But instead, yeah, he yeah. just all he did was just... Mac, yeah, go. Mac Schnell. He just went, beat him now. Yeah, yeah. And he did. <laughs> so, <all right. laughs> it, was, it was really... Wow, I can't believe they cheated at ringside. <laughs> it was really clean. It was clean as it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Damn it, if Gunther hadn't told him to win, he wouldn't have won. <laughs> yeah. Wow, okay. Uh, it's Meltzer great manage- it's speculated. Great, it's great managerial tactics. Just tell him to win. Yeah. And he did. Oh, uh, I should pin him. And Riddle then tweeted, it's, oh God. He said something like, it's harder to win. It was harder to win a, it's harder to win a match in WWE than it was in the UFC. Harder to win a real fight in UFC harder than a match in WWE. Easier to win a real fight in WWE. Did he say a real fight? Real fight. He said real fight. Did he say real yeah. fight? Oh, wow. Oh. He's not happy. He's not happy, man. Uh, Mr. Meltz, so I thought I'd say this for a relevant bit, did say, like, uh, I would, so I'd say, like, how Meltzer says it, uh, I wonder what happened, you know, Kaiser's not the guy you would have thought. <laughs> so I don't know if you know, I mean, obviously, you know, they've already, div- uh, God bless, is it, it's Aiden, right? Yeah, of course it's Aiden. You can't, he does it verbatim okay. how Meltzer talks. They've already decided long, long ago that Riddle, for whatever reason, and there you know, look, there are good reasons. Riddle seems to get into trouble too often, so he's not the guy that they're going to build around or anything like that, but they're going to still keep him, you know, stronger than losing clean in the middle to Kaiser, but he did here. So, you know, as soon as I saw that, it's like, man, he's lower than I thought he was in their minds. 
You just kept talking and one long, incredibly long, unbroken what sentence. What was the moving point of the topic quote? To topic. Meltzer says, yes, he's lost. Uh, he seems to have lost the favor or the push that he once had right. because of, well, gets into trouble, which yeah. is Meltzer's, you know, is close to going, oh, well, you know, yeah. it's possible. So is this the end of his push or is this going to be we'll another, see. another downturn in the in the we'll really see because it has been a few of... times whenever like something like this has come out by Meltzer that they'll be going oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> screw you <laughs> he's, the push he's the yeah. new <laughs> uh, the, uh, it was a very it was a big surprise mm. the Viking Raiders try to interfere in Maxine Dupree's match with Valhalla but Otis and Gable take them out Maxine wins of all things electric chair drop. Oh. That's not true. Oh, no. Ocean cyclone, cyclone. What's the difference? Not the one guy who watches Yoshi wrestling. Uh, what's the difference? The crossed arms. What's yeah. Uh, well, electric chair drops. You put them on there and then go back. Yeah. Right. This is, yeah. 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 You, you just grab her arms. Yeah. It's like a uh, cross jacket. Yeah. Damn. Very uh, similar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she'd be able with that anyway. She certainly did. I was not expecting Whoa. that high-end bloody Yoshi, oh my God, five-star match next from Dave Wank and Welter. Next to week get she'll this. do a Emerald Flosion or something. I hope so. Yes. She's great. Really enjoying her work at the moment. Yeah. Oh, she's silly, isn't she? She's, she's silly. silly. She's silly. Oh, well, she's so silly. <laughs> oh, she's so silly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Miss O. <laughs> her, um, her setup uh, for the worm is bizarre. That's like... What's that? Corey Graves is like, yeah, the worm's got a <laughs> yeah. thing in the middle. Oh, I thought we said. A hinge. <laughs> a hinge, that was it. Yes, thank you. The actual, yeah, her actual worm's a little bit rigid, yeah. but her setup for it's like a yeah. weird, like, I don't get well, it. All Japan grades go on, I love it. A worm is the, <laughs> the, the ocean cyclone. The worm and the ocean cyclone oh. suplex. It's the, <laughs> how it, it should be. <laughs> it's a great movie set. Mitsuhara yeah. Dupree. She's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Look, like, ah. Upon. Later, as Alpha Academy celebrate backstage, Imperium arrive and said they've made a mockery of the sport. <laughs> no, she won with a bloody ocean side blow. Yeah, yeah this should be like, all right, that was <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Bloody join Imperium. Yeah, Gunther doesn't think Gable could last five minutes against him. So they did agreed somebody with Max. say? Well, five minutes. Yeah, they did. Is it what? Two and a half minute warning coming? Yes, out? it is. Yes, that's right. <laughs> two, two, and and half, minutes two and a half minutes. Two and a half, two and half missions of versions of three minute warning. <laughs> two and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that Champa and Nakamura are both in the Slim Jim Battle Royal. They also have a match tonight, which Champa says that he's going to win. Nakamura goes, "No, bloody wrestlers there." That's that we're getting story. the redone of every I'll segment win. here. Like, no, I'll I'll win. Good. Yeah. What's the prize? Slim Jim. Slim. Just Slim Jim. They haven't announced it. And I was <laughs> this is something you can buy for like a dollar. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to win that uh, battle royal for that <laughs> for that blood bogey from America. <laughs> Oh, ugh. it's just pepper we, army. It's a flat we, pepper army. As we record this, yeah, there's no prize at the minute for the battle royale. Like no title shot. Like no, there should be something announced. Was it was it Survivor Series 2021 where they had the Pizza Hut battle yes. royal? Oh, and then the Street Profits were like, "Look at them, we got the it pizza." Was, uh, <laughs> and WWE's like, "Look how much money we've made from these really subtle adverts in this match." And we're like, <laughs> <laughs> and then it got uh -huh. less subtle when the Miz got eaten by zombies. <laughs> that one was excellent. There was a KFC one where they had four fans, That's suspiciously right. jacked fans at ringside. Well, going, I mean, all that bloody KFC. I'll do it. Well, yeah, but they didn't touch any of the sides, yeah. just the meat. They were like, mm. ah, but it didn't touch any of the sides. Um, the oh, and bloody hell in a cell this year. Hell in a cell. Edge versus Finn oh, Balor. Yeah. Uh, it's me, Russell Crowe. <laughs> What's my film? The Exorcist of some get. Whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah. Boo! Yeah. What the hell are we watching? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the new Poirot film? Is that sponsoring Hell in a Cell next? Right, that's what I mean, because the, the trailer, it reminded me of that. The trailer was born before Oppenheimer. And, uh, oh, all right, what is it? Well, it's not really what you'd expect from a detective Poirot. It's all like in a haunted house with Michelle Yeoh playing a possessed woman. And it's like Poirot's there like, I wonder who has done the... Uh, the uh, <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> but it's all like way like dark and like it's all spooky. Strange. I don't know what to expect. Oh, is it the law? Yeah. <laughs> is it, is Wait, it a guest in this house? It's not the haunted mansion, is it? Like, is that related? That's on the cinemas right now. And Poirot it in the nowhere. haunted mansion. I'll find the Apparently name it's already it. bombed because it's like I didn't know it existed until like, oh, this week. film. No, the TV's... There's some ghosts so in this house. So There's some ghosts in this house. last year was Death on the Nile, they did. Yeah. This is the sequel. Uh -huh, I can't find it. Come on. No. They could... They could. Ah, a haunting in Venice. Ah. Which is probably a lesser known Poirot. I mean, I've never heard of it. Me neither. Ah. Hmm. I can't think of many Poirot's I know. 
Poirot. Probably just Hercule. He's the only one. Yeah, as you say, uh, the way I see, yeah, <laughs> we'll move on, Matthew. Let's do the law. The Judgment Day run down a list of all the people they've taken out in recent weeks. Bala cuts a promo on Rawlins ahead of their title match at SummerSlam. Before the group are interrupted by Raquel Rodriguez. She and Rhea brawl around the ring, but Dom provides a distraction which allows Rhea to injure Raquel's knee with like a flick. Later, Adam Pierce tells Raquel it was she a isn't block. cleared to compete, but promises that she'll get her match of Rhea once she's recovered. And for once, because we always see these bloody segments, ah, uh, my right knee, ah, uh, <laughs> hey, the doctors have said you're not cleared. No, I must go out for <laughs> glory. Uh, this time she went, all right. Yeah. Well, it's it actually a surprise. Like, oh, she must be properly packed. Yeah, look after herself. She did the reverse Cody Rhodes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The roadie code. Hmm. And I thought the ad segment was all right. It's, well, apart from the fact that, as, as people point out, uh, is it just bad timing that Rhea doesn't have a a match for this pay-per-view? I'm calling it pay-per-view, you know what I mean? Because wasn't she, she supposed to feud with Liv and then she got injured? And now is she, Raquel, actually injured? Maybe. Yeah, I took that as meaning that because she didn't get it could, because she didn't immediately get up and go. No, I must have this match. Mm, that maybe. she was actually Rhea versus Raquel was a match that was reported to be part of SummerSlam yeah. at the start of last month. Yeah, uh, along with Trish Stratus versus mm. Becky Lynch. Yeah, those and are the two that have been. I think injury has uh, put the stoppers yeah. on that. So Rhea, mm. thing you can see. Okay, I can get why they're not doing <laughs> that. If like, okay, well, who else am I supposed to wrestle? There's yeah. no one I've been built up to, mm. and I'm all right with SummerSlam match. Pay per not going on for nine hours. But then it's like, okay, but well, we're not getting Bailey. Oh, Bailey's injured, so she can't do the Shotzi feud just yet. And then isn't Io going to do the Shotzi match instead? But she's not really feuding with Bailey. <laughs> so then Charlotte's not. And anyway, you know, we'll get into the rundown towards the end of the thing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I can see why people are like, wait, where's where's these big women's matches? Mm, mm. There's a lack of them. It's been a witch in the video package. Shayna Baszler talks about Ronda being the biggest star in MMA, but always needing Shayna's help in the wrestling world. Despite that, Shayna feels as though Ronda never gave anything back to her. She later mentions being the godmother <laughs> to Ronda's daughter, but says that she'll hate her for what she does to Mama Ronda. Mm. The fight will be under MMA rules. And that was the first bit, wasn't it? Wasn't it the second half? Thanks, it did in two bits. Well, I've, I've combined the two there. Yeah, have I mean, one, I think. Yeah, but I forget, didn't... Was it Ronda who told the story? He goes... It was like a, uh, some servants who saved a pharaoh. Yeah. And then the pharaoh rewarded them. But then they were like, yeah, but now they expected the glory that they were getting. She spins so a they, yarn. She tells these video packages did so much more than any of the segments that these two have had on Raw. Just yeah. talk and I'm trying to explain it. Because we've been watching it going, who's the bloody face or heel in this? Mm. And it's clarified. No, it's Shayna for being ungrateful. Or for like thinking that she's better than Ronda. Um so I was like, oh, okay, that you know what this video pack these these two segments were really well done and uh thank god they happened. Yes. Shayna is the heel, but I think the crowd are gonna prefer her. Yeah, Ronda's the divisive figure. Yeah. So Whereas well, Shayna's like a wrestler, like she's put her time in for years and years and everyone respect her. Right, the story even in the, the same the story, right. they're not trying to sugarcoat it. No. Yeah, yeah. Shayna's more established as a wrestler, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Ronda Rousey's Ronda Bloody Rousey. Yeah. So some people are inclined to cheer people like that. Mm. But then cheer sorry, we're gonna cheer Shayna for being a wrestler, but then also gonna cheer Logan Paul, because whatever, we're all finicky. Yeah. But we're, so I'm glad they, that they clarified a, and sorted this out because in a hard working blue collar city like Detroit, Michigan. Mm, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, <laughs> Spoke up for Detroit there, yeah. Yeah, well, I love the city. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nakamura beats Champa. Oh. Needs a handful of tights to do so. And this was funny because Nakamura is clearly hinting to be more Healy. However, no one really saw that he grabbed Champa's tights to roll him up. It wasn't obvious. So he rolled to the outside and he was just like by the ring going, hey, 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 gloating. And behind him was kids and was going, yay, good one. <laughs> yeah, you won that. That was, that was a nice decisive victory, yeah. He's just a really good heel. <laughs> didn't even yeah because no some guy at ringside in a big Austrian voice yelled pin him <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so yeah Nakamura doing something Pretty right more interesting um, right. I mean I don't think when, when it's when it's a build up to a multi-man match I often find myself looking at who's in a feud thinking well they're not going to win because they'll take yeah. each other out yeah, yeah, yeah. so I don't know if either of these are going to win the Slim Jim Battle Royal <laughs> I think it doesn't matter who else is in that match because of one person being in the match that's what think, it's all going to be about. Do you think he's going to win it, LA Knight? I think the crowd is going to cheer. I think it has to be. make noise. Like, yeah. And it's, yeah. Well, there was an interesting pitch on our recent pitches video where um, 
Oh, we'll just watch it. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. spoil it. Like why aren't you bloody watching? It was one of Adam's, I think. It was Adam's Battle Royal pitch. Brilliant. Alan Pacini? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sweet, he works here. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll definitely watch it then. He was, um, he was, he was in the video and just... Out, outclassed me in the video. <laughs> one he of the, spins a yarn. One of the, one of the, one of the, the well, Andrew was the MVP of the video in terms of his actual pitches, but in terms of the banter, uh, Adam had my life in that video. Like one of the comments says, like, "There's a real big brother, kid brother energy between yeah. Adam and Jack," and I was like, "Well, I wonder which one, <laughs> which one's the older one there?" Then it was a shame. I, I, I was humbled. <laughs> 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 Brock Lesnar arrives and cuts a promo on Cody Rhodes, saying he'll kick his ass on Saturday. He says that if Cody wants to come out and shake hands, he can. Cody arrives and he shakes hands, but Cody hits Brock with a dive after he leaves the ring. It doesn't matter, though, because Lesnar then absolutely batters him again. <laughs> Stop getting beaten up by Brock Lesnar yeah. every week. We're not getting a bull rope match, are we? Oh! No. Has it not been? No. I'm all right, because if they do a bull rope, the idea of the, the bloody ca uh, cowbell thing is that it's really sharp and you bleed everywhere. That's not what the re does now. Brock does, because you yeah, can get away with it if it's hard way. Yeah, he doesn't need a cowbell to bleed everywhere. Sure. So it's like, what are we going to do instead? Oh, no, this cowbell, which is having no effect like it used to. It's, do, you not, yeah. do you not think they would? Do you think it, so they would have, they they would have shouted them by now. So no stipulation's been announced yet? No. So you don't think even Cody will come out with the bull rope and that's the reveal? Nah, no. not at this point. I'm all right with it. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's got to be a stipulation, isn't there? Not really. I mean, the last oh. two haven't had a stip. Yeah, that's so true. I have that's a three-match series without a stip. It's like Omega Ricardo. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But he's long. Uh, no, no, no. I, uh, Imagine. They got an hour and a half. Let's go. Brock's got it in him. Yeah. The video package they did as well. Again, we say oh, this every this year. this is a great video I was going to say, every yeah. year, the people who put together the video packages, they need to have their, like, mm. honorary bloody... Oh, warrior, my gosh, yeah. Warrior, uh, I'm dead and in hell award. Uh, needs to go to the video package people every year because, <laughs> God, they're doing great stuff here. Yes, they do need that award. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gunther and Gable's match, oh, my God, goes the five-minute oh time God. limit. Nice. And Gunther is furious. He's a big, angry man. And demands more time, and he eventually wins. He gets on the mic and says he isn't losing to Drew at SummerSlam. Now, you could say this is a bit of a weird build-up. Where was Drew this bloody episode of Raw? Was he congratulating his mate for being an Oppenheimer? Uh, but I didn't give a damn. God, it was good. He was uh, filming. I he think, was filming, he? yeah. He was filming. He was filming Oppenheimer. Tell no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was he filming again? Uh, I have no idea. God it's damn. A, it's def it's um, no, I have no idea. No, same. I can't remember. Damn. But that's why he wasn't I'm trying there. to think of a funny name. <laughs> Put Drew Funny the movie. I liked how this uh, got Gable over mm. without having Gable beat Gunter. I think it easily puts Gable in line to be somebody that could beat Gunter. Did you see his right. promo on Raw Talk? Or like one of those no. digital exclusive post show promos? No one does. He went, We're not done. Nice. I'm not done with you, Gunter. He said, Five minutes, I'll go in the ring with five hours with you or something like that. He was like, I'll batter you. It was great promo. Yeah. Amazing. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah, let's let's loop back yeah. to that. And again, Gable mentioned to do oh, the... Oh, Drew's in a new film called The Killer's oh, Game. Oh, that's right. I remember that being on stage ages ago. Yeah. So they were able to do the Lucha sequence. I know Tajiri and Super Crazy used to do like every match and loads of Lucha doors do it, but I don't know the name for it. You know when they both grab hands and then one person goes... Oh, oh yes. Gable did that with Gunther. Mm -hmm. He's strong. I know, like Gay, uh, Gunther's lost a lot of weight, but still. Yeah. And he's just like, oh, okay, and then gives a German suplex to the big Gunt, and managed to beat the clock. I mean, bloody hell. The big Gunt. That's what they call him backstage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you get to call bloody Wolfgang Barry, or his bloody name is. I can call him the big Gunt. <laughs> you certainly can. Me and Gunther were like this. That's what he does to me when he sees me. Uh, <laughs> Becky Lynch calls out Trish Stratus, saying she wants to have their match right now. Trish arrives with Zoe Stark and says, she decides where they have the match. And Adam Pearce credit comes out and goes, <laughs> no, that <laughs> match <laughs> last week decided that you do this. And she won. So this match happens now. And then Trish, Trish tries to argue and goes, but my face, my face. He goes, no, it's happening now or you're out. And he goes, all right. Match goes ahead, but Zoe attacks uh, for a very quick DQ. And she attacks, some people got confused on this because on the, my, the Facebook page going, oh, did you see Zoe? She attacked, she forgot where she was and attacked Trish before attacking Becky. I'm like, no, she did that, so the match went to Trish. Mm. Oh, yes, so. yes. Um, this was... But people did not... People were not happy about this happening. Oh, I thought it was funny as hell. Mm. Like, seconds in the match, you're going, nah, yeah, all right. But people aren't happy that it, what it, for what it means, which is that the, the match is not on SummerSlam. Uh, yeah, 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 I was going to say, Pierce books up rematch for two weeks' time in Canada with Zoe banned from ringside. Oh, okay. 
That that was a bit weird, yes. uh, to say the least, because you think, all right, you know, they're going to In Canada, she'll be the face as well. Yeah. Trish Stratus. Don't know why that was. Something very odd about that. Becky shared photos that she took, promo photos for SummerSlam, which would indicate that yeah. the plan was for her to be on the card. Mm. And now, Venice, sh- they've done this for a while when there's been not every match they built up to for the SummerSlam pay per view has like, happened on the SummerSlam. It'll happen on the SmackDown before. Yeah, or it's like a so hangover like period. But of- yeah. Funny that it's a lack of women on the show. Just saying, we'll get that later on. SRS has said that they hear the call them. Yes, SRS. <laughs> Sean Rossap has said that yeah, he's heard that, and he wanted to. He said he wanted to. He didn't want to say too much before he gets like all the details or something. But he said that it's not. It's for no good reason that it's been like they're both fit and healthy. Like they can both go. There's there's no real good reason that it's been kicked off the card. But he didn't elaborate any further. A sensible journalist. Oh, <laughs> damn it. Get him, Jack. Get him. <laughs> Despite an appearance from Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, and Sami Zayn. Uh, what? Oh, oh, okay. There we go. Yeah. Not all I them go. together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sorry. Hang on. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> um, Seth and Sami team up to beat Damian Priest and Dominic Mysterio in the main event. Just a very fun, quick 10 minute match. Aye. Got some stuff out of the way. Didn't need to go unnecessarily long. Saw some people compare this like an Attitude Era style main event where it's, it's like a bank job. Get in, do your stuff, leave. Say it was the big boss, man. <laughs> yes, it was like that. It was just a the good guys won. It was a rare, a rare loss for the Judgment Day in mm. a way. Seth but standing they tall, everything. So. Seth is standing tall. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh, and uh, he's losing that bloody belt. And mm. speaking of bloody belt, Damien Priest, the last shot, last two seconds of the show with Damien Priest. Look, look, look. Oh God, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some no idea what it was. <laughs> no, so trying to cash in. It reminds couldn't. you sometimes that it's just like a stray. Knuckle or something, yeah. or just yeah, dangerous wrestling. Certainly is. Yeah, I think Tom's right. It's something suspicious about the fact that mm. he's the last one. That's normally that's an old mm. school indicator, isn't it? That I know something's going down. But often I'm correct. Oh well, we can end this segment. Yeah, we'll we'll be back with NXT <laughs> Literally. next. Literally can't we? Ah, sorry about that. It was flight or fight? Uh, NXT jacket time will never die. He was there. He's back. Back again. Nicky Manjaro. That's right. Goody. The show begins with Tony D and Stax being attacked by Gallus in the car park. Oh, no. This isn't Not over. the NXT car park. <laughs> oh, yeah. Surely not. One of several confrontations, let's say, that happened in the car park this episode. There's another one later on. Disgusting. I know. It does remind me of home, though, all these uh, all occasions happening in car parks. <laughs> uh, JC Jane attacks Lyra, whatever her name is, during her entrance. <laughs> uh, it's not enough to stop that mystical forest sprite from getting the win. Hey. It's a bit sad, isn't it? Bloody dead. And and Rhea had told her to as well. Remember, she went beat JC, and she jazz. We're in a quicker. That's it. That's in, all you need is someone uh, a build the confidence, a shout. A, you need yes. someone to build your confidence. Um, Giant hot person yelling at you. Now, this was a shorter match than I thought. I thought it was going to be like a mini boss for Lyra, but mm. instead it was just a minion or whatever. Yeah, I thought it was a, a mini. Yeah, mini boss. Well, yeah. The thing I was about to say, I just realized you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, well done, Jack. Thank you. Backstage, Tricky Willie tells Carmelo Hayes <gasps> that it's time for him to step out from Carmelo's shadow and be his own man. Carmelo says he doesn't see Trick as a sidekick, but Trick says the fans do. Trick wants to take care of Ilya on his own, and Hayes says he'll always have his back. Oh my God, you guys, a happy <laughs> face. Shades of the great Ryback Baxel. <laughs> That's it's not what I thought. Great was connection. connection. Yeah, that is so. You know what? Let's okay. go our separate ways. Are you a fan of Ryback Baxel? Absolutely. Should okay. Have both, both beaten CM Punk. Same <laughs> well, well, they'll both be world Axel champions. did beat Triple H. He did. Yes. He beat him so bad, Triple H kind of fell over a bit. <laughs> <laughs> a bit weird, that one. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's a nice separating. They're not They're not being enemies. They're saying, look, it's, you know, I've got your back, but right now I need to step out your shadow. Mm. It's time to go. Oh, sad. Everyone's coexisting this week. It's great. Yes, everyone what is coexisting. a positive week. Yeah. Um, I think that Apart from us. this will be interesting because Trick... Obviously, being the sidekick that we saw him as, he said he's not I know, the but it did mean he, he got less of a spotlight. But I thought whenever he had a chance to have a match or do something, he always did something a bit unique. Like mm. he did the thing with the he used rubbing alcohol to like blind That's someone right, once. Yeah. I was like, oh my god! Um, Very he's old always, school. I think if it wasn't for him always being next to Hayes, who's amazing, maybe we'll, maybe we're going to see something something good from Trick Williams. Oh, you think he's going to like be Baron Corbin's sidekick now? Burn the Actually, make me look good, pal. <laughs> Trick, get the matches. Yeah. Shit, still there. <laughs> Tony D and Stax are interviewed in the physio's room. They want to take on all three members of Gallus tonight, and Tony says he's called in an old friend to be their third man. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for it to be Marlon Brando. <laughs> it just wasn't him. 
He always turns up at his daughter's wedding. Can you be the third man in our six months? And he can't refuse. That's right, yeah. yeah. Oh, to copy the PS2 game, You're The Godfather. On, on the day of my daughter's wedding. Hey, is he... It's where they did like his last bit of dialogue, isn't it? What? For Godfather Part 2, the game. Oh, right. Part two, the <laughs> right game. Okay. Yeah. Have we talked about this in the podcast? I think we have like... The... I think we might have talked about it on the SmackDown. Really. Yeah. Um, there's a... <laughs> they got Marlon Brando to do audio for Godfather. The, the game. The game, The Godfather. Right. And I'm like, wow. End up being some of the last audio we ever recorded. Oh, right. Um, okay, right. Yeah. But he's got, he was on a bloody um, oh. thingy machine. Ventilator. Res- ventilator. Re- yeah, ventilator. Respirator. Respirator. Yeah, yeah. Respirator. So he didn't bother, like, because it's Marlon Brando talking about, didn't bother to take it off or anything. So all the do- stuff he did was unusable for what they wanted. Because oh. it's like, yeah, 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 whatever. And yeah. so instead, they've got him unseen. It's like a hotel, uh, hotel bloody, a hospital door. You can wait outside and you can hear him, like, in the. Because oh. like, oh, he's on a mm. ventilator. Okay. Give a storyline reason for why it sounds like that. Because it's why it sounds so rubbish. Yeah. But it's definitely Marlon Brando. Okay. And the thing is, with, with Marlon, he probably could have taken it off. Just couldn't be bothered. He, just, he, was, he was a weird person like that. Yeah. Anyway. Fascinating. Oh yeah. Turns up in the jungle for Apocalypse Now. <laughs> Try, changes hasn't, everything. Hasn't read any of no, the stuff yeah, that he was yeah. told. He doesn't remember anything. Is like way bigger than he used to be. Yeah. He's just a dick. Let's shoot him in the shadows. And he still killed it. He's yep. still, you know, still Marlon Brando. Yep. Yeah. Rhea and Dom make their entrances, but are interrupted by Dragon Lee, who wants a shot at the North American title, unless Dom is too chicken, oh. look fly. Oh. Dom agrees to the match and says that Rhea will be in his corner. And Rey Mysterio appears on the Tron and says he'll be in Dragon Lee's corner. And he can't wait to see Lee win the title for him. I can't wait for you to beat my son <laughs> in my honor. Yeah. Uh, Backstage, wait, is there a bit there? Oh, I, I enjoyed the crowd chatting, let's go daddy, when Ray showed up. Yes, yes. That yes. was nice. Yes. I like it. I like Dragon Lee in the corner of Ray. Um, yeah, it was well. It's at least... Um, Ray in the corner of Dragon Lee. That's yeah, Ray in the corner of Dragon Lee. That's the one. It's kind of the AW style, let's tether a current star to a legend, and one who's a bit similar, like a Darby yeah. and Sting, maybe. Yeah, or the one we got on Dynamite this week. What? Jungle Boy and... Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Odd one, but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Backstage, Wesley is ranting and raving about. Oh, he's fuming. He's not happy, is he? About the Great American Bash. Come on, I was like, we well, shouldn't have lost then, mate. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Noam Dar and Aramensha arrive with the fake heritage. What? What? Fake heritage cup? Rapid. To the real? No, <laughs> it's not. It's not. Honestly, real. which which journal <laughs> was this? SRS. No, Nathan Fraser is the real heritage cup holder. The, it, Honestly, mate, this is why I we're you're taking con- uh, words out of context. I see. I, I, see. I apologize, so Mustafa so Ali. You did nothing that. wrong. <laughs> Dar says he's still the rightful holder because Nathan Fraser never beat him, whereas Wes has lost twice to Dom now. They all have a scuffle, sing up a tag match for later. Yes, they do. Uh, Dar well, is really, I'm enjoying every Dar segment he's recently. He's so good. He's so good. Because he's like, when he goes, like, Hang on, are you really still carrying that around? He's like, Yes, I am the, Her- I'm the Heritage Cup champion. Like, right, and then whenever enough. someone goes, but that's not, they go, no, 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 don't listen to him. Yeah, it's great. It's crew. Mm. Thea Hale is angry that <gasps> Andre Chase threw in the towel to end her title match. Oh, my God. Baron Corbin arrives and says, being a wrestler isn't for everyone. So maybe Hale should pack her bags. A few years, Andre challenges him to a match, but Thea still isn't happy. Yeah, she didn't care that he stood up for her. Yeah. Mm. Right my heart, this did. I know, she's so sad. Yeah. Because she's normally so exuberant. I know. And it mm. jumps out when she's not. And I love her. She's so great. Mm-hmm. And then Eddie Thorpe uh, loses to die, Jack. It says, yif, yif here. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> uh, this was a brief but very hard-hitting match, I thought. Yeah. But yeah, there's some, uh, what do we got? It's a choke slam, a torture rack, a German suplex, then another German. Well, these all done from die, Jack to Eddie Thorpe. Oh, yeah. right, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Sorry, this is, this is great if you're a die, Jack. Yeah. It sucked if you're a furry. Uh, he's not <laughs> Dana Brooke and got, but we have to hit that, that I know yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's why the numbers are, are going up but that's a demo should we do it like an Elsa well according to the, the, the demos we're, we're down in <laughs> males 18 to 40 but the furries are loving us <laughs> Thea Hale is angry that Andre chased through Natal to end her title match yes she is I've already read that bit Dana Brooke and Kalani Jordan are wa- uh, watching back Dana's win over Cora Jade Dana said having the kendo stick in her hand made her feel like a badass. Now Kalani needs to feed or find her own killer instinct. Yeah, so Dana's won one match and she goes, 
now you need to do that, Kalani Jordan. I'm like, all right, Dana, getting big for your boots there, aren't you? She won one time. <laughs> yeah, that's a first win in years. Yeah, true. It hit Cora really hard, as we'll find out later I mean, on. Dana Brooke went on NXT. It's like, like the Wright brothers landing on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be walking, ah, ha, ha, hey, come on, cheer up, pal. <laughs> Is Electro- that that film where it lands in the moon's eye? You know, that first ever film? That's not the right film. <laughs> oh, well, right, okay, right. <laughs> yeah. 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 I never think you Oh, need. no, whoops, sorry, moon. <laughs> I need to watch that. I've never Wait, seen it before. for the Smashing Pumpkins video. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yes. Mm. Yes. Right, cool. Yes. Is it called, right, brothers. It's called Wallace and Gromit, a grand day out. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. You know, I couldn't remember the name of it. I'm going, bollocks. Trip to the moon. Mm. It's just a trip to the moon, I think. It's just called a trip to the moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm a, sorry, I forget who uh, directed it. Neil Armstrong. He did. That Russian dog. The Red Hot Chili Peppers mentioned it. <laughs> Space may be the final frontier, but it's made it. Yeah. Uh, Electro Lopez and Lola Vice beat Valentina Flores. Oh, God, yeah, these are a team, aren't they? Leon. They certainly are. Yeah, and they won con- like, convincingly. Yes, they did. In three minutes, 31. Yeah. They didn't get much time, but they did some nice little uh, teams. Booker T liked it. Uh, <laughs> that's all you really need. Yeah. Good, good, not, sa- good first step. Booker's not lecherous. No, no, no. He just, oh, right. He just makes noises. <laughs> yeah, but, <it's, laughs> wow. but not in a not in a Barrett way. Booker's what a, a nice, charming side wrinkle of Booker's character is that he's always very loyal to his queen Charmel. Of course. Yeah. Oh no, I didn't. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's not going to be doing a, a bloody Wade. No, oh. no, 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 no. He's he's. He prefers violence. He has the same reaction, to, uh, regardless of who the person is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, What's man. happening in this match? What's the backstory, Booker? <laughs> Have you been paying attention to any of the notes I sent you? Man. No, I'm like, I'm like Marlon Brando in the jungle. <laughs> Don't know what's happening. Unless it's Roxanne Perez, then he cares. Then Roxanne Perez. Because he trained her. <laughs> if you got the notes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Tiffany Stratton gets a TikTok vignette. Yes. Does it count as a vignette? I don't it's know. I don't know if she, does. <laughs> she gets a, a TikTok. What do you call them? Like Twitter's got tweets, TikTok's got TikTok. I've TikTok. just called them TikToks, TikToks yeah. Well. It's like Luxembourg being the capital of Luxembourg. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's vignette. what all the kids say. Yeah. <laughs> well, she talks about her win over Thea. Uh, she says she'll be back next week, and because it's TikTok, it then immediately plays another video, and it's a uh, roll for sandwich. Which I'm still watching on TikTok. <laughs> that's how. That's my. I'm trying to say cool. Oh yeah, I know the TikTok. <laughs> Roll for sandwich yeah. is keeping you cool. That's it. And then people just go, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> Dara Mensa, do you have any favorite TikTokers? Uh, uh, <laughs> Jack just went. No. Fraser, Fraser Porter. Hey. The, the problem. Answer. The problem is, I was about to say right, but it's another cat that's died. Oh no! <laughs> Why do you follow up? <laughs> it's dead. It's <laughs> dead cat. I was about to say. TikTok. I was about to say Cooter, the cat that jumps on the guy's shoulder, goes hello Cooter, and the oh. cat meows back. And the cat and I, dies every time. And I was time. scrolling through, and I was going, "Oh, there's a new Cooter one." He's like, and the guy's going, "Hey everyone!" I was like, "Oh no!" Oh. I'm horrible, I'm horrible. Yeah, um, oh, no. this is another dead cat. Oh. <laughs> there are other TikTok people that I like. Um, Mate, you know, cats Emma like... Millen from BBC Radio Newcastle. Follow Emma Millen oh, on TikTok. She's okay. fun. I like her. She does lots of about F1. Ah. If you're into your, into your F1, mm. uh, follow her and say that Tom's sent you from his uh, other job. This season I've been struggling because it's like one bloke's will just won eight races in a row and it's just hard to... It's hard to care when one person's just... Smashing it. Yeah. Mm. Just do what I do and just watch... Is it Josh Revel? Revel, yeah, Revel, yeah. You told me about him, in fact. Oh, he's so great. The YouTuber. That's right. With his little... Cartoon, cartoon drawing. avatar. Yeah. And he's he down goes, like a, a cup of cold sick. And he goes, I can't do the accent, Hello, so. you absolute legend. Yeah. <laughs> That's the other one. Billy anyway. Mitchell is a cheating so and so. <laughs> do you know him? The bloke who's called No, I don't. Show. I yes. follow him on Twitter, but he's important. Oh, oh. I thought he'd be a friendly. I thought that's on a really pass. I'm sorry. I no, think I'm I just saying. assumed that you know YouTubers what? of a certain style, I'm like, they'll know math. There are a surprise amount of speedrunners that do follow me. Does. On... S- not summon insult? No. No, I'm not that big. I know if you got the big dog, then wow. No, no, do I'm like European title level. Have you done any speed running in your time? No, I live with somebody who did do it, and I watched them do it. What did he go, do? Oh, it, it was some 16-bit platformer. It looks like a joyless activity. <laughs> it really does. It's just that when it's edited again, like again. that, yeah. that's why I think I think it's why something salt and people are so popular. Watching videos about it, going, wow, that's fascinating. Skipping all the good. But thing, then you like you actually watch a Twitch stream of these people playing it for hours on end, doing the same bit over and over again, you're like. Oh, that's yeah. all the work that goes into it. It right. seems like they, there'll be certain bits of a run where if they mess it up, they know the run's over. So they're like, right, we just got to reset that straight away now. And it's like, what? Yeah. 
Yeah. Keep going, right. you might still do it. No, there's no mathematical yeah. chance that I'll do it now. I haven't got the time to play the games I want to play. <laughs> so the idea of like, oh, I'm going to speed run this game. I'd be like, I hate this game. But I do know um, one person, two people in IRL who have world records for speed running. Ooh. Mm. Pikmin what, what, 2. Pikmin. And, it's pronounced uh, Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll find it's ECW. <laughs> 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 and uh, it's pretty cold. Elevator Action Returns. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. It's a bit obscure. Anyway, so we've got the top. You were playing that Pizza Tower game the other day. Yes, I am. Is it good? Mate, it looks unreal. Yeah. It looks like, like really... Uh, I, I, it's it's oh, fun. It's, I it's, know it's just it because I saw, port, the, I saw the meme that was born from it. Wait, the, the screaming... I did that accidentally. Oh. You, start, you start the game, and if you don't press anything, it's just this chef looking at you. With no lights on, and my pad wasn't connecting, <laughs> so I saw it. Goes, is that the thing? Oh, let me get the sword out. So I didn't press anything for like a minute or so. I try to get the Bluetooth sword out, and then he, yeah, it goes. Rah! He jumps at yeah, and then the game <laughs> shuts itself off. Oh, this just sounds stressful. But I like it. Oh, oh and I like this game already. <laughs> um, unrelated to anything we're talking about, uh, Darren Mensah beat Hayes and Lee after a miscommunication between the good guys. Carmelo tries to what the metaphor. <laughs> Carmelo tries to calm Wes down after the match, but he is fooming. He's so angry. He's gonna he's gonna bloody be the next challenger for Carmelo Hayes. Yeah. He's fooming Manchu, honest. So mad. Because uh, he's got has he got it one? No, he doesn't. No, no. You just, it's, oh, it's, right, you just said fooming it. sounds like oh, that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. wasn't very good. <laughs> uh, yeah, just setting up a thing here. Metaphor looking good. Uh, Mensa completely blowing his springboard bit at the end, but oh. production saving it and just carrying on like. Yeah, he didn't panic though. In yeah, that's what you start, should he went, do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, whatever. Super kick. Yeah. Whatever, I'm winning anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Not much else to say there, apart from that. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm looking for Wes and Carmella. Yes, I'm looking forward to Wes. Oh, here we go. The other bit. Yeah, look at my notes. Uh, Booker T. Prop, the Green Hornet. Something from the 60s. Knife said he went the same commentary studio as Tom. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hornet. Exactly. I'm not even going to explain <laughs> that one. The Green Hornet. Is it like. Hell. Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet and that, is it not? It's before that. <laughs> there was things before that. <laughs> <laughs> there Captain was Stonehenge, Scar the Scarlet. dinosaurs and Green Hornet. I've seen a bit of Thunderbirds. I've never watched Captain Scarlet, but in the, there's a spoiler in the theme music. He's indestructible. Well, <laughs> he's going to win there. It's not much of it. Mm. Well, I never looked I, at it like why that. Why do I care mm. if he... No, because the ending is even really sexy. Is he sexy. actually indestructible? Like, well, yeah. Oh, there's one episode I remember watching as a kid where it's just like, oh, no, he's dead this time. <laughs> I'm like, hang on, no, he is. He's going to kick out too. Yeah. <laughs> but it shows him in like variety of like situations. He's floating in a back. <laughs> like... <laughs> Captain, Sc oh, no. Captain Scarlet. He's Destructible. A, he's a cat that Tom follows on. Oh. <laughs> and then there was the other one. My parents always mentioned the Power Three. Well, they didn't call it that. That's how I've. Stingray was the third one. Stingray. Which I've never Stingray. seen. Stingray. I've only seen Thunderbirds. Marina. What was the actual best one? Thunderbirds. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I think the I think the 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 the, the, uh, the bespoke answer is Thunderbirds. Uh -huh. The woke answer is Stingray. Okay. The broke <laughs> answer is Captain Scarlet. Oh, Captain Scarlet is not the best. One. <laughs> Sick of Stingray being woke, like man. <laughs> woke Stingray. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really stupid thumbnail. Is he virtue stingling? Oh. <laughs> the, the, submarine, the submarine's got like the big nerdy glasses on. It's like, oh, they could, they ruined uh, stingray. <laughs> They're always swimming to the left. Oh. <laughs> Lefty stingray. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Bron Breaker says Von Wagner is soft, just like his father, woke stingray. <laughs> and that the scar on his head is nothing compared to how Bron will make him look. Oh, oh. finally, Bron's doing something. Sorry, mm. the big one. Bron Wagner is doing yeah. something that isn't. Bad acting, shagging therapists, and then doing a little bit. Oh, you missed that episode. Serious. It was quality. Uh, it was so good. Week one, like, shags a therapist. Like, week two, well, you know, here's the thing about my head. It literally was like this, Tom. Robert Stone drags Von Wagner to therapy. They're in the waiting room. Von's like, I don't want to do therapy, man. And then, as you said, that saxophone player's like, the doodly doo. Yeah, yeah. The uh, door opens. Hi, it's I'm, a lovely I'm, lady. She's I'm like, Dr. Tits McGee. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then he's, he's like, like, you know, he's like, this is the I'll, one eyebrow I'll, raised. Maybe I'll give this therapy thing a try after all <laughs> <laughs> it was literally that yeah. yeah did you open up a few therapists he goes something like that Robert. Oh. you know and all this turns a bond but then next week he's like yeah Robert so I'm ready to tell you everything <laughs> yeah it was just a one off such a yeah, like it was like out of canon yeah non canon not Amazing to do it in one session oh no. Ah, yeah, that's yeah. the dream yeah, yeah, you know. uh, 
so to speak. Uh, <laughs> Dom and Rhea are confronted in the car park by Axiom, who Dom says, wait, I talked to you earlier. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> funny. Lee. Mustafa uh, Ali arrives and also wants a piece of Dom, but ends up arguing with Axiom over who's next in line for the North American title. Dom and Rhea leave while they bicker. So is Mustafa Ali a bad guy or not? Mustafa Cause... Ali claims he should have title. Can we get that in a news video? Stop. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I think that I thought they were building up Ali is going to like betray Wesley or something, but they've they seem yeah, to have mixed I mean, that because Dom's now in. It's like they've overridden that story with the Dom yeah. stuff. Yeah, so Wes, uh, sorry, he was being a taking storyline. I like it in real life. Um, but then it's gone, nah. Yeah. Nah, nah you know what? He's, he's actually just a proper good guy now. But now he's arguing with yeah. Axion, but... He did say there was like a line in this segment where he's like, no, I want to go for the North American title. Why don't you go for the Heritage Cup? Because Axiom, the whole thing is that Axiom's like, he's like Gollum in the ring. Because he used to be a kid, right? Yeah, I thought it was the fact that he was European. And he used to see, well, a kid used to have the Heritage Cup. And now it's like, you'll never hold a cup like this. And Axiom was like, oh, will I? Because he has done already. Uh, Yeah. This is is what I've gleaned. What you said actually made sense. That's what they're going for, I think. Yeah, but... Again, I, I, assume that, that. I assume that Ali will beat Axiom and Axiom will go for the Heritage Cup instead. And then Nathan Brace will go, oh, so I'm, I'm the consolation prize. <laughs> <I'm at." laughs> oh, okay, get stuffed. Um, one second there, Dragon. I hate Nathan uh... Fraser's promos. It's not his fault. Or yes. is it? Or is it? Yeah. No, it's the material. Bad dialogue delivered badly. It's just because he was in the wrong place at the wrong time when um, Thingy did that Vince McMahon piece. And then they were like, "We've got a Brit. You can John Oliver." Oh, yeah. And they were like, "We've got a Brit. Do Hi. that. Be yeah. John Oliver." I'm Nathan Frazier. Dreadful. Well, they've kept him doing it. I'm English, <laughs> kind of, you know. Yeah. And then it's like, "Hi, I'm gonna look awful in these bits. I'm gonna be made to look, look really bad for some reason." Um, one second there, Dragon. Um, Thea Hale throws in the towel when Baron Corbin oh, catches Andre Chase the submission. Oh, banner. Corbin doesn't want to win like that and gets it yeah, out of the baby ring. Babyface Corbin's like, "No." Yeah, <laughs> the re- before the ref could see it. He wins shortly after anyway, while Thea storms away from ringside. Thea spent oh. most of this match, like, round ringside, just silent. <laughs> and just, like, like scrunching her face and looking down. And because she's like she's, Linda. Because she's so exuberant, like, by doing nothing, she absorbs all light. <laughs> yes. And, that, you know, that's how, that's how much of a, a, a character that she is, that when she does nothing, like... It's almost that draws it all mm. in, mm. and you, and you, I and I I hate that someone's hurt us about. It. <laughs> yeah, and so did the crowd who were really into this. Now we're back. They're the, booing uh, Andre. The, uh, the booed Andre. Uh, crowd chatted, throwing the towel um, as Baron was beating <laughs> up Andre, showing actually following the shows. Well done. Mm. So then they did actually do it when Baron had Andre in the single crowd. But yeah, didn't Brilliant. didn't see it. Let uh, left. He lost anyway. Yeah. Um, Gonna see where this goes. Mm. NXT weekly mm. episodic show with eight neighbors. Wait, if Ross hasn't been following this, and I of hope he, he I hope he hasn't because it's been his birthday. <laughs> like, oh. He's got better things to. But if he <laughs> has, but he maybe, but he genuinely loves NXT. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say he's gonna. He's um, not gonna watch Raw or SmackDown or AEW. He's gonna watch NXT. When he's back, if we have to reveal to him what's happened, it's gonna be like the Phantom Menace all over again. Oh. When he learned, oh, not Phantam Menace. Oh, no, no, we, no, we've done that. Well. Yeah. We've done that. Um, Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back. Wait, I know it's the fact that that was the thing revealed. Yeah. He didn't know that. It's like, yeah, yeah. I think Phantom Menace might be the only one he's seen. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. I like him. Yeah. The metaphor celebrate the victory. What, the Phantom Menace. Oh, Ross. By, no. Interrupted who, by wait, Tyler Bate. Who is the Phantom Menace? Is it Maul? No. Peter Serafinovich. Well, yeah, but who is? Hey. Uh, but who no, is? No, I the, thought the idea was Brian Butterfield yeah, is the Phantom Menace. It's the bloody the, emperor. Is it the lurking Sith? That's Force? what I mean. Right. Like the, so it's the, the, who yeah. is the Phantom Menace behind Darth Maul? Because I think when yeah, I was emperor. a kid, I was like, Maul is the Phantom Menace because he's the cool new person. Yeah. And the film's named after him. I think as a kid, I thought that was. I never really thought too much about it. Right. Right. Am I right? Well, this is podcasting. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. that was all right. I can't believe that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. wow bloody hell. Well done. Oh. Take a boo. Oh. Anyway, yeah, Tyler Bate has just returned from Tibet, and boy, are his arms oh tired or something. <laughs> Tyler thinks Noam needs a fresh opponent and challenges him to a match. He then accepts his own challenge and leaves. Somehow this is valid. Yeah, he goes, I think I want to... I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello sorry. there. Hello there, Noam. I want a title shot again. Oh. <laughs> Wait, so they lie to him and say, or as you guys would say, they tell him the truth that Dar is the rightful holder of the heritage. That's right. He doesn't believe it, but still wants to challenge for it. Or does he just want to wrestle him? I don't know. And he goes, I'll challenge you. And Dar goes, I don't think that's how it works. And then he goes, accepted and leaves. And Dar's like, eh? 
And well, I'm also like, what? Bear in mind that he's been in Tibet, so he probably doesn't know what's happened. He's just in No Amdor holding the mm. Heritage Cup and just gone, oh, No Amdor's Heritage Cup champion. And they're going to think, oh, well, I'll not be able to Has follow. And they go, no, no, yeah. they've, they've got the peacock in Tibet. And he's just like, <laughs> oh. No, my wife always said it, but I'll tell you this. Did Can't get not, anything. You can watch wrestling.tv. You'll get. No, no, no. 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 Never mind. I'm on Vow to Fowl. 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 I'm on I'm on Vow to Fowl. I can't get anything in Tibet. It's actually. No, no. That's how he, that's how he talks normally. They're actually speaking perfect English in Tibet. We with the tour guys. It's just Tyler Bates just used to talking to his friends. Uh, who is it? It's the badger, the <laughs> rabbit, <laughs> Trent the Seven. Toad. Yeah. Trent Seven. The right. giant mushrooms uh, that they hide underneath <laughs> and have, you know. Buttered scones, an afternoon tea with Jeff oh, Jarrett. Those would be no. great segments if Tyler Bate is just chatting to a series of puppets. Oh, Matthew's in picture a, in a Tyler, wilderness. He's, Matthew often in, evokes the image of Tyler Bates sat on a toadstool with all his animal companions around. That's him. fantastic. He's just out off his nut. <laughs> with, <laughs> with all the happy tree and friends. From yep, oh, oh, not them again. <laughs> no, no. But then we see, the, we see the perspective from somebody else and he's just sat in a skip. <laughs> <laughs> this could also like, work we, we yes. think it's a badger but it's just like a bin painted yeah. black and white <laughs> he's probably he's talking he's talking about an empty Nescafe box saying I'm going to bring back the Heritage Cup toy to <laughs> um, and no one's going near him have you seen the size of that tramp bloody hell <laughs> uh, now you stop it silly snake and he's waving a pair of tights around <laughs> um, at one point the bit that made me laugh in this was that he turns up and says something, and I can't remember what he says, but Dar likes it at the start before they argue. Dar goes like, he's cool, he's cool. Like he's telling the others that he's mm. cool, and I, can't, I wish I could remember what he said. Because Tyler says something, and Dar... Hello, I'm Tyler B. And Dar goes, he's cool, he's all right, he's cool. <laughs> I can't remember what it was now. Never mind. Sorry, do carry on. Okay. The schism are in the ring. Oh, yes. With this their segment, gang of masked minions. This segment was unreal. To find out who betrayed them last week. Uh, I was surprised at this because it started. I thought, what the hell is Schism doing strong? I thought they were splitting up. They have a legion. They, they certainly do. Their, their name is Legion. There Destroy are many. Them, yeah. yeah. They unmask a few. Stop it. They unmask a few members, including yeah, bloody Eichmann Gyro. Amazing. What are you doing? Eichmann here? Gyro. <laughs> yeah. Like he's off to go collect his unemployment. Oh, I, <laughs> I said Gyro, didn't I? I said like Pete Donnelly in the song. <laughs> Got a man for his Gyro. You know why that is? We watched that bloody YouTube channel that caused the bloody awful like, 80s, 70s British TV stuff that oh, people want to forget about. I like this. Idea. And it was a guy doing an impression of Clint Eastwood going. And it was about how bad the impressions were and the jokes were, but I said, I actually like this. The guy goes, eh, just finish, he's doing Clint Eastwood. Eh, FG, <laughs> it's just too hard, isn't it, Matthew? Come on, you can, do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. just come back doing a Western in Liverpool. It's called a Fistful of Gyros. Ah. <laughs> Which is a What's very ancient, oh. I'll ask you Stuart after. Milliard, Millard. Oh, Stuart Matthew Millard. Because he covered the It's a Knockout. No, sorry, It's a Royal Knockout. Which, as they say in the video, is, was for a while used to be the most disgraceful thing the royal family was involved in. Oh, <laughs> no. oh it's, it, it, it's, it's YouTube sounds quality, by the way. Sorry, what the hell am I talking about? Before Eichmann beating Gyro. down a pair who appeared to be Brute and Julie. Well, see, I could do bloody Latin, but I can't do bloody <laughs> English. So, uh, go on. Julius and Brutus, we've said before, like, oh, there's a tall one and a muscular, like a wide one, but they are still both similar heights. One of these lads was. Comfortably shorter than the other, which was a shame for the illusion. Yeah. I uh, knew it was not them. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, aha, oh, it's not the Creeds after all. As they appear on the Tron in front of a green screen, they play around with the backgrounds. Before... We're in Egypt now. Oh. <laughs> or maybe it's Orlando, Florida. Uh, but or maybe like, it's where... a skip with Tyler B. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Before telling the schism that they're definitely nowhere near Orlando. Clink and sink, baby. What? That's what they said. They cheered oh, the cocktails. Oh, they did say that because they clink, clink and sink, sink. baby. Because suddenly they've oh, gone from sense. being like world's greatest tag team style singlet amateur boys. Now they're wise cracking baby faces. Now they're Miz and Morrison. Right? Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Joe Gacy addresses the worldwide followers of the schism, telling them to find the creeds and bring... <laughs> <laughs> I love this Get bit. me, Inspector Gadget. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Where is Carmen San Diego <laughs> now I'll playing on you. NXT? And all the, man. And he goes, so they've not just got like the sort of 10 or so minions that we've seen in the performance center. He goes, worldwide followers. They've got, mm. they've got like agents in every port. Like it's amazing. Joe Casey's looked at that and gone, hmm, they're in Egypt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah. Thought, yeah, they went, we're definitely not in Orlando and he's taken that yeah. Face, value, face gone, value right we need to find them they're yeah. not in Orlando <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Well. well no one rid me of these 
Are we just yeah. going to have like a vignette of people of, of like a hooded uh, schism members like around the world, <laughs> one like, <laughs> walking past people who look a bit like Brutus Creed uh, from behind? Uh, going, uh, uh, one's having a croissant in Paris in front of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> one's in front of Big Ben. Like, <laughs> oh my god! One's in front of that uh, shopping centre. Meadow Hall. Was it the Meadow Hall? We the talked, we talked about that off camera. That was seamless, though. wasn't it? It was off camera. Horrible right? insertion there. <laughs> oh, <no>, never mind. <laughs> um, yes. The senior Sanford officers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was weird that, yeah, hang on, the Creed's who, whole thing was the Diamond Mine was serious and really good at the wrestling are suddenly now doing silly bollocks like this. But it is mocking the schism. Yes. So it's like, it's all right. Part of me did, it, this is sad, maybe. Maybe it's not. I'll, I'll just share it out with you. Part of me went, hey, why are they still on NXT? They lost a match. <laughs> so I saw a comment. Hey, this is disgraceful. This I thought they were men of honor. So last week, apparently, <laughs> last week, apparently, because <laughs> last week I went, oh, I think, I, as if I just noticed it, because I, I was like, I think that the peop, the two mask wearers were the Creeds. And you were like, oh, right. And a comment went, actually, the week before, it was also obviously the Creed's, but Matthew Ross and Fraser breezed by. <laughs> apparently, you didn't. You were just like, well, enough of the schism. And apparently, <laughs> the, the first clue came oh, the week was before. It? Yeah, I was away. Apparently, oh. that was, and you three were just like, schism, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> All three of us fast forward. Yeah. <laughs> Can you blame us? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like the schism. What? They remind me of the early days of the Dark Order. Ah, oh. the bad days <laughs> before Brody Lee came. Yeah, I don't know. Ugh, you're all right. They've re-signed, by the way, as well with AW. No, I, have they actually? Because I, mm? I thought it was a joke. Because obviously the elite side. Oh, and it's just Uno I thought being you were going. Uh, your real mates have signed as well, Hangman. Oh, I couldn't right. tell. No, Fightful Select then said, "No, we can confirm that they've just signed multiple <laughs> deals." Yeah. <laughs> Fightful Select also says, "Yes, the creeds were the schism in that one bit." <laughs> Damn it. Um. Oh, well. We see footage of Cora Jade packing her things and leaving the locker room last week. She is very cross. Oh, and she deleted her Twitter for reels. Me and Tom started comparing it to Ringo Starr for some reason on the news. Because she the picked up all her fan mail. Yeah. Ah. She picks up a big pile of fan mail and she's like, oh, they, they're just being nosy anyway. Mm. Like, Peace and love. I'm not starting to get any more fan <laughs> Ringo mail. Starr would never... Do. Peace How and dare love. you compare that Ringo Starr? He spent decades doing it. <laughs> but that, and but he's remembered because he said, can well, you stop I, sending them? Yeah. Like, 50 years after he said, I'll do it. It's because I said <laughs> she picks up a Ringo Starr-sized amount of fan oh, mail. But okay, I, right, I think right, I've right. then made the image in my head of like, it's in the shape of... Ringo Starr <laughs> with a little pair of sunglasses. Oh, right, yeah. I guess yeah. you don't know what that means. You're like, why is it in the shape of a beetle? <laughs> my f if I were Dana Brooke, my he's feelings... He's the smallest one, I guess. Yeah, he is goes. the shortest is one. He, the, he probably is. Although in that documentary, he's up on that big drum platform all the time going, I've got a, I've got a film. To he's not from oh, Birmingham. Yeah. What have I done? Oh. <laughs> so, so bears look at him and go, wow, he's massive. <laughs> <laughs> they're, not frightened, they're frightened by him then. Yeah. I'd feel really bad if I was Dana Brooke because what a diss this is. Like, Someone is so upset <laughs> you lost a match to them. I'm off. You storm out, you delete your Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, she she also she also Dana Brooke once yeah. she deleted it to it and left NXT. <laughs> like Dana Brooke's uh, like, am I that bad? Yeah. <laughs> everyone goes, yeah. yeah. Well, no, I hope no. that becomes up. She returns and goes, that's right. I'm back. I'm better than ever. And someone goes, lol, you you lost to Dana. And she's you lost to Dana. All right, bye. I'm leaving again. I think I think Cora just goes off and has an amazing two year career, becomes the women's world champion, and then gets challenged by Dana and she beats her again. <laughs> <laughs> she's always there. Yeah. Yeah. She, her got, kryptonite is Dana Brooke. Yeah. She's a mystery opponent. She's yeah. melt. No. She's she's the Cora what uh Mira is the neck breakers. She's like yeah. a yeah, she's like a boogie team, you know, like a top like last season it seemed like it seems like recently like Arsenal always have trouble at Everton. No matter how bad Everton are doing, they always give Arsenal a game. She is Dana Brooke is Everton FC is what I've done here. <laughs> she's go. Cora's bogey. She's the Toffees. Up the Toffees. Sorry, Joel. He's a Liverpool fan. He's a Liverpool fan. Oh. Joe, you can't say that. Just don't call him that. Oh, you didn't hear on the no, podcast. He oh, he's a Liverpool, he's a Liverpool yeah. fan. Jesus. Uh, in the main event, yeah, bleep, bleep that out so no one hears what all you say. Yeah. All of it. All of it. I know a, it's a lot of bleeping. But... He's a red man. He's a part of the red. He's red faced now. I can't believe he's. I'm going to tell your mother you said all that. If we all make a very quick jolt at the same time, it'll look like Joel has cut something out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joel cursed at Jack again. Yeah. After three, let's all just jolt yeah, at the same okay. time. Uh, three, two, one. And then anyway. Joel! Oh, Joel! Oh, oh, look, look, we're why sorry. Would you hit me in the face? We're sorry. We <laughs> thought I hit Jack. Just because he sports a different football team. <laughs> I just think I just think my mother wouldn't do such a thing. <laughs> cut that bit out. All right, we're not, we're not putting any football cut in. That bit yeah, out, yeah, yeah. Cut, cut all of this out. <laughs> we're thinking of your career. All right. Oh, God. 
In the main event, Salas Escobar is revealed to be Tony Stark's mystery partner. Yeah. He helps them beat Gallus. Hooray! <laughs> you know, if they really wanted to win, they could have got Joel. Uh, <laughs> after the match, we see Elliot at the match. After, after the, the match. Kind of, sorry, man, I'm grinning I'm grin too hard. After okay. the match, we see an Elliot Dragunov vignette where he promises to terminate Trick Willie. So He's going to kill Willie. I wasn't sure if... Because, uh, again, we did a news video on the day after NXT, and I went... Oh, yeah, now Trick Williams is probably going to be in a feud with Ilya Dragunov. And Tom went, who says he's going to terminate him. <laughs> and I thought, is he just exaggerating for the video? But no, and I watched it. I was like, oh, Tom was literally telling the truth. He went, I'm going to terminate you. <laughs> wow. Good start to the solo career. Yeah, yeah. He was my first opponent. Oh, no. Oh, God. Yeah. He's a scary man. What if they do a thing where next week you have, like, Dragunov just obliterate Tricky, oh, Tricky Willie, no. but Carmelo comes out. And Trick's like, no. And Trick's like, does it go away? Mm. Yep. Fight me own battles here. Bang. Yes. Rocky IV again. <laughs> I've got this. Yeah. He don't got this. <laughs> AEW Dynamite, the 200th episode. <laughs> Chris Jericho and Takeshita beat Sammy Guevara and Danny Garcia after Don Callis interferes with his baseball bat. Jericho sees him do it. As a think and goes, sod it, <laughs> takes the victory. Oh, it's, a, it's the correct storyline beat, yeah. I think. Uh, later backstage, Daddy Magic tells Jericho that the stable are having a mandatory meeting next week and Jericho will be there. Ooh. It is weird because Garcia is getting serious pops for that dance he did that went TikTok <laughs> viral. Not um, for being an excellent wrestler. No, no, no. Doing no. That. He's a sports <laughs> entertainer at heart. He does, like he says. Yeah. Jericho is doing a, the elite style. Who is he friends with story? Uh, by choosing to go with Don Callis, who uses a bar with him. But Jericho, even when doing this and being a dick and clearly being a dick, he's still way more over, even though he's aligned with Don Callis, than Guevara or Garcia, especially Guevara, who's doing his best to be a face. So it's a weird mix, but crowd were really happy for it. You know, yeah. everyone got a chance to look good. Uh, Takeshita even doing his, even didn't get the spirit of things doing the, Little pose. Mm. Oh no! I tried doing it. Was it like the half the foot on the, the pin and doing a little bit? He does a little Garcia. dance. It wasn't a full yeah. Garcia. It was. You know, no, no, no. He never resisted the urge. Garcia. Yes. But yeah, not that this was. It's good. It is funny seeing Jericho's lads like Danny Magic going. I can't believe you like this, Jericho. <laughs> it's like, can you not? Are you oh, alright? Sorry, Joel. Right, Joel. Right, all right, all right. Joel, go, Joel, go, Tom, go, Tom, go, Tom go, stop go. him. Tom. No, Joel, don't do that thing again. <laughs> He's got to go. No, that seemed like a legit phone call. Right. Okay. Um, let's hey, carry on. Let's push on. Let's do our best. Yeah. Tell you what, Tobin no, would never walk out in the middle uh, of the corner. You're not the camera as well, I'm just saying. <gasps> We're all right. Camera? We're still framed up. Oh, no. Oh, okay. I, I should probably should brush my hair three hours ago, but never mind. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, the Daddy Magic and everyone's like, I can't believe Jericho's like this. It's like, where have you been? Yeah. Jericho's a diddler. We know this. Yeah, he's always been. Not in like the, that. In, in the cultaholic sense. Of the cultaholic yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah, he's, Come on, get your mind out of the He's always been a bad guy. Yes, like, yeah. you know, but is, is that not like a weird story with a lot of AEW, at least with two other AEW stories where it's like, I've always been a snake. <laughs> uh, do you think it's a yeah, too common you know theme? What, yeah. It's a common they, theme. I know it's going, done on, don't trust you to trust me. I know it's done mm. on Botchamania. On commentary, they go, it's the scorpion and the serpent or something like that. And then one of them corrects the other. Yeah, Jericho, Jericho says it's a serpent and the... The scorpion or something, scorpion, yeah. Scorpion, and then like, actually, it's, it's scorpion, the frog. He goes, shut up, it's the updated version. It's 2023. <laughs> Excalibur corrects him and he goes, shut up, Shivani. And Shivani goes, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. It's like the 50 cent. <laughs> F me, what do I do? They are clearly having the best fun on commentary. They are. Yeah, Jericho on commentary now, is, he, he's, he's a lot more relaxed than he used to be. And when he gets some, they get some passion, it's just actually fun. Yes, it As is. As opposed to like the very start of the episode. Oh, Jericho. Like, oh, okay. When okay, he would just know. scream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Calm down. Yeah. Um, then, in the usual AW fashion, I'll put here, we give that five seconds of post match to react uh, to what happened with Jericho. Is he accepting Don Carlos' advances? Ooh. To then go to Tony Khan during the highlights of the first 200 episodes, managing to not blink like that guy in the <laughs> Heaven's Gate video. Tony. Oh, what a reference. Wow. I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. Tony, I don't mind in, on special occasions like this one, doing. A nice little message, and it doesn't take yeah. up too much of the show. Yeah. I think that's fine. It was when he was every week going like, and the show will be, well, we'll tell you next week which venue we've booked. I'm like, well, I don't, I don't need that. That was hilarious because he was clearly like, 
Is Punk answering the Honestly, phone? It was, what do we do? It was like bloody Wallace and Gromit on the train tracks. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> the next week there will be There's, the announcement <laughs> for next week. Oh, oh God. Chair legs in the way. Like, <laughs> yeah. Come to Chicago. Summer's going to happen. <laughs> that reminds me of Andrew for some reason. I think he's a big Wallace and Gromit fan. Yeah. Good lad. Everyone likes the wrong trousers. Though. What? <laughs> the I've had to pick a best. The moon one makes me cry. It did when I was a kid. Yeah. Because the robot just wanted friends yeah. and it's sad. But I think in the end, he's happy. He, he yeah, he, he ended up in Star Wars, so he's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wars. That's right. Yeah. Um, um, the Grand Day Out's got my f- the funniest Wallace and Gromit moment that, that ever happened, though. So they're on the moon and he goes up to the, the oven cooker. and Oh, yeah, it's not a robot. It's like a, yeah, yeah, right. I was thinking, well, it's kind of his. But he puts the money in the slot and then nothing happens. Wait for something to happen. And he goes, Gives it a hit like a dad would to an old bit of machinery mm. and goes, Come on, you stupid thing, and pulls the thing out. And he goes, Oh, and he's on the moon with just himself and the dog. And he looks around to see if anyone's <laughs> on the moon. Puts him back in. <laughs> That's very good. kills us every time. But That's the, a good line. The sad bits of Wallace and Gromit films are really sad. The bit of the wrong trousers where the penguin's like feathers is like moved in and Gromit's like out in the garden and these. All sad because Wallace has forgotten. Oh, about him. that's such a sad bit. And it's a, it's a, it's a. But tribute. it makes it makes the highs all the yeah, highs. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a tribute to Ardman the fact that Gromit literally just has a, a one eyebrow. Yeah, and it's <laughs> the most yeah, like like, like the Roger most Moore. expressive yeah, yeah. of all the characters. Gromit's cool. Um, Gromit's a badass. Oh, it, it got me as a kid. It was, it was supposed to be funny. I don't know, but like. Uh, a close shave. I almost forgot. Mm. That. I almost bought part three. <laughs> like Return, Return of the, of the Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when they show in the newspaper reports of like what Wallace, sorry, what Gromit's being framed for, and the last thing is when they because he's been arrested in the back of the van, but they put the cloak on him with the handcuffs. <laughs> yeah, and then I don't really get that's supposed to be a joke because yeah, right, yeah. they didn't have like murderers or something. Mm. Like, I, I, actually, I don't know if that is a thing anymore. Yeah. They put a cloak on. <laughs> <laughs> so people don't know and like cause a scene and try and, you know, bottle you or whatever. Uh-huh. But like, I don't think it, it was just like so weird. Like, right, Gromit's not even allowed to be seen by people. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> Can't believe he did it. <laughs> with a twist. Anyway, um, Wallace and Gromit are not on the show. They might be at All In. Mm. We don't know because there'll be one bloody match announced. Mm. Uh, where are we at? Look at their next bit of um, paper. Two seconds. Oh, lots of uh, Cody Rhodes in this video package. They're not afraid to show bits mm. of him. Because mm. they're definitely not the number two promotion or whatever Tony Khan got his, no. his feathers ruffled, like Feathers McGraw. S- Triple H went, oh, Cody's dream is to win the WWE title, not not in a part, not in a second rate promotion or something like that. And then Tony went... We'll see in London we won't be second rate when we sell out Wembley Stadium. And I was like, that is a fair, it's that's a say, fair it's, point. Tony Khan often is like, all right, you know, how about you focus on some other stuff? But, but this is a time case, where it's like, wait, how many people come in this yeah. Wembley, Wembley thing? All right, it's okay, mad. second rate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm. Enjoy, enjoy your Wembley. No. <laughs> Millennium Dome, whatever. <laughs> uh, Jack Perry comes to the ring and tells Jerry Lynn to get out here and take his ass kicking like a man. Lynn arrives and says there's no way he'd be cleared to compete. And he's also 110 years old. <laughs> uh, but he's brought along an old friend instead. RVD with his Pantera theme and everything. <laughs> Just sounds like a Nokia on the phone. On the table. <laughs> <laughs> Perry pretends to leave before sneak attacking RVD, but the tables are turned and Perry hides behind a small child. He literally crowd. hid behind a child. He literally picked up a kid. <laughs> that's, good good, that's good healing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm worried. <sighs> Go on. Because... Last time I saw RVD wrestle in person was at Five Star Wrestling at the uh, Tillita <laughs> Arena. I, I never forget. And I don't think it was... It might have been the one where he attacked his own partner, which was greater. Which was greater, yes. Imagine if he attacks him at Wembley. <laughs> as soon as he Coming sees him. to them. save him from Jarrett and just takes him out with a wheel <laughs> kick. <laughs> what, Back, you done, backstage goes, hey, you all right, RVD? It's you! <laughs> but he, he did his... You know, his, like he's draped them over the crowd barrier and then he gets on the apron and does his, like a yep. spinning leg drop off it. Man, man, I think man. it was to Zach Gibson, maybe? Sorry. Mm. Rip Fowler of the schism. Oh, okay. oh he did it. He, he nearly like took their head off. I was like, ooh, RVD couldn't get quite the same disc. Because he used to be able to jump far enough to land on their back. Mm-hmm. But he like proper like clipped his neck. And I was like, RVD's getting on a bit. Now, in a si- that wasn't like a multi man mm. bodies everywhere kind of situation. In a singles match, there's going to be like a spotlight on him. Yeah. And um, he, he never had the easiest. He was amazing in his day, but he had, he's got a hard move set to keep going. Yeah, look, we all love RVD, and we, we all do. love the idea of ECW. I am old now. I have seen ECW come back more times than F in Dracula. 
I'm all right with not seeing yet another redo. However, I will admit, crowd still goes wild oh, yeah. for him. And he came out, I'm sick of this. People, wrestlers coming out way past their prime, and this is Joel who is in his prime. Okay. Um, coming out of the prime, he did not look in great shape. Because, again, I'm not, I'm not saying crit criticizing him. I'm saying because it happens to all of us. He said, Father really, time is undefeated, as they say. he set a high bar for himself back in the day uh, to live up to. No, no, no. Like, I oh. didn't even mean he, he literally. Yeah. Yeah. He was so amazing. he came out and the crowd like, yay! And you know he's going to lock up and people go, you still got it. And wrestling crowds need to stop doing this. You Sometimes need to leave the past in the past because he doesn't look like he's got it. He looked annoyed. <laughs> um, <laughs> he looked hard, he looked like being I'm there. really happy to see him. I like Ron yeah, Van Damme. Yeah. I'm really happy to see him. But I think had this been a WWE return, they'd have had him come out in full ring gear with all the, all the, the cheeriness of a Rob Van Damme. <laughs> to his music, you know, like, hey, dude, all this. Right. Yeah. He walked out like, 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 like Tony. The milkman had disturbed it's, him. It's, yeah, like Tony had said something to him just for going out. Like Tony had said, oh, we're going to pay you half. <laughs> I always like, preferred Sabu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or maybe it was yeah. almost like maybe, maybe his segment he thought was later in the night and they went, oh, it's on now. So he wasn't mm. really ready. Mm. He just looked a bit annoyed. Yeah. He was in like a long, like RVD esque sleeveless top and then like joggers. And <laughs> it just, it just didn't strike me as the Van Damme that I wanted right. to see. Yeah, like, yeah. I'd like to see him in, even though he wasn't wrestling, you know what, wrestling's nonsense, it's fine. Put him in yes. his ring gear, and have him come out in his ring gear, and and be, and and chase off Jack Perry, mm. rather than sort of casually sauntering through the ring, go, uh, all right, well, is Rob that Van Damme. That's, that doesn't mean if it's, because, he said he was a long time ago, and they all wrestled a very hard style. There's not a lot of them. Like Jerry Lynn looks good now because he's not doing that thing. Yeah. Anymore. Also, he's 120 years old. Yeah, I mean, you can out walk there. out still and smile. <laughs> so is this? So I don't think smile love. Not for that. I don't, one. I don't think that's AEW's fault necessarily. It might be no, for, no, it might no, be no. For booking him, but but it's I feel RBD. like that if it was WWE, I feel like they'd well, have been well, a bit more disciplined WWE, with him and said, "This is how you're going to do it. This is how you're going to come out." The last time I remember RVD in WWE, he was in a weird. Four who came out to chase the heels away, and it was like him, Slaughter, Angle. It was like, oh, the three oh, musketeers. They've always been that, best yeah. friends. It was weird. And and he he must have looked at that going, you cheat. Like, but he, but he, did come he came out in his ring gear, and he yeah. looked like Rob Van Damme. He did, yeah, he did. But Rather than went, like, you Rob cheeky Van bastard, Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> yeah. What time period am I supposed to be representing yeah, yeah. here? <laughs> He's, he headlined WrestleMania 4. It's Rob Van Damme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could argue that they're representing 1997. Because you had Rob Van Damme in ECW, you had Sergeant Slaughter oh, versus... Oh, Sergeant Slaughter in the boot prime. Camp, boot camp match, Sergeant Slaughter versus Hunter Hearst Helmsley. You, angle and you are actually right there, damn you it. You had actual Olympian angle at the time. And Slaughter had Kurt Angle's music in 97. Oh. Thieving bastard. A wee. <laughs> with yeah. War drums. But he looked like Rob Van Damme rather than Rob Van Damme poses for trading card photo, which yeah. is what we got. I'm looking forward to seeing the match. I thought it might have made all in. But I imagine they've got different plans. No, the announcement's going to be on Dynamite next week. Little it's graphics. Next, so. Yeah, next uh, week. Yeah, not not really fussed. Sorry, not yeah. to sound like an old negative person. Mm. But people fussed. go, yeah, but he's RVD. But he also did tweet, as people find out. What? Quote: People who think their opinions are facts are really ignorant. Oh, yeah. According to my values, which are the only ones that matter to me, impact is way better than whatever else you're marking out on. Most of those when all petite cuts. Don't even look like professional wrestler. <gasps> when did he tweet this? I don't know, a few years ago. Oh, right. Oh, oh, I, well, thought, I thought you meant he tweeted that <laughs> after the show. As, <laughs> as he was going yeah, to the yeah. ring. As he, as he a few years that ago. would explain everything. He walked back and went, yeah, Impact's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I really did he thought mean he Impact? Oh, by the way, I'll say this. Did you see RVD when he was in Impact last time? When he was doing his... Hey, I'm here with my girlfriend. Oh, also, yeah. my girlfriend's girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. I love that run. That was a great usage yeah. of him. Let's, let's. He was such a good promo. Just be like, well, I have to team up with you tonight, but I don't really fancy doing it. So you can wrestle for me. Have people do it for him. Oh, it was a good run. That, that was, was good. He was, he was so great doing nothing. Was RVD in his Kevin Nash era? Yes. Yeah. If he does that with Jack Perry and goes, you know, I don't, I don't want to wrestle Jack Perry. Maybe he was trying to be a bit of both. Uh, a bit of like laissez-faire maybe it's because Jack they wanted um, him Rob to be Bender. the old RVD and he's just not into that and he's like oh, I can't be doing he, that he, maybe he suggested hey how about me my girlfriend my girlfriend's girlfriend my <laughs> girlfriend's girlfriend's girlfriend and they're like no 97 and he went oh. uh, but then you but then if I don't know maybe if that's the vibe if you get the vibe that oh I just don't want to, oh, I'm not bothered I just go okay don't worry about it cheers We'll do something else. Well, you're not Tony Khan, Tom. You're I know. You're better than Tony Khan. I'm not better. I just... That's right. That's what this, every week we prove we are better I, I would smarter just, than anyone yeah. in wrestling. No, I we, know We don't, know, we know, don't know what goes on behind the scenes or no, anything like No, but that. it does feel forced. Mm. And I, I agree with you. Anyway. And Trent, I do think you're better than Tony Khan. 
I'd rather be on your side. That's very kind. Well, we've got the same Let's diva. start a promotion. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Sam wants to. W- he genuinely does. C- I'm scared that he really P- wants to. W- uh, I'm yeah. scared that just Sam genuinely How does. How do you change it? it? Like PC dub. Uh, oh, PC dub. Preston Championship. I don't want um, Chris Masters sent around my door. Yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw that video. I've not seen the video. Thing. Yeah, no, he, no one's no one saved it or anything. Oh. But this, it's got like print screens of it. Oh. Trent Barreto wins the anything goes triple threat match against Moxie so and Pendle. So apparently, once what's the Chris Masters brand the PCW Sorry, I don't mean promoter to, yeah. or someone there was a kid yeah, who like, pirated. He was either pirating or he was selling them on the UK fan forum. Something to do PCW with PCW DVD. So, ah. so they went round with a camera crew, by which I mean some guy recording and Stephen Flutter, who was a bouncer by trade. So is he? <laughs> so he didn't even need Chris Masters with him. Yeah, but maybe he goes, I don't know who you are. So he's Chris Masters. Oh, mm. oh okay, yeah. yeah. So Chris Masters is just there, like, yeah, oh, exactly. There he is. Like that. And the guy went, give me a, you know, go get the stuff. And he gave them it. And his brother's like, like, well, I know where you live now, whatever, like that, yeah. and all this. And wow. they deleted it because some people, like, some people thought it was the best thing ever. It's and a bit other people, like, you go to people's houses? Mm. Uh, and Actually. I think they did to avoid that. But I have seen it. But it's, it's gone from the internet. But to be fair, whenever I retweet like a North thing, that's because Bowers has come around mine and threatened. <laughs> 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 he's come on mine, he's like, I'll get Scotty to do the worm. <laughs> <laughs> No! <laughs> you, look, you look outside the door, you just see W! Oh, no, don't get to M! <laughs> I'll delete the VHSs! Yeah, I'm sorry, I will retweet it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, how are you tape trading in NCL? We don't even make them. Like, <laughs> what? Anyway, Trent Barreto wins the Anything Goes Triple Threat match against Moxie and Penta. Claudio and Wheeler try to interrupt the celebration, but they're cut off by Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy, and Chuck Taylor has a big red face. Yes. Uh, they brawl in the crowd, and Trent joins in to help his pals. They fight off the BCC, and Chuck Taylor challenges them to a parking lot brawl on Rampage, which even though they show clips of it on the bloody thing, uh, in the 200 episodes, the uh, video cap thing, not many people reacted to it. Yeah, like, I was Do you not remember that amazing yeah. match they had? Mm. And clearly, no. It that, was unbelievable. Yeah. And it was also when um, Orange Cassidy came out of the boot yep. to help them, which is amazing. It's like, they, it's like their gimmick match. It's their speciality now. Yeah. And I think... Obviously, I don't put much screens to this, but obviously a lot of people do. Uh, I think Meltzer gave it five stars. It got a five star. So people went, yeah. Chuck Taylor has more five stars than Kurt Angle. <laughs> he does. And I'm like, of course he does. Uh, oh, because he said it's on Friday at Rampage. That's why they didn't create uh, Anyway, what do you think of this match, Jack? This Which match were we talking about? Oh, the, 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 the Anything one. Goes. The Anything Goes match. I thought it was a lot. There was a lot yeah. of stuff happening at once. And, I, remember, and I, I was so distracted by all the stuff happening that I couldn't remember what the setup to this match was. I was like, these are three very random guys thrown together, but it's like one guy from each stable, one, yeah. so it's Pender from the Lucha Bros, and then Trent. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. I also thought it was an interesting decision to have Trent win instead of Moxley. Mm. Oh, well, Moxley's going to win. But no, he didn't. And he didn't take the pinfall, but I thought it was I thought it was fine, Matthew, to answer your question. <laughs> it, was a, it was a lot. There was a lot going on. What do you think, Tom? I enjoyed it. I was surprised Beretta won. Mm. In the, considering Mox and Penta are in there, yeah, mm. Beretta. I thought Beretta was there to take a pit rather yeah. than be the mm. pinny. Yes, the I was pinny. surprised. <laughs> the the apron, <laughs> <laughs> as we call it. That's a uh, I'm confused with the binny, which is obviously Tyler Bate. Uh, <laughs> I was surprised that they did so much stuff so quickly that it all blurred together. I really felt like an old dude here are going. Look, I like Death My Trust then, and I love Moxley, but this was almost like him at his worst. Like within thirty seconds, it's a barbed wire bat. All right, and then there's thumbtacks, and he's done two moves, and he's already kicked out of the moves used on them. I'm like, I don't want to sound like a cornet type, but you could you try slowing down. He runs a risk of becoming a caricature of himself. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. A, it was a caricature yeah. of Mox. As well said, a caricature of Moxley was this, and I'm I like, and that. I like you, Mox. How about you slow down? Mm. However, bloody hell, the Canadian story off the top rope through the table. Yeah, to Trent. It, it sounded like a shotgun blast when he landed. But then you went, well, that's not the finish. <laughs> Which, again, we don't want to give you that. Exactly. Yeah. It maybe went twice as long or did half as less or we've enjoyed it more. But it was just like, oh, okay. Like, it's hard to react to, to anything if it's not treated like it hurts. So mm. just saying. Uh, Rene interviews RVD, who says he came to E-Dub because he heard Jungle Jerk running his mouth. <laughs> Yeah. He says he aims to win the FW title and might even retire it. What a good idea, IVD. Yeah. This makes me think he might win. Nah. No. Now, I think that Hook would be w- the worst decision. I think Hook wins it back 
Oh, so I think this is this is a journey to get Hook to win it back. With and I think we I think it all in. If we're not going to get Van Dam versus uh, Perry, we'll get we'll get Perry and Hook, and we'll have Taz put the Taz mission on Perry. Whoa, oh. Taz hasn't done anything like that in a while. No, no. I I thought unless we, he sees I, Matthew. My no. idea was Taz versus Perry. But then, but then everyone yeah, all know he can't. I don't think can't. Taz wants to. It, it, would be, it would be great, wouldn't it? It would be good. I don't think it needs to be a lot of a match. No, I guess not. It just needs, you know, you can have you can have shenanigans afoot and just, you know, Taz is in great shape at the moment. Is like he? He's, yeah, he's lost ah, a lot of timber. Fair play. He's looking good. Maybe he doesn't... Oh, it would be great, wouldn't it? It would be so All good. it would need to be would just be him coming out in the gear, Survivor I Let You... You could even and and then just have I mean it, whether it jobs out Jack Perry I don't care if it jobs out Jack Perry I'm not a fan uh, just have him Taz mission it there you go mm. done yeah such a casual maybe, takedown of Jack Perry or maybe we have Hook and Jack Perry have they have a good match and then Taz's music hits Taz comes out yeah, yeah. Taz, if it's yeah. involved in the finish like that fine but yeah I don't want Taz be having a match all I don't Do see know. me being gold or whatever I don't want to have these young these old guys coming in and overshadowing the younguns I want Jack Perry to yeah. kick Ivy's face off I want him to. <laughs> I love you, Taz. But yeah, Jack Perry, if he's going to do anything, he's going to, you know, shoot pile drive, Taz. So it's all to get him over. I hope they don't lose yeah, sight of, of trying to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that the idea? Mm. Anyway. Yes, I think you're probably right. Pete, speaking of over, MGF cuts a baby face promo about his various difficulties growing up, including ADHD and bullying. ADHD does get a chant. I think it's ADD. Cause it's a chant. Oh! ADD, right, right. ADD. Uh, which he credits with making him into a scumbag. It was to protect himself, but now he realizes that there's no way to live. Getting booed is easy, but being vulnerable is hard. He brings out the man who helped him realize that, Adam Cole, baby. Cole commends MGF for this realization and says that the fans have always wanted to cheer MGF because they know that deep down, there's a good guy inside. MGF reveals that he's changed his mind about the title shot he offered Cole. He no longer thinks Cole deserves a match. He deserves the match at all in. MGF gives Cole a contract, which he signs, and they hug. Backstage, Roddy Strong is furious. <laughs> he's not happy. And then he's even, he's still, he was unhappy then, then the kingdom arrived. <laughs> and then he's really mad. Matt Taven. What, 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 no, go away. Go back um, to Rampage. So he didn't, what, what first of all, what's going to happen? Yeah. But secondly, he didn't read the contract. He gave me and he went, yeah, I'll sign it, MJF. And now I'm like, what? Crowd knew and crowd was like, read it, read yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He went, I don't need to read it. It's like, oh, you, you're sting, you're sting. Mm. You get stung. Are you not going to mention the hug? The hug? I mean, it was going to be the podcast, but I mean, I'll tell you what happened now. in the hug. I'll tell you what happened in the hug. Adam Cole gave MJF a hug. Adam Cole pumps his fist into the back of MJF, which is what no, he did. No, I thought did. he was doing his baby thing. Like, nope, no, he, he does that to his back which is what he did to Roddy in NXT oh, oh, oh. before low blowing him oh. no I didn't know you need to, you need to have like a no pad you when you watch your wrestling nowadays I know I know but I love that little touch because oh, it's yes. like he's like, oh my god yeah hug and then you just see that what, what are some other ones like when FDR kissed the titles you're like oh, you know. <laughs> no that was one so uh, <laughs> it wasn't one it was I'd already recently learned that when wrestlers kiss the title they can't be seen as kissing the title goodbye and they do it in a Subtle, sentimental way to say goodbye to a belt that they probably held in all the territories and that in the 80s and whatever. But then FTR came out against Hawkins and Ryder on the WrestleMania pre-show and went, mm. <laughs> like they were on the corner of the ring, like kissing it multiple times and then lost it. They were French kissing those things. Yeah, it was so funny. Like they were taking the Michael out mm -hmm. of, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a great, that's, wow. I saw it, it's, a shared on, it's been shared on Twitter, like the, the comparison of it's exactly the same hug that he gives Roddy. And to the point where even if you watch it, they reposition themselves as the hug's going on oh to make God. sure that the camera gets maybe, a nice, clear mm, shot. Maybe of me and Fraser are right after all. Because this segment made me think that you're right. But this is uh, where... The, here's the, <laughs> the, but, but here's the thing. that doesn't. It's not a fade to complete because the twist here is that MJF's clever. He'd have felt that or he'd have seen it. No, that's too... Nah. That's too subtle, surely. So that's when MJF can maybe go, you're going to do it to me. So I'm gonna do Are they it, both yeah. going to try at the same time? What's Maybe they'll just both low blow each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear, we didn't study Battleship Potemkin at Film and Media Studies <laughs> as in depth as this bloody story. Again, it's line. pronounced Pikmin. And you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Is that two the one two, with well the, that invented like cutting, basically, or montages? Or yes. I but can't. Long, short answer, yes. I just recognized the poster of like the. Yeah. I'm on a boat. Well, it's about, innit? I don't know you were familiar with this film. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. I want a boat. Yeah. With T-Pain. I've seen the video. They're all, I'm flying on a dolphin. I've seen it. 
But yeah, this um, MGF's done similar promos before, but he's always still been a heel. And I've been like, what's this? It kind of this kind of excuses or makes up for some of them if you watch in the long term. Where he's been like, that's right. What was he doing the promo against Daniel Bryan? He went, uh, I, I, I love this girl. No, no, I didn't love it. It's like, I had this girl and she went, you know, mm. on me when I was in the car and then the car crashed and then I that told the weird. police oh. it was her. Yeah, I'm that type of person because I'm very lonely. <laughs> if I'm like, what? I'm very lonely. That's why I'm addicted to people. It's like, no, 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 no. Wait, let's go back to the first thing you just said. I don't feel sympathy for you. <laughs> yeah. And now it's like, oh, okay. Those kind of awkward promos is like, oh, it's all come full circle in the end. Which, as we were saying beforehand, sometimes if you sit down and binge all of AEW, not all of it, Jesus, but the bits that matter, you're like, oh, this is actually really good. This. It is, but it's, but it's so do, difficult you, to keep up with. You do have to make a one. commitment. So Yeah, it's a, it's it's committed viewing, and it, and it yeah. rewards you for, for committing to it. Yes. Which I think is... But I thought that was fantastic. Oh, yes. Really enjoyed that. I'm excited for this match. Yeah. And this is why AEW fans are all nerds, <laughs> because you need to be one to keep up. You really do. Not if you're a collider. Hey, colliders are badasses. They, yeah. they take the, the nerdy dynamite we drink, kids' lunch we money. We drink tequila and fist bumps. Scott, Daw- Scott Dawson? Bloody hell. Hey, Scott Dax Dawson. Har- Dax Harwood. I call you your real name. <laughs> <laughs> Not your dynamite That's name. That's how cool they are. His <laughs> real name is NXT real name. <laughs> 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 I just realized, yeah. <laughs> oh, is that your mate Dash over there? <laughs> The lead face, Jeff Jarrett, Lethal, and Satnam singing a match with Benny Outside shenanigans. The Hardys run out. That's debatable. The Hardys waddle out. Oh, come on. Come on, man. Come on. I don't, I'm just saying, come on now. I'm just saying, man. Come on, you. I'm just saying. Watching Matt Hardy oh, run into the ring makes on. me feel so good about myself. Oh, my God. From nullify Sanjay Dutt. Hangman stops Jarrett from using the guitar in the Elite win. After the match, the Elite confirmed that, yes, they've renewed their contracts for AEW. And uh, Kenny Magnus is like, and I bid you adieu. Bye. I'll see you at the uh, haunting in Venice or whatever. Yes. <laughs> that's uh, this was just a bunch of silly bollocks. It's a shame that Jeff Jarrett didn't get any pop whatsoever. Never liked the AEW fans. It's a bunch of scumbags. If you'd come out wheeling the tea tray. Oh. Uh, oh, no, the interview's not out yet. They're going, that's him from Tom oh, Rubb. That's, that's it. it. That's it. Yeah. I, I, Either Tom Rubb. I'm fine with Jarrett not getting a big reaction here because... At Wembley, he'll be booed to high heaven. It'll be fantastic. Oh, it's yeah. going to be so loud. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there's some stuff here with the Elite doing the thing. AR Fox cuts a promo. Oh, oh here we go. This is weird. This is about Darby Allen being a bad friend. They went around saying, like Chris Masters. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> saying he hasn't heard from him in five years. Yes, but now you're acting like that was a big influence on you. Okay. Swerve. That's says literally that. what Tom was saying last week. It, they addressed it somehow. Yeah. <laughs> you were like, they're not best friends. And then they went, he wasn't my best friend. I was like, yeah. do they watch the... <laughs> <laughs> oh. We need to address it immediately. Yeah. yeah. Well, each one of these lads does. Just mm-hmm. Swerve says that now Fox is in Mogul Affiliates. He has friends that look out for him. He doesn't say, not like bloody French and Trench. No, he doesn't say that. No, <laughs> no he doesn't. Fox and Trickland show a video of them attacking Nick Wayne while he's training in his shed. They smash a photo of Nick's dad over his head and causing him to bleed. And they call Darby on, that's via Nick's phone. Yes. Uh, you know, save some money. And telling him that this is only the beginning. I thought this was lovely. Mm. I thought, like, they've really rejuvenated Swerve, who was going through, like, a, is he ever going to finish that Keith Lee feud? Is he going to be stuck with these two doylums? <laughs> Hack and slash forever. Um, Hack and, slash. and then, yeah, suddenly he's got skull. really cool mates. He's out of... Um, no, he's in the same building. Oh, sorry, whatever. But yeah, he's got um, these cool dudes to do stuff like this, which stands out, makes him look different, makes him look like a big star, while not necessarily having to win every match. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes, 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 yes. Good yes. use of AR Fox as well. I think yes. it's great. Just needed a little something that wasn't just, I'm a great wrestler. Yes. yes. Needed needed something. And I think Mogul Affiliates is the thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I thought it was a lot. <laughs> it was quite intense. But Strickland has a track record of this, because didn't he break Dustin Rhodes' thumb. Didn't he kidnap him and like break his thumbs or something? Was it Billy Gunn? Oh, was it, it was that was some, Billy Gunn. It was Billy Gunn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He broke his thumb. <laughs> I was like, wow. He loves a kidnapping angle, does Strange Strickland. He like, he's doing stuff to stand out. And yeah, be, he's creative. What's it, what do they say? Is it Bischoff that says? Yeah, obviously Bischoff says a lot of stuff. He does that thing. You can't be the same. You've got to be better or different. Oh. Can't be the same. And this, yeah, this stands out. He does. Yeah, he's product. good. He doesn't go, oh, but who are my friends in the business? <laughs> ooh. ooh. Um, Aussie Open <laughs> successfully defend the Ring of Honor tag titles against a Viking O and Commander with a K. They oh, deserve 
the, I don't know how much stock wrestlers put in actually holding a belt, especially when there's so many belts around these days. Yeah, yeah. But if belts do matter, I think Aussie Open have been justly rewarded for their great form recently in New Japan with a Ring of Honor tag title ring. They, they were the guys who would turn up on AEW and mm. take pinfalls for Osprey, and that was a misuse of one of the better tag teams in world wrestling. So, good. That's my analysis. Good. As Ross would say, that's analysis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what, Jack? You've said it. Yay. Yay. I need a wee again, so I'm rattling through the oh, end. Oh, <laughs> bless you. And well done for not just standing up going, I'm going to the toilet. Well, I, I, I'm embarrassed because I, I had one before, and I... I've got a tiny bladder, apparently. I need I've drank a lot of already. water, so I do need one as well. But well, let's get it that done. Sure. Don't worry, it's only one last thing. Don't worry. Uh, Higuru Shida beats Tony Storm to become the AW Women's World Champion for the second time. In I, the main event. I didn't see this coming. Neither uh, I. I. I think many people were going, oh, was this a result of the backlash from last week's women's match and that sign that even production was focusing on going... Yeah. Maybe. Mm, nah, it was. Um, the graphic list, Storm is being champion for 332 days. That ain't right. So they've retconned her interim reign into a real reign. Yeah. Very quietly. It was the like, Thunder Rosa rule. Yeah. And then it wasn't. Hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. But that aside, it's like, okay, something interesting is happening with the out, uh, the Outcast thing, which has just been there for a while, which I've not been interested in. So since, thank you, since, Rashida's coming back. It's like, hey, you are. Or Miss Jacks. Hey. Sorry, 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 sorry. So I'm glad that this happened almost. I can even put up with. Storm Zero getting kicked out of a two. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Wait, why is it always when whenever Tony Storm loses, Matthew loses his mind? He's like, she, she doesn't lose. I can accept the losing. Okay. But Storm Zero getting kicked out of it. Mm. It's Karashida. She's a hero. She is here. Is she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So even though I did cynically, you could say, okay, mm. she's just getting a little bit of a push and this is happening. But you know what? Fine. I'll be interested to see if... This Hikaru Shida reign differs from her initial reign. Because that, that. Well, there's that... people in the crowd for this one, so that's a start. Yeah, we uh, that's yeah. very true. I remember thinking, God, this Hikaru Shida reign's dragging on a bit. But I think that was maybe partly due to lockdown mm. fatigue. Mm -hmm. And also mm -hmm. the fact that she was like a workhorse champion, wasn't she? But there weren't that. It did... Maybe there were. Maybe I'm wrong looking back, but they didn't feel like there was too many stories. It was more like the she match, has a yeah, good yeah. match against this person, then yeah. a good match against this person, and then I don't know. Yeah, what you said. Maybe. Maybe this one will differ. I don't know. I wonder whether we get Hikaru Shida versus Soraya in, in Wembley. Maybe, because, yes, because Soraya hasn't had, like... Oh, because, yeah, because Jamie Hayter was going to come back. Because we were going to uh, get... She's, yeah, she's not going to be able to come Storm back. Storm and Hayter was going to be the match. So this, we yeah. gonna... so this is kind of plan B, maybe. It seemed like it, or yeah. plan C. Rather than... A... Oh, Jesus. Rather than... No, sorry. <laughs> Rather than have, you know, um, you know, a Jade situation where they have the title so long that yeah. she's left now and apparently... No one said nothing about out of since. Maybe yeah. it will be a shame. Maybe uh, yeah. Soraya, sorry. Maybe it will be her. Yeah. yeah. That was the week of wrestling. Go to the toilet. Let's have a rummage in our mail bags. <laughs> ah, mailbag time. Hello, lads. Recently, I was at a Chicago White Sox baseball game. In brackets, Chicago's other baseball team. Ha <laughs> ha. Get ah. Go Cubs, go. Yeah. Rawr. And no, I think he means. Because I support the Cubs, and he's gone. There's another team. You support you know? the Cubs. Yeah, I went to see them in London, Matthew. Oh, that's right. Oh, sorry. It's because I went to lock during lockdown. I was like bored. Obviously, we all were, mm. and I ended up getting into baseball. And the Cubs didn't, at least then, have any nighttime games at their stadium. So the time difference just meant that the game that was always on over here was a Cubs game. So uh, I was like, I love the Cubs. That makes sense. You're such a big Why I? Ruth. And yep. noticed a very large man as one of the trainers who stood out among the players. Upon looking him up, it turned out to be Dale Torborg, it the was former the Kiss, Kiss Demon in Dubsy wow. Dub. Do you guys have any similar experiences seeing or ringing the wrestlers out of character or away from wrestling events? As always, keep up the great work from yours truly, former Champions League winning manager, Robert DeMatteo. Oh, okay. DeMatteo. DeMatteo, sorry. Uh, okay, Alex from Chicago. Thank you, Alex from Chicago. Thank you, Alex. Have you ever bumped in a wrestler where they're not supposed to be doing something? Well, I mainly included this question because I thought you two might have better answers than me. Because my answer is, like, I, I saw H.T. Drake on Northumberland Street once. I don't, know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not um, true, I don't really have one for this. Really? So I'll say H.T. Drake on Northumberland Street have you as also well. Bumped in a I've also bumped into H.T. Drake. He's always bloody on Northumberland Street. All he does is walk around going, <laughs> he's always wrestling, on wrestling. He's walking up and down, <laughs> hitting lung blowers on people uh, outside of Phoenix. It's funny because... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I got reminded by my lovely friend Toby. Hello, Toby. Um, that is this, one of the lads. Is this Polish Toby? Yes, I met Toby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, why? Yeah. Um, 
he said that North is taking on VXV soon. So yes, it is, yes. Uh, I see VXV because that's how the Germans say it. <laughs> and he said that, yeah, Leon Slater's taking on Peter, I'm sorry about this, uh, Tihani. 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 Are yeah. you Peter Tihani? Yeah. Sorry Me to and any German-speaking <laughs> people out there. Are you Peter? I've done it again. Carry on. <laughs> does it? I apologise. It does it seconds later. I didn't do it offensive enough. So yeah, 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 you're <laughs> not. Yeah, the first time was all right. Second time was really offensive. So in my matches of the month podcast, which Tom very kindly edits for me. Oh, what's my job? Why, I wonder so, why it was so <laughs> well edited. Which Tom contractually edits. Contractually for obligated me. to edit for you. Which Tom kindly edits. Tom's for like, hang on, I'm doing free work. For you. He um. Uh, what was the point? Oh, I. So in a previous episode of that, <laughs> uh, it was the 16 karat gold tournament. Yes. And one of the standouts of this year's tournament was Peter Tahani, Tahani. who's good, good such yeah. a great baby face because he's pretty and he comes out and it's he wears a hat and he dances and he's good You're at... You're just describing yourself, John. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I don't dance. No, no. Um, and he, then he, um, and he has really good matches as well. That's a crucial part of the baby face act as well. Mm. But, um, oh, that'll be an excellent match, I reckon. Yeah. Well, me and Toby hung out with him. Before, what? He you got met to be, Peter Tehani? I knew you'd write nice. that. Yes. Yeah. Like, I'd just be XP. We're just chilling in McDonald's. What's he like in person? Just like, you're Quite like, oh, so thing. what do you do? And you're expecting him to just like, you know, ring crew or whatever. And he's like, no, no, I'm a, trainer, I'm a wrestler. He looks young, doesn't there. he? Oh. He's yeah. very, very fresh-faced. No, but he's also like, you know, massive and stuff like that. So, so I, was, yeah, he looks I, was, very... I, was, I was being playful because some, some of this stuff translates to other languages and sometimes it doesn't because obviously English is perfect. But I'm like, oh, so what do you do? He's like, I'm a wrestler. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> he looks, um, he looks he like... He's a mean McDonald's. He looks like he's tall. Yeah. Is he tall? Well, I mean, you're asking the wrong guy. Wait. Taz is taller than me. Oh. You've got a concept of height, though. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> it's like, I've learned yeah. that, I've learned I'm that big. to Pacini, everybody kind of under six foot to him is just the same. Yeah. All tiny ants down there. Yeah. 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 Good for him. I know, yeah. It's a shame. Yeah. So thank you very much for that uh, question, Robert. How tall are you? You're similar to me, aren't you? Yeah, I'm about five foot ten. Same. Okay. Five eleven. Ooh. We're approaching six foot there. Someone's doing all right. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Save some for the rest of us. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ahoy hoy, dirty Dom Diddlers. Oh, my word. Rummaging <laughs> through the mailbag with Jack Perry becoming a bad guy. Some people have a problem with him using Beethoven's Fifth as his theme song. If you guys were to choose a proper bad guy theme for the Jungle Man, what would you pick? My personal pick would be a Conversation with Death by Chemis. Enjoy. I don't know mm. that. From professional gamer turned actual car. Oh, you know. Grant Turismo. <laughs> A.K. Tom from Australia. That, wow. That, oh, Someone was a fan of Tom's... Uh, Grand Turis. Yeah. Oh, he's back. Oh. <laughs> I That's completely lovely. blocked out all memory of that. That's oh. wonderful. Oh, Thank God. you. Thanks for writing in, Grand Turis. Yeah. <laughs> Honoured to get a nod for Grand Turis. Yeah, woof, woof, rum, rum to you. Um, <laughs> yeah, so what bad, bad guy theme would Jungle Man come out to? So I was Ooh. trying to think of... What is like the evil equivalent of Baltimore's song? Like, what's an evil sounding but very 80s song? And I kept floating to the upstairs office. I was like, lads, what about Big in Japan? And no one really picked up. No one was like, that's mm. not evil, is it? It's not an evil sounding song, Big in Japan. It's more daunting or mm. foreboding. We've done this before, haven't we? Which Big in Japan? Alphaville. Oh, uh, just Tom Waits has a song. Oh. I'm big in Japan. Sounds more evil. I'm big. That could actually be... Um, bah, 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 bah. That's, that's how he does it. Um, so I, I, really don't, I really don't know what to go for here. Because I want it to be 80s, but I want it to be evil. Oh! E evil 80s. There's an, I think it's an 80s. I think it's a song from the 80s anyway, which is like Nightmare Fuel to me, the song, like his haunting song. Oh, okay. It's Golden Brown by The Stranglers. It just is... Ooh, it puts me ill at ease. Yeah. It's the... Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. And it reminds me of the creepy song from the Zelda games. The do 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 do. That's a video game, Tom. Uh, oh no, it's uh, it's Gran Turismo. Yeah, you know, I agree with you. It is quite a sinister song. Golden, Golden Brown, Texture like some. My auntie used to be part of the Storm in the Castle event every year, and What's they that? book the Stranglers, the big old biker festival with rock bands and stuff oh, like that. Uh, Stranglers are gets. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a shame. No. Like sharing that, you one hit, sorry, two hit wonder. <laughs> What? They're not nice. Well, they were like, we would, when I do our sound test, everyone needs to be out the tent and like. Oh, you're only right? the stranglers. And like, we don't want food that's created at the the festival. We want food like brought in from someplace I else. You and like, do you the stranglers? I thought you meant they'd gone around doing a bit of strangling. I was like, oh no, <laughs> that's why they're called stranglers. Right. We all why shake are you hands, surprised? We shake uh, throats. Yeah. 
It's I never want to meet Napalm Death. <laughs> <laughs> but when you hear the name The Stranglers and then they turn up, they're like, doo, 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 doo. it's weird. Yeah. Right. What about you, Tom? Any evil things? Well, um, for this current FTW story, it'd be funny to have them coming out to Harry Slash and the Slash Tones. This is extreme, just as a wind up. Ah, oh, yes. But but my That's thought fair. for this would be uh, it's not really an answer, but I think it's the most obvious silence. It's mm. Nothing. I think because Ooh. it's there because immediately there's no one else on the roster that does that has nothing as theme music. And we saw how powerful that was with soliciting booze for Tommaso Ciampa. And I think Jack Perry could do with that if Jack Perry just walks out to no music at all. I think, and just drowns in the, the booze that would yeah. no doububt fill the silence yeah, they would, they would it would I think it would immediately make Jack Perry seem like a much more successful bad guy than he currently is mm. That's a really you nice run choice. the risk of having no booze but I think honestly if there's silence and he's walking out looking annoyed with the crowd I think they will react. Oh, they there's no way that yeah yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're gonna see a gap and go for it aren't if they, he walks crowd. out in Wembley to no music at all I think and 80, no th pop. <laughs> 80 from 80, I mean, people that's the risk that you run that is the risk that you run of just nothing yeah Sugar Boy comes out like that, and then halfway to the ring, he's like, uh oh. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I like that idea. Yeah, it's mm. way better than mine. Mine's just going to be Carpenter Brute. What's that? The, uh, it, what are they? Synth? Really heavy synth, I think. That's the oh. best way to say it. Is it? What? Why have I opened my mouth instead of band I can't even describe? Is it like industrial, mm. scary, like. Uh, they do some of the music for one of the Hotline Miami games. Oh, right. Them, so quite mm. like out there. So it's not like... I but thought distinctly you meant... evil, but still using, you know, the heavy, heavy synth music. I thought you meant it was going to... hear from something from the 80s. I thought you meant it was going to be like when... Um, like, the you know that nightclub in Germany that you can't get in? It's like in Berlin. It's like Ooh, the famous no. nightclub that no one can get... You can't get in. Oh, it's really exclusive? Yeah. Or it's just... Is the door really heavy? Well, you, apparently you queue for ages, and then you get there, and a bloke goes like, no, nah, Nine. you don't look cool enough. <laughs> oh! Yeah, yeah. Hello, friends. I am catching up on the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast episodes after losing track around October-ish. October of last year. Been? I have now made it up to episode 273 from April. So I have a long way to go. I hope you're not getting your wrestling news this way. Oh, jeez. Could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> While listening to... I hope AEW have re-signed the elite, it says here. All right. While listening to one of the million local reference stories... Oh, okay. I decided to go on Google Earth. And look up some of the areas mentioned to see what they look like. To my shock and horror, the, um, the hometown of the great botch himself was called Bishop Auckland. Ah. Like the New Zealand town. As opposed to Auck... <laughs> you cheeky bastard. As opposed to <laughs> Auckland, like Mafu pronounces it time and time again. Auckland is in Ork is in bloody Lord of the Rings. <laughs> O-R-C. <laughs> the land of... Which isn't that far off in some places. So the question is... Bishop is <laughs> is that the actual question? Is Bishop Auckland supposed to be pronounced Auckland, or is this another Newcastle upon Tyne situation where Matthew either forgets where he's from or forgets the English language entirely? No. Uh, wait, wait. Who's this from? It's on a, a, a different page. Thanks, and please answer this urgent question, or else <laughs> I'll never sleep again. <laughs> Yours sincerely, Thomas Sunderland of failure. And Toronto <laughs> FC legend Josie Alvador, aka Leaf Al from Toronto. P.S. Mafia, I love your money teasing. I love you all as well. Oh. But it's funny. So some people have got it in their heads. I think right. Can we do a right. test now? Never mind Auckland. When I say <laughs> Newcastle upon Tyne, people say think I'm saying T I M E. You have in the past. I hate you. <laughs> if when me and Ross have caught you before doing it. I haven't forgotten where I live. No, I think it's just a subconscious. I'm not at that level yet. It, okay. it might just I'm be already some... for the home. I might be. I no, guess. you're not ready for the home. <laughs> might just be sometimes how it comes out. Maybe. Possibly. Yeah. But I say think... but sometimes I do that a lot when I speak quite quickly. <laughs> I sometimes yeah. get words a bit like jumbled. But I, think, I never do that, I Tom. Think... <laughs> every word that comes out of my mouth is supposed to sound exactly like how it sounds. That is true. But I think Perfection you say Perfection every time. I think you say it right, though. How do you say Bishop the place? Or Bishop Auckland. Yeah. Thank you. And can you say it again, Tom? Bishop Auckland. Thank you. I think you how would, what? How would a New Zealander say it? I'd... Bishop, Bishop Auckland. Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, you're from around these... I'm not talking about football, so calm down. Uh, how would you say that, please? Bishop Auckland. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Sorry, yeah. I don't Maybe know if there's anybody else. You, yeah. If you know, if you're from Toronto or from any other place, let us know how how you would pronounce that. That'd be fantastic because I legitimately don't Do know. Do they call it Auckland? Oh, oh maybe. Auck. 
They pronounce it like Auckland, maybe. Like O C land. Yeah. Right. yeah. Auckland. Auckland. Bishop Auckland. Yeah. Or band at them. Or band at them. Can you say Newcastle upon Tyne? Newcastle upon Tyne. When oh, I moved, yeah, you know what? Hearing somebody else say it, maybe. Well, when yeah, I when okay. I moved up, I said Newcastle. And, and my old radio up. boss at the time said, if I hear you on the radio say Newcastle one more time, I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> yeah. And since then, I've always said Newcastle. 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 People do, that's the word that people say, isn't it, in a Geordie accent when they want to sound Geordie, they go, Newcastle. Newcastle. And they always miss out the middle bit to try and sound more. Newcastle. Newcastle. And can you say it, Jack? Newcastle. Upon Tyne. <laughs> I'm okay. scared. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, now I've always seen a clip of Newcastle upon Tyne. Ah, I can see why yeah. you get, yeah. Me hearing it and hearing the voice in my head, mm. that's how I said that, um, it doesn't sound like it. But hearing somebody else say it, you're like, oh, okay. Mm. Maybe it's just because we're not used to people here clarifying that it's not under Lyme. Because everyone here just says Newcastle. It right? has been a joke for about a year and a half on my Twitch streams, though. I was like, where are you from again, Matthew? Oh, really? Oh. Have you forgotten again? I'm like, oh. I'm all right, it's a joke, but I'm there going... I'm, does it sound like that? Maybe this is one of your viewers. <laughs> Not for long, I'm going to block him. Uh, thank you very much for your lovely mailbag questions and thoughts and queries. Please keep them coming to mailbag at colaholic.com. Ah, Reese's Pieces. How you doing, lads? Yes. Who's that supposed to sound like? I love this question. Welcome... Oh, I haven't seen this. Welcome to the grand opening of the official Botchamania restaurant. Oh, lovely. We've prepared an amazing... Obviously, Newcastle uh, underline. Uh, <laughs> we've prepared an amazing selection of courses for from you to choose between. From you, for you to choose, it should say. So, fastest thought first. We hope you enjoy your time at this minus five Michelin star establishment. <laughs> That's great. That. So I've got the, the, there we go. I actually do the impression now. Cheers. This is from Count E. Durham. Ah, oh, the home of Bishop Auckland. Ah. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> Starter, soup uh, dragon. Soup. A selection of meats and Jesus. <laughs> I'll go for the super dragon, please. I, I will also take the super dragon. The super dragon for two, then. Main, the shock pasta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, or... How much do this, does this pie weigh? I'll please have the how much does this pie weigh? Well, I will sample the shop pasta and have some of your how much does this pie weigh. Oh, on the side. Oh, we, can, we can swap. Fantastic. It seems a bit silly, actually, having to make you choose. I'll just read them out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you talk to mushy peas. That's good. <laughs> That's, I like that. Oh, I am the vegetable. Just one vegetable. Yeah, the I peas, guess. please. Just, just, I'll, I'll take the two mm, mushy peas. Just yeah, the broccoli, peas. I guess. Um, ooh, can I even pronounce this? Sabuab and custard. Sabubab. Sabubab. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Rhubarb. Sabubab and custard. Does anyone remember that? Like Fraggle Rock and... <laughs> remember Rhubarb and custard? Before my time, mate. The cartoons? Oh. Uh, send for the flan. Send for the flan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I prefer a flan. I'll go with the Sabu Bob and Custard. Mm. Sa Can you say that? Sabu Bob and Custard. Sabu Bob and Custard. It's got to be laughing too much now. <laughs> <laughs> more, de more dessert, it says here. That's an option. Hulk Hogan's patented yapper pie. App app what? Oh, yapple pie. Right. That's way better. Hulk Hogan's patented yapple pie. I misread that one. Oh, here comes mango. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go for... I'm genuinely thinking, what do I prefer? I'm taking this seriously. I'll go for the apple pie, please. Yeah, yeah you're thinking like, mm, do oh, I like I'll a mango go. one? I'll, I'll go, go for the pie. pun. I'm going to go, here comes oh. mango. Bonus round. A popular thing at most restaurants. Bosh. <laughs> Bosh. Well, I'm, I'm really full. I'll pass on the bonus <laughs> round. No, no, bonus round for monsieur. Okay. <laughs> Bosh ham mania. Okay. Or Matthew Gregg's. Oh. Matthew Greggs. I stopped there on my way in for a coffee. I'm gonna stop for a, I'm gonna stop for some uh, Matthew Greggs on the way out of the restaurant. Yes. Oh, that's <laughs> wow. Really <laughs> <laughs> stopped by my meal. How are you getting home? <laughs> We've got a bite. Oh, oh <laughs> yes. Lovely. Yes. Mm. What's that actually from? Does somebody is a hardcore WCW match? Is that it? And I think it's a relaxed it. rules thing because they've got the end of your rest. I think he's got the mask on. It's got Big Boss. Was it Big Boss? Was it NWO? I think it was. I, was, I think you know, he's Ray Trailer. Whatever. Big Boss, man. 
when he wasn't Robin Banks, yeah, yeah. Um, he was attacking some job. Is it Mr. JL? I think. Okay. It's been a while. Anyway, yeah, it goes at ringside and gets a bicycle. And Dusty Rhodes loves it. it. <laughs> Dusty Rhodes loves it. He's got a bicycle. <laughs> He's got a bicycle. There was somebody on it when it came to the ring, but now they've gone. Yeah. Like, does he have to point out, I guess, to the blind people watching that? No, there was somody on the bike, but now they're off. <laughs> As just, if he just picked it up with someone on going, Ugh. For a lot of the Botchamania tropes, like the bicycle one, it's the same thing for me, like when you hear like the Jay-Z and Kanye sample of like, it's provocative, gets the people go. You don't think of no, the actual it's thing not. it's from. Yeah, okay. You think of that song now. Yeah. If I heard that out of context, I'd be like, yeah. He's carried on talking after the bicycle bit. I like whenever like some random Dewey account on Twitter is just like, oh, I remember the SmackDown intro from 2000 and people are just like, I can't unhear. Uh, oh. like, I, got, I got 21. Oh God, yeah, I can't unhear that. Yeah, is there any other food related stupid wrestling stuff? Well, years Should ago. I delay the podcast while I think of one? We Go did on, a Jack. thing for it years ago where we it was did, like didn't we Nacho actually? Man Randy Cabbage yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kevin Mash was my contribution. I, yes. I like so Kevin, Kevin Mash. Mash. You know what we'll do a match around and go like, send for the bill. No. Oh. Hey. There you go. Any of Reese's Pieces, please don't hesitate to send them to mailbag at cultaholic.com. It's Cultaholics. The question. Ah. What a lovely podcast. Yes. It's getting harder to do that now because the original thing was me being sincere. So every time I'm doing that, it's me being like pretending to be sincere. Be less sincere each yeah. time. Oh, what a podcast! <laughs> if, uh, if you find the one where you first say, "Wow, what a lovely podcast!" I did just have that clip. Me and Ross Pichidi seem quite cruel. We both laugh. Oh, is it me and Pachidi? I swear. It's, oh no, it's Woof Woof Moo Moo's with Pachidi. I wasn't yeah, here. Oh, no, for, wasn't yeah, I wasn't privy to the majesty of Woof Woof Moo Moo. I'm sorry about this. Can I borrow that? Thank you. Yeah, very much. go for it. Ah, it's a big, big, big old question this week. Before we get to that, the two big remainers of the lovely, lovely uh, producers. Producers. Sorry, I forgot your names. Reno two two zero 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 zero. He's from the future. <laughs> and Noah Anderson. <laughs> Anderson. Well, when you forget what they're called, no one of the bleed leaving. Thank you very much, Thick Pilo Say. We appreciate the hell out of you. We hope you enjoyed the podcast and everything else that we bring to you. Absolutely. Like right now, what or what or what is a little guy from Star Wars is going to be the best match at SummerSlam 2023 this Saturday. He's got the card. And ooh. Ooh, the rundown. If you'd like to give some audio reactions, like as if you're being kicked or something when you hear this. Um, the Slim Jim Battle Royal. Oh, oh not a popular one there. Uh, Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler in an MMA rules match. Oh. <laughs> Gunther, the ring general, versus Drew McIntyre for the WWE IC title. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ricochet versus Logan Paul. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. Oh, okay. Hmm. Mm. Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso. Tribal combat for the undisputed UU championship. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yummy yum. <laughs> Owen would be good at this. This seems like Owen's yeah. here. Yummy yummy. He'd say something like that. He's quite a saucy boy when uh, he wants to be. Asuka versus Charlotte Flair versus Bianca Belair. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Seth freaking Rollins versus Finn Balor for the heavyweight championship on Raw. Yeah. Oh, uncertainty. And Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar, which may or may not be main event, and we don't know. Whoopa. Ow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Owie. I love that. The, the audio bit's way better than anything we were saying. I don't, I don't think that Wikipedia is, is uh, indicative of the list for when the matches will yeah. be on. Um, no. Because there's no way that Roman Reigns and Solo Soko is going on, like, right. going halfway through the show. Yeah. I wonder... This is a hard one, isn't it? There's quite a lot of different... Um, it's, quite, it's quite evenly... It's a big card. If they give Gunter and Drew time, yes, that'll be a lovely night. Yeah. I don't think Ronda and Shane is going to go that long. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think Roman and, and Jay will get the lion's share of the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that with yeah. video packages is going to be you know, at least Cody, 40 minutes. Cody and Brock might not go very long because Brock doesn't really deal in long matches anymore. Yeah. I reckon That's that might point. open... Ah, uh, yeah, Brock loves a quick getaway. <laughs> yeah, he, he, does. he wants to be home, home in time for the uh, Brock for the beats the today. traffic, Lesnar. Yeah. yeah, beat the traffic, Brock Lesnar. Yeah, give them just a couple of minutes and have mm. Cody beat him. Yeah, so How's he gonna best do? match. I've been brave. Best being brave, match. boy. Oh, that is a tough one, actually. I'm. Oh. I reckon it'll be Roman and Jay. I do genuinely think that, but a very close runner-up could be Gunter and Drew. Mm. 
Just a heavy hitting big boy battle. I might go slightly. I don't even know if it's left field because it's just a good card. But I might go. I might go Balor and Seth. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Depending on very dependent on what happens. That's right. Because yeah, it could yeah. be really dramatic and shocking. I was going to say. I think you say that for all of them, really. <clears throat> True. Because Cody versus Brock makes sense if Cody wins, but then if not, it's like, well, all right, what the hell? Mm. Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso. What they're going to do there? Uh, Gunther versus Drew McIntyre. Again, it's like this is going to be a great match, but surely they could have Gunther, who currently has, I think he's the second longest reigning yeah, champion now. Yeah, surely not. He's close. He's closing in on Honky Tonk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, if Honky Tonk interferes. The cost gun for the title, mm. so his, his record remains forever. This must now that's make, not happening. This run must be now one of the greatest of great Gundam. Now must be up there with the best of the IC champions. Oh actually. gosh, yeah, yeah easily. Yeah. Uh, I like saying that because I like to I like to point out how great Gunther was when I used to go to the VXV. When he was in, in, you, in, you did Turbine you flew the flag for a long time, and people were like, oh, shut up, you stupid German wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> now look at you. Didn't he? Use, I was first aware of him when he was on like a super strong style 16. Oh, I'm yeah, sure yeah, they progress. had him as like Big Daddy Gunter or something like yes. that. Big Daddy Gunter. Big yeah. Daddy Gunter. That's right. Oh, no, Big sorry, Daddy Big Walter. Walter. Yeah, Big Daddy Walter. Walter. Yeah, we knew yeah. what you meant. Yes. Yeah, now he was and Big Daddy for us. mocked Gunter and now it's just second yeah. nature. They were right all along. No, no, no. <laughs> we knew we'd get used to eventually. It's just the fact that it was so abrupt. Yeah. My yeah. name is Gunter. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Bye. Like, <laughs> that's it. That's the explanation. All right. <laughs> but yeah, this looks like a hell of a card. Rick yeah, Shavers to Logan Paul. Again, whatever, Logan Paul, you're horrible. But this, it, yeah, they're about to do something I'd probably, good. I'd rather have had those two women's matches than the Slim Jim Battle Royal. Well, the Slim Jim Battle Royal will be on the main show. Ooh. They haven't been doing matches on the... Pre-show. The, yeah. For, the, have they? Not I'm saying that. I don't think... Yeah, no, I think that is There right. was randomly one on the... <laughs> when me and Ross were going to stream our reactions to NXT... And Ross was like, when's the start time? And I was like, there probably won't be much of a pre-show, so don't worry. And then they mm. chucked, like, the... He had to they race been, in. He had to, like... Yeah, they'd be doing them on NXT. I don't think he'd be doing them on the main show. Right, right. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. And uh, it wasn't any match. It was Andre Chase U versus the Schism. Oh, that's right. He made it in time, possibly running over several pedestrians on the way. Ah, oh, whatever. They had a... <clears throat> it's like crazy taxi, the way he got it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, going, that looks really good. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to say, yeah, Gunther versus Drew because I'm boring. What did you say? Rather say Roman and Jay then if you'll say if you'll say Gunther and Drew. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll go Finn and Seth. Oh, <clears throat> but I think a lot of that's based on this is going to be good. But I'm also looking forward to how do we put stuff together? What's going to happen the next week? Mm. And you know how much other women they're going to have on the shows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but then we'll be covering this and we all shall. the other stuff that happens, won't we? Uh, with the likes of Jack, what will you be doing? I'll be doing uh, what happened at in the immediate aftermath of the show. Andrew and Adam, I believe, will be on. I think their predictions will be out now. And they mm -hmm. will be doing live reactions as the show goes on. That's at uh, youtube.cultaholic. No, youtube.com forward slash cultaholic. Yeah, no. Forward that. slash live. My hey. voice went all high there. Hi. <laughs> and Ross, I think, is going to be back in time to do WTF moments. Yes. Uh, and pitches is out on the channel already. Fantastic. Hey. What have you got for us, Tom, for until next week? Um, I'm having afternoon tea with Jeff Jarrett. That's yes. the main thing I'm pushing. Yes. Uh, should be on the on the channel soon. I don't know when, but I had a lovely chat with Jeff uh, down in that there, London. And uh, it's a good time. That's the main one I'm pushing. Mm. That's the main thing I'm pushing. But obviously all our SummerSlam stuff as well. well yeah. I've, I've had to notify Tom that uh, matches of the month I, it was going to be pushed back till next weekend because there's just too many matches and it's a pay per view right. week and I just don't have enough time. <laughs> so I've had a good time. You know, your schedule that you made. <laughs> yeah. I'm just sorry. Tearing up like oh, yeah. for raw. <laughs> uh, Ross is back next week. Yes. In the hot seat. But thank you for having Thank you for having us. Thank you for joining us. I've done the wrong thing. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> thank you for being had. <laughs> oh, I have been had. Mm -hmm. What are you plugging? Uh, call that classic Smackdown review with yes. me and this other fine fellow called Tom Campbell. Never heard of talk about the Smackdown. We're wrapping up 2001. Oh, it's the last one last of our with the F. Wow, you're getting quite far now. Yeah, know, it's crazy. But we'll it? never catch up. Although it is like 2001, it's 20 years ago. What am I talking about? Sickening, yeah. isn't it? Ooh, wow. Witty time. wee, witty woo. Yeah, yeah. The ghost of Smackdown. Yes. Time is a concept of human perception. So are you, the lovely fans at home. <laughs> if you can send in your lovely, lovely thoughts, queries, and hate to uh, mailbagacolic.com. Uh, you're making Jack cry, bruh. You're all right, mate. <laughs> I think a hair's gone in my oh, eye. No. Oh, no. And uh, it's not comfortable to call the Hulk for the Hall of Fame needs. Mm. This has been the Magnificent Jack, the awesome Tom, the wonderful Joel. Uh, Thanks, Joel. Crap over Jack doesn't do anything anymore. And I've been Matthew. You've been fantastic. And I'm going to point at this on a count of three. 
what shall we say? What in joke have we said? <laughs> oh, we'll make an R noise like a pirate. Nice. On the count of three. One, two, three. R. R.